they had done a cool podcast with uh, Chad, Alex, and uh, the guys from Falcons, uh, Snappy and uh, Maggie. So, yeah. yeah, nice. Do you enjoy it? We enjoyed it, yeah. We had some good conversation. Yeah? Okay, I mean, this is a teaser, but you'll, of course, see the content. I want to know what you think about the update. Maybe ask him. Yeah, I was going to. I was going to, actually. <laughs> mm, I was testing it uh, that night. I mean, this night. And I think it is, it's good. I think they fixed a bit of people who are running out of you and killing you while white picking. I think it's a good update for Opus. I think it's a good update for Nicola. I think it's not a good update for Donk. <laughs> I'm joking, of course, but uh, I think it's a good update and uh, I'm really happy to play with this update because, like before, I don't know, it was really, really, really tough to kill people who are running out on you. Not tough, but you, got, you, you had to get used to it. But let's see. I don't know what Nico thinks about it. Uh, well, I think. I don't know. I don't want uh, go ahead of myself. I haven't tried it. I don't know how good it is, how different it is. But uh, people say it's going to help me, so I hope it will. You need help? Help is always good. <laughs> He was like, I can, now you can kill more. He got 90 kills, uh, like last was, was the Did you see the smoke bug? I smoke bug, yeah. You're getting window smoke and you only rush, for example, and you can jump on the smoke on the ledge of the smoke and you can see top mid, you can see. I don't know, I think it's a feature. I don't think it's a bug. <laughs> okay. to be people are saying, so I'm asking people if they think that um, ESL should make the update active right now for Katowice. I'm getting mixed replies. Someone said, can't remember who it was, I think maybe it was Leif who said, no, because Manasi is going to find all, all the features and then G2 is going to win. Of course, I'm going to find something again. <laughs> then we'll win. Some bug and win, don't rush. <laughs> Not stressful at all. Uh, Nico, you're uh, going up against FaZe, but this time in the quarterfinal, it's in the beginning. Um, so yeah, you're looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, each time we play FaZe, it's always a good game. It always delivers, especially in Spodek. Uh, also, Taz versus Neo, it's going to be a pretty cool uh, matchup for them as well. Uh, I look forward to see who's crowd favorite is. I think uh, that's going to be cool. But uh, yeah, overall, I think it's going to be a very good game, uh, especially if we have this new update. It might be even more exciting. There might be some new things. So uh, yeah, but overall, happy that we're back in Spodek. Uh, we fought our way through very hard, and uh, we are just looking forward to, to get back uh, on stage. Yeah, do you think there's an extra level that's going to be unlocked when you're on the stage? Is everything going to come flowing back from last year when you sit down there? Yeah, definitely. We keep reminding ourselves of uh, what we had achieved last year and that, that is pushing us even more. And I think once we step on the stage again and uh, the last step when we see G2 Esports up there, I think that's going to be extra motivation. So, uh, yeah, we are, we are eager to get back to uh, play stage and hopefully even uh, game up. Who we are? Who is eager? What? Eager, yeah. Yeah, it, mean, it means like uh, you really want to show something. Yeah, yeah looking forward to play against them. It's going to be spicy. Nice. This Rajab is in contract jail in the Fury Tower. Well, firstly, congratulations, everyone. You are the lucky few who have made it through the auditions. What auditions? Now it's time for some dry runs. Now I'm sure you've all memorized your lines. <laughs> You guys never send me the script. But the script is here if you need it. Now, Hugo, please, go on. <sighs> Interior. Night. A troop patrols an underground bunker. We follow a tunnel leading to an impenetrable metal door. Inside, a meeting takes place. Look around, gentlemen. I was tasked to assemble the greatest minds Counter-Strike has to offer. But none of them could make it. You read the brief? Kesarato is in contract jail in the Fury Tower. I ask for your best trust to get him out. Well, what do we have here? Take it by force. Impressive as ever, Victor. Kirill? But you always made the plan the best. Alexi? I may have something, but it's complex. Try me. We hit the north entrance and we hit it hard. We send an alpha for a full force breach. With the Furia forces occupied north, Beta Squad sneaks in through the southern entrance. 
Alexis, sorry, please, just for me. Can you simplify it? Okay, concentrate. Let's take the north entrance, labeled A. The south, B. We send one squad north to hit A, but what we're actually doing is hitting B. A diversion. It's so crazy, it just might work. Of all the IGLs I've worked with, you are the only one who gets it. It's genius. Call in Alpha and Beta. Let's go get our man. A huge tower stands against a mountain. A bridge extends to the north entrance. Alpha Squad, look on from a distance. Well, well, well. We so back, baby. Yo, focus up, boys. You're gonna be super exposed on that bridge. Good job we have you, King. Wait, wait, wait. Do we really have to do this, like, nice Saibu thing? What? You don't know. It's fake, he's a fucking idiot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He bought me a beer at an after party once. Super nice guy. The classic. He invited me to a pug once with his French maids. They were shouting loads of encouragement. <laughs> you think you're best is now because you have him on Steam? This guy. <laughs> oh, I say hi to my dad like twice. He looks fucking obsessed. So cringe, you have fans at the desk. But yeah, Zyva's a fucking idiot. Guys, please, let's pick up from where you're crossing the bridge to cause a diversion. It's awful quiet, no? Yeah, too quiet. An orb booms from the Furia Tower. Bullets go wide as the group begin to run. Bullets hitting everywhere. But the men themselves. Oh, Jesus, that hopper. Washed. Smokes, boys. The squad deploys smokes across the bridge. Zaiwu and Magisk take a moment to breathe. Nico remains on guard. Out of nowhere, a figure jumps through the smoke. Kyota! Art unloads the full magazine without hitting anyone until Nico one taps him. Uh... He will never learn. I think we have the attention. Beta squad, move in. Beta Squad move in a single cohesive unit up the south side of the Furia Tower, taking it in turns to cover their teammates. Robs is at the back. Wait, hold on. Robs at the back. Yeah, you're the lurker, right? That's kind of how it would go down. Yeah, but there's lurkers and then there's lurkers. It makes the most sense if he's at the back. No, I'm leader with the group. I mean, for sure, I've heard of him. Wait, where should go? Don't be confused. Blame, oh. blame's a method actor. Give me a sec. Blame? What man's actually saving and table reader? Blame? That's commitment though. Damn, he's good. My idol. Well, we feared this would happen. That's why we have a backup plan. Floppy here. He'll be the mocap artist for blame. <sighs> We got the company that CGI'd in Carrie Fisher to Star Wars, so we're in great hands. Bro, why you got the gear on already? Because I'm always ready. When you need a man who can do it all, I'm that man. Forget the vice. Can't stop the flop. Can't stop the flop. Bam! What a shot on the Tazid. Inhuman reaction. Bam! Looks like another save for VP. So, what will it be, boys? Just blames lines, Ricky. <sighs> right. Now, where were we? Waiters, you are clear. I repeat, you are clear. Get the fuck in there. After you, boys. Beta Squad scale the tower to its highest point and swiftly breach the final cell door. As the smoke clears, Caserato is revealed. My friend, Jame here to save you. Save me? From what? From contract jail. Come to Europe and fulfill your potential. Nah, I'm good. What? I, I don't understand. 
you will never understand. The end. That's it. Well, good luck with the funding, guys. This will save esports for sure. Underwhelming. I can keep this. G2 up against FaZe Clan in the quarterfinals. This was the grand final two years ago and was one of the more epic grand finals that we've had in the history of IEM Katowice. I believe surviving group stage was the hardest part for FaZe. We know how they relish playing on the stage and they love the lights, they love the pressure, they love the adrenaline. Even though they might not be fully ready, I still think nobody can feel confident going up against FaZe on stage. G2 is not known for their consistency, but it's the championship level events where they do their best work. Katowice and Cologne are their playground. They've had a shaky start uh, in CS2, but you'd be a fool to underestimate this lineup. It is almost a guarantee that Sparks will fly whenever FaZe go up against G2. Ants is an underdog team in these playoffs, but hey, they already taken down the number one team in the world in Vitality, the defending champions in G2 as well. We could see how much it meant for them. Diha had tears in his eyes after that G2 game. Now he's going up against some of his old teammates. Can he make them cry? It's incredibly impressive that Falcons have actually made a run into the playoffs, considering the fact that this is a brand new roster. And sure, you say there's a lot of great players on there. They've got the greatest coach of all time standing behind them. But this is a team that weren't playing well coming into this event. We've seen them steadily improve in the competition already, and it's very impressive that we've seen them get into gear quick enough to get into the playoffs. Mao's had the impossible challenge coming into Katowice of replacing Frozen. And Brolin so far coming into this event, not gonna lie, people didn't have any expectations of him. And Mao's have shown that they're willing to keep him in the roster and he's showing up and Brolin looks incredible. It looks like he's back. Perfect timing for Brolin. He's got them all on his screen and it is a round of fighting flanks straight from behind. For Mao's, this is a great opportunity to prove themselves as the stars of Counter-Strike 2 and really start to power the new legacy for those players individually. Every step of the way, I thought that Spirit would stumble at some point. Expectations were ungodly, and somehow they met them and they surpassed them every game they played. The Prodigy Donk is under everybody's radar. It was not a given that he was going to perform his best Counter-Strike here, and he has done just that.
10 years ago, Counter-Strike Global Offensive first entered the Spodak arena, and now 10 years later, we're entering again with a new game with CS2, and we're going in with so many questions, and we just don't know how it's gonna go down. In the vast tapestry of human experience, fear stands as a formidable barrier, a shadow that often looms over the path to personal evolution. It is those that embrace fear as not only an external force, but an intimate companion, who become architects of their destinies, weaving an ornate legacy. A decade of global offensive. Refined, tweaked, perfected. Now, changed. These dream chasers and risk takers have made their moves. And the Hall of Heroes provides absolutes. It demands a response. How will you reply? Fight. Flight. Or freeze. Intel Extreme Masters Katowice is brought to you in part by Intel, Acer Predator, DHL, Monster Energy, the United States Air Force, One X Bets, and White Market. Katowice, rich in many, many things, resources and Counter-Strike. Now, coal mining has defined a lot of the history here, as you can see by that behind me. It's also the economic centre of Cilicia. Now, it's the centre of Counter-Strike. Just look at that. I love that place. That is the Spodek, this great concrete UFO in the centre of Katowice, which will be reverberating with cheers. Heroes being crowned, legends being made, legacies being written, because it's time to get it on for what is Counter-Strike's greatest tournament on this planet. And we will do that by finding out the news on the second matchup today. Let's get it on. 
in a few hours right here in the Spodek Falcons versus Ents. Now Falcons, their expectations weren't too high. I talked to them, but you're going to tell me that when Magisk and Snappy snip onto this stage here in the Spodek, they're not going to feel the beast awaken inside of them? I don't believe it. And Madden, he's got skin in the game. It's personal because he is up versus Dija. And I asked him, how's it going to be? He said, everyone's going to boo us, but I don't care. We're going to bring it. But on the other side, such an unlikely story with Ents and Dija, the definition of a hometown hero. Ten years in the making for him to play right here in the Spodek. Unbelievable. And the crowd here, they are the most important. Because right here, 2014 Virtus Pro, ten years ago is when they last saw a Polish team win. And eight years ago is the last time they saw a Polish team on stage here. Can Ents do it? Who will survive the Spodek? Katowice and the Spodek. It is an amazing opportunity for teams to find their glory here. And two teams that have found their glory once before will be clashing head to head here, both with a different look. Think to FaZe Clan in 2022. They did it not with their full roster. They did it having to go through crazy circumstances and lifted the trophy in style, doing what no one else thought they could do and proving everyone wrong. When we move over to G2, just last year. They actually ended their 2022 year in a great fashion, but then coming into Katowice, the pressure was on. They still managed to deliver. And JKS, with two different teams, was able to lift it back to back. But G2, FaZe, they've made big changes. Things are not the same for these two teams as they come into the Spodek. And clashing like this, this could be a grand final matchup. This could be the absolute iconic moment for both teams to relive their dreams, lift that trophy once again. But it certainly isn't going to be easy. And it's going to come right down to the wire. Who's going to step up the most? Who's going to put out the biggest performance? But we're about to find out. The 98th Intel Extreme Masters. We are live and direct from Poland. That's Katowice to be exact. If you look at the big spaceship back there, there's nothing unidentified about what we're about to watch going down in this server. That's right. We've had some ups. We've had some downs. But this overall is an ESL Pro Tour championship level event. And there's only two of those each year. You get Katowice, you get Cologne. But who's going to take it home? That's my biggest question. That's my biggest takeaway. We're going to guide you up to speed with all that. Only six teams remaining. That's right. We're going to get down to the nitty gritty today here in the Spodic, which means ultimately we're sending two teams home. We're sending two teams on into semifinals. And well, I guess we just have to sit back, get relaxed and get ready for the show. So speaking of shows, how about we get this pre-show underway? Yes, it is the Spodic, and it is not an unidentified aerial phenomenon. In fact, the phenomenons are going to be in the server here really shortly. I want to welcome you to the Intel Extreme Masters of Katowice just one more time. I just did it two times, so I thought three times is a charm. Also introducing my co-host here, or analyst, I should call them, however you want to call it. I'm sure they've been called a lot worse. We've got Maniac in the middle, Y&K down on the end, and a day full of Counter-Strike in Poland. Yeah, uh, how did you make it so fast from the entrance? Like, what's your secret? Uh, that's a lot of cardio. You know, I, I pay a stunt double. That way I can be at two places at once. You didn't even break a sweat. It's crazy. It's You're in good shape, true. Trace. Yeah, that's what they're saying. Said no one. Uh, being in good shape, probably a, a good thing around here. I don't mean just physically. I'm talking about in the server. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because a lot of the teams that we have in the quarterfinal, either their shape was unknown or didn't seem to be in all that great shape. The likes of Falcons, the likes of G2 to some extent, right? But I think... The scene was set perfectly for a lot of these teams. FaZe and G2 just getting to the playoffs is the most important thing. And Falcons and Ends sort of overachieving. And now mm. they're on the big stage themselves where anything can happen. Yeah, FaZe G2, we've got Ents Falcons. And we're talking about a little bit of the winners there tomorrow. Obviously, they get to go up as a semifinal if they make it that far. But a life raft, is that where the Falcons found themselves? I mean, probably. Listen, uh, I know what it is to play against Poland in Spodek. It's not a good time. It's not a good time. I still yeah. have, you know, these nightmares where I wake up in the middle of the night just sweating. Like, oh, my God, Bayali is crossing the smoke. Oh, no, <laughs> Bayali, no! Oh, oh, no. And then I look back and actually most of these guys are still here around. You see Neo, of yeah. course, you see Kuban here. You see Taz here. In fact, they'll be playing or coaching at some capacity here in Spodek. So, uh, Snappy, my man, uh, good luck with that one. Yeah, and you know what? A lot of people out here asking me if Inza is going to win. How, how the hell should I know? But I'd say if they keep doing what they're doing, like, maybe. I'm not even going to write them off. Definitely can't write off on the other side of uh, Team Spirit. If everybody's getting donked around here. Yeah, if someone's asking you if Ents going to win the tournament, the Falcons game isn't as big of a problem <laughs> as his spirit. Nice. And this kid who's been just wrecking everyone so far in this tournament, but the story of spirit is so much more than just donk. They played the best Counter-Strike so far as well, sort of started in the play-ins and just steamrolled their way through into the semifinal. And we're all trying to 
we, we're grasping at straw to figure out ways for Dong to stop doing that. You know, he started with, he's never going to do it on LAN here, and then, it, no, he's never going to do it against good oppositions. He's never going to do it on playoffs, and now it's like, no, the new update. He's never going to do it with the new update. How's he's about we start the game. believing? How about we start believing in this guy? Absolutely messing up everyone. Well, he, he's giving us no option. You know, like we're, At some point, yeah. The explanations just aren't necessary anymore. Just sit back and, and watch it, I guess, because obviously we're watching Donk and we're watching a team spirit that are trying to take that ascension to UFO. Yeah, and I mean, Yanko is right. It's not just about the Donk show as well. There's so many assets to this team. Shiro, uh, latest addition, of course, which we haven't really talked about. Zontic's incredible anchor. The experience of Chopper as well, who's been able to find success at majors with different rosters. There's so many ways to be excited about Spirit, and I really struggle to see who would stop them. That said, again, there's a new update around the block. We're waiting to see the first signs. That's going to answer a couple questions. Are you guys excited about updates? Because I think it's kind of fun. I am excited. Uh-huh. I like that one. Got to do it once at least. Yeah, mainly because, you know, I think I've used that one for myself. I am very excited to keep this show rolling along. Yanko, we are playing on a different patch. We're playing on a different patch than we started the tournament with. Really quickly, put that into words people can understand. I think it's just a good upgrade. I think it's just better. The game is a little bit more smooth, right? When it comes to the, to the movement, it seems like the spraying, the shooting, just is a bit more receptive, right? And that's all just playing the game online, right? It must feel even better on LAN. We saw a couple of glitches with the smokes and whatnot. That was all hot mm. fixed, right? So the game should be good to go. Yeah, and well, I guess we're just gonna have to take that for what it is. Play the ball as it lies, as they say in some sports, but not this one. Uh, in fact, if we talk a little about this sport, I'm talking about the Falcons and how on earth they've made it this far. Yeah, it is a story that changed, basically took a 180 degree uh, throughout the last few weeks. If you think about how Falcons were sort of announced and all of the rumors and noises about the possible lineups and then maybe a little bit of let down and a lot of smoke screen. And then finally, they pretty much landed on their feet like a cat. You just never land not on your paws. That's exactly what Falcons did here. A very strong pickup with the end score, the addition of Magisk, which is an obvious upgrade for anybody. And then the Boros Gambit, which we're still about to find out how he behaves in Spodek. But Overall, quite surprising to find them here. Good for them. Falcons landed on their claws, uh, but have they found their four? My answer is no. They just took advantage of sort of the opponents that they had. I mean, they beat the Rebels in the low. They lost to Eternal Fire, beat the Rebels in the lower bracket, dropping a map, then go against Complexity, who, you know, we've seen to be frauds, apparently, and then they've just Ain't. out, out mentally played Navi, back, right, yeah. with that comeback. So, and I want to talk a little bit about Boros because this is the kid that, you know, a lot of question marks, people have been talking about his sort of approach, his level of professionalism. No Boros, no playoffs for the Falcons. They did not have enough fragging output if it weren't for him. So now it's up to the rest of the team that experienced Core and Magisk to sort of take the torch in the playoffs and show him how it's done. I mean, there's one way to learn about playing in, in an arena environment or a studio environment, but to just trial by fire, that's not very fun as a maniac. Yeah, but this is where you get to know what players are made of, right? I, I throw you back to <clears throat> uh, Sun Pius. That one, that was a cat right Hold there. on to it, man. You <laughs> Sun okay? Pius in, with Movistar Riders in Cologne, right? And we get to know him, and then he grabs our attention because of how he plays on stage. And who's to say, Boris, that wasn't going to or isn't going to live a similar story here. I mean, uh, the book is about to be written. Going huh? in. Uh, yeah, I think so. I, Sorry, I didn't want to catch you on a conversation. No, you, you didn't catch me in a conversation. I just sometimes I, I, I was getting choked up like you voices were. When in you your head. So many voices in your head. So many voices, and most of them are my own, which is the craziest part of the whole experience. Uh, speaking of which, a crazy experience would be that of Ince. Yeah, definitely. A team that started in the play-ins, right? We were thinking, hey, are they going to be able to to make it out of the planes. They had that tough bracket with Heroic and Big there as well, and Astralis, right? So first of all, Glaive starts by eliminating Astralis. I know. From the tournament, who was potentially a playoff team. We, we weren't sure, right? They get into the group stages. First game, number one team in the world. Okay, this is where they go to the lower bracket, right? Just yep. some experience. Nope, take down Vitality, best player, best team in the world, right? From there, they go on to take down G2, the defending champions, book a spot in the spot deck. So who the hell knows where the limit is? for this sense team. Yeah, we went from the Virtus Plow. Obviously, looks a little bit different to what we have now. Uh, <laughs> that is a that is a Danish. Wait, hold on a minute. Is it is he about to? No, I the heads of his teammates. I, What's no, going on here in this picture? I don't no, like that. In, in hindsight, you know, I didn't make this graphic, but having looked at it very closely just now, you're right. I, it, it does send the wrong message, you know. But this this nine core, they brought a lot of hype yeah, back well, into Polish. Glaive is right? reaping what the Polish players so, saw. Okay, I kind of right. Yeah. He's here yeah, to he's... make it all come together. Oh. Trace, right? Bring it back. It's a crazy story. When we started introducing this Ents roster, I thought 
that Glaive was in jail there. No, that that okay. was it for him. You know, he was locked up and that was over. And turns out, no, actually, it's a castle. He's having a good time. It's a five-star hotel. He's enjoying the luxurious life. He's here in Spodek once it's again. It's a jail, but He's it's like a Norwegian here. jail or, or yeah, something. Yeah, they have like you know, PlayStations yeah, cool. and exactly. Yeah. You know he won here, right? You know Glaive won in this goddamn state. He's done time. Major. Yeah. Well, I mean, winning also, if you, if you take it into context, like doing what they weren't supposed to do to achieve to get to this point, I think he can definitely wear that around right now and show that Ince is doing it. Talk about that Polish nine squad a little bit, the former, that is. Yeah, I mean, they're a team that showed potential where we always talked about their map pool, insane on vertigo, terrible on ancient, right? Need to sort of work on that, need to get better on more maps. And we're seeing some of that in the sand slide up again pretty good on vertical, not so terrible on ancient. But in general, it seems like they managed to sort of just hit this honeymoon period, I think, more than anything else, with Dika too playing with his countrymen, right? Seems to have unlocked a little bit of his uh, extra game, right? So we'll see. I mean, they're a new team. They're going to be playing in front of the home crowd, and I think yeah. it's just about soaking it all up and having a good time. What an experience it's going to be for them. I think there were two main dimensions to this nine core now ends is one, what could they do with more experience around them? And that's what Glaive and Diha bring to this core of nine player. And then where are they going to show up? A player like Hades was under so much scrutiny. When he was in the end's jersey, he was removed to bring in some players. Now he's exacting revenge, possibly on that stage in Spodek. So a whole lot of storylines to follow for ends. Yeah, and you know, there's one thing you can have to win Katowice. Uh, it, it's Justin Katowice Savage. Now, mm -hmm. FaZe doesn't have that right now, but they did find their way to the playoffs. Yeah, they did. And, you know, they don't have JKS, but they have Frozen uh, yeah. uh, bringing him in with Twist going to Liquid. And, yeah, FaZe is just always going to be a team that if they can make it to the stage and to the playoffs, they're going to be a contender, right? I mean, the wealth of experience they have on the roster, they lifted the trophy here and many other championship level trophies, major, Inter Intel Grand Slam, what have you. So uh, still frozen, only two tournaments played in yeah. this new lineup. He's a guy that is yet to perform on the biggest of stages. So we will learn a lot from this series about, is he ready to take that next step? Yeah, he's the most enticing story about this whole FaZe clan. It's really? all eyes on Frozen and how are you behaving? Because obviously he created a whole lot of conversations, you know, his 12th rank in HLTV and where is he as a rifle? How do people rate him? Well, the one argument is at elite events, you know where to be seen. you never had these deep runs. you never had these EVPs or MVPs or whatever. He's got great numbers all up to the way to Spodek, and now it really starts. But the rest of the team has this lore about them, and G2 has the same flavor. When they step on the stage, you know she's about to get real. That, that's what happens with these players. Yeah, it, it does. So what you're saying is Kerrigan is a fragging in-game leader. I don't know how you ended that one. <laughs> I'm just trying to do something He's an in-game leader. The stage, you know? He's, He's an, an in-game leader. leader. Okay, fair enough. Uh, let's talk a little about one of your favorite teams, Janko. Can you guess which one that is? <laughs> G. <laughs> there it is. G, yeah. G2 Esports, perhaps? Yep, that is the one. Now, these guys, have uh, they, they like to make things harder for themselves sometimes. Fair? Yes, they do. And they seem uh, like one of those teams that is still getting used to to CS2, especially the individual players, right? We've seen uh, Nico right, struggle a little bit on, on day one of, of groups, right? And then sort of being able in that game against Tens, then being able to bounce back. Guys like Hunter. MVP last year yeah. in Katowice here, right? Struggling to find his form in CS2. We'll see if the update is going to help them at all. But again, similar to FaZe, G2 a team, as soon as they get on that stage, they're a different beast. You know what? You're right. I just feel like the contrast that we've seen is it warrants a little bit of worry for G2, okay. right? Because I, I buy the, the update argument. I think Nico's playstyle probably one of the most impacted by this. Hey, I'm about to Ferrari peek the hell out of you. Skr I think he's got that cross placement is a bit more clean, so he could be helped. Hunt I'm kind of, wait, I'm trying to find an excuse in my pocket. I don't have any, honestly. It's been a little bit complicated for him, but he is a big game player. We know he Hell brings yeah, it he to is. the table. He would put it on the table at any time he can. And that, in Spodek, that's a good opportunity for him. He it. can measure up against anyone, Trace. Like the best of the best. And Absolutely. Maybe even, you know what, we're not going to go down that path and that train of thought, but the realities are this. Hunter has to be there as well as your Montesis, as well as, you know, when you look at this G2 lineup and the players that need to show up, is there a Nico over there too? Or? I mean, listen, you, you just mentioned Montesis, right? You have to remember, Spodek is where we got to meet him. That's Spodek true. is where we got to know him, to notice him. He was brought in as a rookie. He comes in in Katowice, has an incredible uh, 
event overall. He's got highlights just by the buckets, straight up his first event, having clutches left, right, front, center, and he keeps on delivering. And and as crazy as it sounds, he's on an upward trajectory. People put a whole lot of pressure on him the first few years of his career, and now he feels like it's all coming together in 2024 for him to be, in my eyes, in the conversation of the three best players in the world currently. I think he's up there. And he's had a historic performance, albeit the short history of CS2, but that uh, opening series against Heroic, 90 oh, yeah. kills in an MR12 best of three series, averaging 30 kills per map. I mean, that was just insane. And probably the most insane part is a good amount of the large majority of those kills came from being in a good position. It were e they were easy kills. They weren't flashy monacy flicks being caught out of position, right? Which is scary. If the kid has started to figure it out on that level as well, just where to be, you know, to be at the right place at the right time and start farming some of those quote unquote easy kills, mm. then yeah, it's going to be even more difficult to play against him and G2. Yeah, supporting the argument, um, HLTV, great article out there analyzing the performance of G2 players and the CT side is really where Monesi just absolutely mm. skyrocketed. We always knew he had the, the creativity and the explosiveness for the T side, he would unlock situations, but now it feels like he's in some way compensating where Hunter and Nico have been struggling a little bit on the CT side. He's just moving around the corner. He's very hard to predict. And I think this is going to be uh, a theme that will follow in that G2 phase game. It's basically the, the whack-a-mole game of can you find Monacy? And on the other side of things, you know, Brocky, I feel like for phase in those championship runs, they happen and they end up lifting the trophy when Brocky is delivering some of his games, right? He's an opera that is going to thrive in the chaos, right? Like his game is a little bit chaotic. Yeah. He's not your device that's going to go from angle to angle, play it by the book, play the percentages, right? He's going to do something wild and it's a love-hate relationship, right? Sometimes you're going to be like, oh, Brokey, why can't oh my you God. just stand still? You know, like we got this. Don't cross the smoke. Or sometimes you're going to be, Brokey, you're a God. That's amazing. You know, we love you. It's awesome. So I think, sure, the problem with FaZe and a good thing sometimes is there's so many stars. Like there's so many guys you can point to. I mean, Frozen, Rops, Rain, Brokey. So it's like you can't put too much on any single player because it is a four-headed monster in a way. But also when you get that little bit extra, when he is playing his good game, that feels like when FaZe is at its best. And, you know, to call a spade a spade, which, you know, I have been doing a little bit of that here lately. G2 returning here, trying to hoist the trophy again. So let's not forget that. Let's also not forget the fact that, you know, they did do it in Cologne. So if they did a three-peat right there, they did a three-peat. That would be great. The problem is between 2022 and 2023, there did one player. Yep was there, who isn't, and I'm just making sure I'm not invoking Chad from under the chair over there, just making sure everything is on <laughs> Comes control. out with a metal chair, just ready you know, to go. When you say JKS three times for the manure, Kangaroo hopping in. <laughs> he comes in, ding, ding, ding. Yeah, JKS isn't here anymore. That's a little bit of a different story, right? Uh, but Yanko, do you want to give us a caveat now for why G2 doesn't make it, or should we wait till later? Doesn't make it. I don't think so. I, I mean, listen, I love the, the G2 phase game. That's a viewer's wet dream in a way, right? Like no matter how the teams are looking up until that point, when they meet on stage, it's what I like to call atomic CS. Like the players just get in the zone. It's two teams that know each other very well. They understand how, the, you know, everyone thinks about the game in a similar way. So there's a lot of little moves, predictions and whatnot. And I think it's just going to be an amazing series. So let's do this. Let's, uh, let's shift tempo a little bit. We've tried to catch everybody up to it, but I want to talk about our 1x bet predictions. Let's take a look. And in taking a look, that is going to tell you what exactly, Maniac. The brackets, they kind of paint themselves after the groups, after you conclude. That's correct. But then, you know, as it starts to fill out, how does it fill out? Well, we're looking at quarterfinals, of course. Uh, we're going to have to find opponents for Mouse and Spirit who are waiting in that semifinal bracket. So are you asking me my own predictions? Is that what's happening? Because I'm happy to give them uh, you. know to what? You. Yeah, actually, I am asking your So in, in my... I'm going to compose a little bit with rationality and a little bit with, with romance. You know, I think this is how I like to create romance. dishes. Wait, romance. Wait. Rationale and romance. Exactly. So I'll go with the romance for Enz versus Falcons because I think the Polish here in Spodek are about to beat the hell out of Falcons, make it to the semis. I have Enz. And then Face Clan G2, I actually have G2. I have G2, uh, honestly, because I had it before the update, and now that I have the update, I'm even Man. more into that. No, we, we, we need some numbers here. I understand. Oh, wow, I need numbers. Yeah, you need numbers. I need two, to know. One, uh, two, one. G220 ends. Okay, and that that's from Maniac. Do you agree with that? No. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm walking out, I guess. I think I think ants were 
exposed a little bit in that Mao series. I understand they ran out of energy and whatnot. It's tough because, you know, Falcons aren't anywhere near their peak, right? Like they have right. so many things to work out for themselves, but I think it's the experience on stage that's going to shine through unless Ants get some early momentum going for them, right? They can run away with the game. They can just snowball it, but I think it's going to be 2-1 Falcons. Really? What do we do now? We create two graphics? Really? No, I'm going to no, have to have the final say, all right, unfortunately, all right, all right. as is uh, show business, I suppose. I'm going to go 2-0 int. Let's just call that what it is. Probably the end of the run here for the Falcons. And then, you know what? With the phase G2 one, yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on in that matchup to take into consideration, which should be infinitely closer than the first series on your screen. So I'm going to say 2-1 G2. Okay. Well, we, we have a nice agreement. G2 believers over here. Um, How does that feel? Yeah, so that cool right, I, think, I think though the Ants Falcons game doesn't really matter all too much because I think Spirit is gonna yes. 2 0. Spirit is gonna 2 0 whoever comes. Show of hands, show of hands, Spirit 2 0. We validate uh, that one. Yeah. You know, I want to believe no, but. You want to believe no. Like, I also, it would be cool to continue the Donk storyline, wouldn't it? If he can do what he's doing in group stages on land. Like, That's exactly what we're saying. Yeah, but also, it's in, the, it's in the arena, bro. Come on now. No, I mean, I, I know. That's why a little bit of romance is fine, but sometimes you gotta, you know, put your foot back All right. on Earth. Fine, so 2 1 Spirit. You guys ah, cool with that? You wanna give a map to Ants? That's what you're trying oh, to do. I'm here. trying to. Uh, sure. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, sure. I'll, in, I'll indulge you. G2, do they get stopped at Mouse? No, I, I actually think G2 make it through. I, in fact, I have Spirit G2 as my grand final before this conversation started. Okay, well, uh, yeah, well, I guess in this case, let's go 2-1 Spirit, uh, just because that's, I guess, the way it's going Worst go. case, we're going to like three mappers. So. Yeah, you know, three maps all the way around. G2, Mal's, I'm thinking, I don't know, G2 did have that little bit of a, a fumble there earlier on in the tournament. They had to play the game on hard mode, so maybe Mal's shows up, maybe not. Either way, I think it's a little closer, 2-1, maybe. It's a three mapper. Yeah. I, I'm cool with that. I think I'll go for G2, not because I'm a G2 stan, but oh. because whenever there's a team that has, you know, Mouse has good players, but they need to prove themselves on the big stage. Yeah. Until that happens, I'm predicting against them every single time when they go up against a Vitality, G2, or FaZe, right? But this might be their moment to do exactly that. It might be. Um, yeah, okay, so let's go 2 1 mouse. Let's go 2 oh, 1. No, oh. You're saying 2 1 G2. Oh, Are you my bad. I'm paying attention. Trying to, hey. I'm trying to hey. rally hey. up. Hey. Fine. 2 1 G2 over mouse. 2 1 Spirit over Ents. We're in agreement. And then, and then what do we have? A grand final. <laughs> Goodness <laughs> gracious. We just uh, stop the conversation here. That, that to me is kind of. It scratches me the wrong way. I have to do a prediction for this very game. Yeah. So what you gonna do? Kind of bothers. I'm gonna say the wildest thing, right? Oh boy. For anyone who's following me and my thoughts about G2, I will say G2 will win this final because they're good on Vertigo now, actually. Because I think when I look at this map, well, actually, what they have going against them is the fact that Spirit vetoes Inferno, right? Listen, I'm yeah. going to leave you on that one. I think uh, <laughs> Inferno. I'm going to plead over there. You cool gets, man, gets, rid of, <laughs> gets rid of Mirage, and then it's about, you know, Ancient, they're both good on it. I would give Vertigo to G2, and then, like, Overpass is probably, unfortunately, the fifth map. So it has to be 3-1 for someone, so I'm going 3-1 G2. I was going to say 3-1 Spirit, so you have to decide. You are the authority. Just like from the U.S. Yeah, in general. But, well, that's not entirely <laughs> true. I can tell you that from experience. Look, um, I, something about me wants the storyline, yada, yada, yada. G2 does it again and again and again, and the tomatoes and all that crap. Hunter but, is the MVP again. Yeah, you know, I'm going to go. I'm going to side here. We get a 3-2 series, G2 spirit. All right. Well, but G2 wins. Cool. You guys cool with that? Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess I don't we, think we have a choice. You're the host. Yeah, well, it's it's just talking I spoke heads. it into fruition. You know, how about that? Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. I do love this pre show setup. I do think that, you know, this is a nice change of environment. You know, we got people flooding in here trying to get their, their best seats they can inside the Spodek. And for what reason, Yanko? Why do you think they're doing that? I think just the history of this event, the prestige, the tradition, right? The amazing games we've had in the finals and just in the playoffs, you know, the Hall of Heroes mm. evolves, gets into the Spolek, and I can't wait for the teams to light it up. I think they want to watch Counter-Strike. That's why they're here. Look at these guys. I think they're practicing their dance moves. Either way, we're done dancing around here, guys. I think we need to go find our way into that very arena that I'm talking about so that we can get this quarterfinal underway. It is the Intel Extreme Masters, and it's live and direct from Katowice, Poland.
Smokes. You see a double smokes in the same place there. Simple just jumping casually into the side. Wait, wait, wait. What, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. That's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. Heroes a hall adorned with portraits of those who have built that legacy. Embellished with over two decades of figures who embody all that it means to be courageous, resilient, Herculean. But is it nature or nurture? Can one choose to become a hero? At the center of our universe stands the epic hero. They say with great power comes great responsibility. The hammer relentlessly beating down, our hero all too familiar. You could be having the game of your life. Your impact reverberating through the server. The stage where your legacy should be written. But drop the ball for a split second. Those are the moments no one will forget. You think the community's harsh? They are their own toughest critic. There are no free passes here. join the line of succession. Watching Monesi step on the stage in Spodek and playing the Counter-Strike he did from the very first minute, that was a confirmation for everybody out there that he was the real deal. Embrace the weight you find pushing down on your shoulders. Diamonds are only crafted under cosmic pressure. You know, we saw what the pressure would do to the heroes of the past. How every single misstep would be analyzed, every mistake scrutinized, how they would be criticized at every turn. Now, can the heroes of the future deal with that situation? With the target on your back, with eyes on your shoulder all the time? There is no time like the present. The epic hero molded by every moment. Many hands clamber for what so few in class. The question is, are you strong enough to withstand the pressure? Well, it is that time. Hey, hello, everybody. Sponek, good afternoon. How are you? All right, we'll take that one. Welcome, everybody. It's the Intel Extreme Masters, and I've got a matchup to tell you all about. One featuring that of G2 and FaZe in a quarterfinal. Uh, so, you guys want to say anything to him or what? Yeah, I'm kind of impressed. I didn't realize we would be talking to everybody immediately. That's a pleasure to be here once again in Spodek. What a historical place for Counter-Strike and for people out here. I'm sure we're going to have a blissful time this afternoon. Absolutely. I think the first game of the playoffs being the rematch of the grand final two years ago and just an all-around banger, really, whenever these two teams play each other, especially in the big arena in front of a crowd, two very experienced teams. G2 won it last year, FaZe won it two years ago. These two teams have won the last 
four championship level events when it comes to ESL. So yeah, I think two very heavy hitters that we have in the quarterfinals. Yeah, they're, they're here uh, for all intents and purposes some smarter and harder than others, right? Like the path and the trajectory that they had to take to get up this point, Maniac, for some it was a little easier. Yeah, I think FaZe was arguably a little easier than G2, but I would argue that the bounce back from G2, from that lower bracket in the group stage, was very meaningful. We knew they had to sweat it all the way, they had to bring the best out of themselves, not only see the Manessi show, the fact that Nico shows up in the last series gives everybody hope that this is the Nico we're about to see here in Spodek, and that gives depth and interest and intention to that game in itself. It's beautiful, Maniac. It's I know. I have butterflies in my stomach just thinking about it, right? I mean, Nico himself said that win last year was probably the peak of his career, right? The pinnacle of his career, the most important event he's ever won. Feels like it unlocked the next level for him and G2. But yeah, both of these teams, it's all about just getting to this point. Yes. You know, it doesn't really matter how it looks in the groups. If you can get to playoffs, that's where both teams just get much better. Yeah, and you know, there's one guy that has been around probably since the inception of international lineups. Actually, he hasn't been playing that long, but pretty damn close and pretty much for the same team the whole time. He goes by Rain. What do you tell me about him? Oh, wow, at this point, he's uh, one of the monuments one of, of the high-level Counter-Strike, I think it's fair to say. Um, he's been in a phase jersey for more than, what, seven years now, going on to eight. He's done it all. He's seen it all. Obviously, in 2022, a little bit different for Rain because he couldn't lift the trophy physically. He participated. He did the best he could. And then Kerrigan had to basically play mix and match with his clothes as the roster of G2 or FaZe rather was getting put together. JKS comes in in all these moments. Maybe, just maybe, FaZe with, or FaZe Rain with his mega biceps can lift that trophy once again. Mega biceps. Mega we have biceps. Pasha biceps and we have mega biceps. Okay, this is a little bit different. Hey, you know what? I think we get the opportunity to hear from Rain before we jump into the server. Hello, Rain. Oh, yeah, here we are. Welcome back to the Spodak. Uh, this time around, healthy, motivated, ready to go. Yeah, no COVID this time, so I'm ready. That's good indeed. Uh, le legacy matchup versus G2, G2 phase, always nice. But what do you think about the level of the teams? How close are you together? How close can we expect it to be? I don't think we're, any of us are peaking right now, so I think it's going to be a good game for sure, and I'm looking forward to it. Okay, looking forward to it too. Ah, uh, yes, Rain. Also a pretty cool guy, you know, outside of the server. I call also him Howie, you know, but, you know, you hang out with the pros. You yeah, you're cool like that, Trace. Cool like that. Also as cool as uh, the map vetoes. Again, we're still in best of threes right here. Again, for the grand final, we move into a best of five, but for a best of three, where the strong suits, where, where we lay in our hats. I, I don't have the feeling that there are obvious punishes. I think the picks should be pretty clear cut. If your G2 and Inferno is right there, I, I do believe it's an obvious choice for them, although Anubis is a good map, but it feels like it's a more middle ground. So you have the Inferno pick coming out of G2 and then for phase, Nuke is a map where they could maybe just maybe apply pressure to, but they go for Ancient. That was going to be my second guess. So Ancient, and then for last map, it's either Anubis or Nuke. As far as I'm concerned, I'd be surprised to see anything else. Yeah, absolutely. I was thinking, does FaZe maybe want to test G2 on overpass? Carrigan also. Oh. It's not unknown for him to target the opponent's weaknesses. G2, that was their permaban for the last two years, probably reintroduced it into their map pool, and that's why you see they veto it out in the second phase. And now FaZe gets to pick between Nuke and Anubis. I was thinking Nuke, probably. I, that's what I think so. I, I thought Nuke was going to be their pick, and here we have it. They, they get the choice. They go for Nuke. So we have Inferno, Ancient, and Nuke as the third map trace. The maps are set for our first quarterfinal. That they are, yeah. Inferno, Ancient, Nuke. Uh, you know, just right out of the gate here, is there a clear-cut favorite? And you're saying, okay, yeah, this, this may lean towards one side or the other. Uh. I, I think three maps is relatively obvious in the sense of G2 on Inferno and Ancient for phase are relatively clear as far as I'm concerned. I think also a big part of this is going to be the first map, right? You could see that phase picked to start on T side on Inferno. We know for G2, one of the best teams in the world. In CSGO, in CS2, so many teams are vetoing it, right? Because the map is a lot different. So we've seen G2 struggle with winning pistols in this tournament and getting off to slow starts. They lost all four pistols and managed to come back against Heroic to get to the spot. Like, I feel like if you lose all four pistols against FaZe, you're not going to be winning the series. So I think crucial the, the opening of that game if G2 can slow down FaZe at the start. And inversely, if you're G2, you can win a pistol, and that's also a start. But, you know, that's, <laughs> for, a, that's for a different discussion, and soon enough, uh, I do believe we get that opportunity to hear from Frozen right now, one of those new members of FaZe. What's he going to say? 
frozen. How's the goosebumps? Amazing. I'm enjoying. I was just, you know, observing the arena. Last time I was here, I was a fan. So, yeah, it feels amazing to stand here. Yeah, I, I can imagine that when it comes to your performance in Intel X3 Masters, this is the highest you've ever placed. And I think many people are asking the question, is this when you're going to go that extra level? How certain are you that you're going to be able to do that here in the Spodek with this team around you? I have no doubts in my head. Uh, I mean, we had a, you know, humble slap against Spirit. I think uh, today is the day when we, we're going to be prepared. And I heard from uh, Banks when he was talking to Nico that Inferno is confirmed. It's so interesting because G2, of course, they're usually good on it, but we haven't seen them play it yet. Can you tell me about how are you going to approach that map? Yeah, I mean, they haven't played it, but uh, I don't think they have some crazy stuff. From what I know, like, they usually play almost the same. Maybe they've added some new strats, but uh, I think they know how we play. We know how they play. I think it's just going to come down to individuals, you know, crazy rounds, crazy clutches here and there. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the a team with a better mentality is, you know, going to come on top. Speaking of mentality, I heard you say um, in an HLTV interview, it's all about keeping the intensity up when we've won a couple of rounds. I know that you're close to Kerrigan as well. Have you talked about this specifically, and how are you going to make sure that, you know, here with everything around you happening, you do keep it up? Um, yeah, I mean, just put the balls on the table, you know, and uh, show up. That's how it's it. Excellent final quote. Good luck. <laughs> My word, what did he just say right there? There's no coming back from that. The internet's forever frozen. He's spending too much time with Brocky already. <laughs> already, yeah. <laughs> hey, He's so wrong, let's though. talk about what Frozen brings to this lineup and what we can expect to see from him today. Well, the interesting point is we still have questions about what he brings in that very setup. We're talking about elite events. We're talking about the stage, the main stage. And he is my X Factor. He is the one and only reason I am ever so excited about FaZe being here in Spodek because he's been the best performer in the group stage. And with Maus and all these years, he spent there. He's always been consistent, incredible numbers. But this is the accolade that is missing in Ugh. his pedigree. And we call him the young veteran. In terms of elite events, he has never really known more than the top five and six as we had happened once. It was Cologne 2022. And it is the next step. It is the next step. If you are a Frozen fan, you're waiting for him to get that step, take it in stride and have these moments. We have a quote here for HLTV as well. God knows people were uh, outraged by his 12th position in the ranking last year but that's the argument that is the argument you haven't done it at an elite event you haven't done it in cologne you haven't done it in katowice and now you have the team for it you're not just supposed to solo carry the mouse players you had with you you're in phase phase that has been winning here that had trophies but you still need to put in the performance can you or are you going to stumble and phase that has been accommodating of him. He's, got, of he's getting all his roles, all his spots, right? The other guys are moving around. Rain has given up a good amount of positions to do that. So it's not only about you need to do it for Frozen's legacy and whatnot to prove what kind of a player you need to be. You need to do it for FaZe to be successful with this lineup. It, it, let's go into that roles conversation right there. What, you know, give me, you have examples of this. Like, give me something to where you understand this if you're the viewer watching for the first time, what that means. Uh, some of it is, you know, getting to play Nuke, getting to play Yard or Nuke, for example, which is a crucial position. I think they're lucky to have Rain on this team. Yes, of Who's course. an absolute soldier and an amazing teammate, right? Like, who will always be willing to sacrifice himself for what the team thinks is best to do, and he has played different spots in the past, but, yeah, it's just giving more responsibility to Frozen. Hey, hey, we're bringing you in, and we're expecting you to yeah. be the star that's those roles trace what it means is you have a lot of responsibility there those are the key areas on a map where you either get a lot of information where if you can get control it becomes the round becomes much easier for you and that's why the world's best players play those spots Absolutely agree. And you talk about being vocal, making decisions. One of the first lines and statements we've heard about Frozen when he came to phase it, he had expectations. He had demands. He had roles he wanted to play, situations he wanted to be put in. But that comes at a price. And the price is you have to do it in the semifinal, in the quarterfinal as well. You cannot just have a good time when you're stomping on people in group stage and say, hey, Finn, can we do this strategy? Hey, can we do this move? Man, you got to do it when the scoreline is 10 to 10 and you're here in Spodek. Do you have the shoulders? to really put your money where your mouth is right now on the big stage? That's the question for Frozen. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he's gonna get that opportunity to prove that here in just a few moments. But first, I have some comments. Hey, Spodek, y'all awake out there? Hello? <laughs> Sounds about right. What about our commentators? Let's make some noise for them. Yeah, the excitement's starting to be felt real. It feels real now, Chad, as we find ourselves in our home for the next couple of days. This is our beautiful caster setup at the very tippy top of the Spodek. Crowd's already in force, ready for this first game, and I'm definitely ready for this first game. Yeah, nice little perch. We can see all the action, the stage, the fans, and hopefully the sequel can be as good as the original. We are getting G2 versus FaZe, locking horns in the Spodek again. Champions of 22, taking champions of 23. Mm, this mm. one... 
better deliver. Yeah, 100%. It's poetic that they clash here in the quarterfinals, and we have the honor to be bringing you all the action after this break. Exciting stuff and some uh, some pretty cool storytellers to do just that. Oh yeah, Absolutely. always a pleasure. Absolutely, and you know they're talking about the sequel where this is the the third part, Trace, and as all we all know, Return of the King that was the peak. So it's a trilogy then. Exactly. Ah, how okay. they call it? Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, but examples, I asked you guys for them. We talked a little bit about roles. Maybe we look more at the technical aspect and look at some of these rounds. I think in this case, Maniac, what are we taking a look at? Yeah, listen, uh, some of these segments that I wanted to show on Telestrator highlight the aggression that we're going to see on the server. None of these teams, nor Dino G2, nor FaZe, want to play the late round 5v5. They want to be aggressive. They want to find opening kills. So we can dive into this beautiful little piece of technology that we have here. There we have it. This is from their last opposition. We're talking about Inferno. It's a map that's going to be played here in the corner final and my focus is on finding opening kills for phase refusing the status quo refusing to play the late round 5v5 round number four it's Rob's here with the first immediate aggression catches hunter off guard and then Rob's being Rob's obviously a little bit aggressive a little bit pesky he finds that double kill from this moment on phase has basically done what they wanted to do they can just easily close out the round and that's going to be a 3-1 phase the aggression pays off but here is the problem it doesn't always work phase the next round they try to be aggressive again this time off the back of Brokey with the help in to boiler as well that's Rob's but G2 is a bit ready G2 are sort of adaptive adjusting to that situation and then they're fighting the the kill. G2 wins the opening duel, and that leaves Bros and Brokey rather in a bad position. He's got to pull it back out of apps, finds a shot, and then that's G2 that's in control. I, I have just shown you the win condition of this game. Who gets ahead in the first fights? Who gets ahead in the first skirmishes? Is FaZe able to have these little moments, create these 5v4, or is G2 going to be ready and punish them? If they do, it's going to be G2. It's all about the first It's all about the first 20, 30 seconds. This is where it goes down between FaZe and G2. Yeah, because as a team, you can't afford to start man down most of the time, unless you have heavy hitters, which they also have to be present, right, Yenka? Absolutely, and I think one of the reasons for that as well is these teams are so similar in the way they think about the game and the way they approach the game, right? It's default heavy Counter-Strike with a couple of set rounds sprinkled in, you know, some momentum calling. So it's the case of who are you, I am you, but stronger. It just depends who that who is going to come out on top. Who are you, I know who I am, but strong, ah, whatever. Look, check yeah, this out. potato. P or tomato, potato, tomato. It's like the same but different. Uh, speaking of which, that's what's different about all of these teams we have left in the playoffs. All six of these teams have some accolades to their name. But Yanko, what is throwing you off about these numbers? I think what's crazy about FaZe and G2 compared to the, some of the other teams is just the sheer wealth of experience that they have on playing on this stage, mm, right? Yes. I'm not talking playoffs of LAN tournaments or just LAN, you know, big event LAN appearances. I'm talking playoffs of S-tier events. That's your Katowice, your Cologne, your Majors, right? Which is a completely different beast to anything else that we have in the circuit. And that's why it matters. And these two teams clear everyone else by a large margin. You know, if Oof. you look at it, FaZe has 181. Ah, and more than half of this is just Rain and Kerrigan, right? And you can see G2 with this lineup, they have less than half of what FaZe has, despite their names. And, you know, then down the line, you go to some of these other teams, right? And this is why we single out FaZe and G2. This is why this matchup is the most talked about probably that we're going to have up until that grand final game. And can you imagine the contrast? We're foreshadowing just a little bit here, but think about the semifinal. Think about who's waiting to play these either G2 or FaZe Clan. It's Miles with 32 apparitions. That is going to be such a contrast. By the way, Ents has 60, 49 of that is Glaive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was right? say, So, yeah. you know, without Glaive, that's also a super inexperienced lineup. But yeah, this is why these guys, you know, are so comfortable. And Trace, when we talk about FaZe G2, it's Atomic CS. And what I mean by that, you're not going to get a lot of time when someone shows up on your crosshair to react. Yeah. It's going to be a second, a couple of bullets. If you don't get the kill by then, you're dead. It's a flash, you might say. That's Monacy. Oh, th it is Monacy. And speaking of Monacy, we're going to hear for him before we jump in the server. Monacy, how you doing? Back to the spray deck again. Doing awesome. Amazing. Amazing. That's good positive news. Now, CS2 update, I know you like to get your time and stuff in there. How does it feel for you? Any different? No, it feels not that different, but uh, obviously some good fixes for CS2. So I'm just excited to play. Excited to play it. In terms of that though, right, coming into Katowice, you achieved one of your dreams here, right? One of your big goals for your career. What's the feeling like this time? Do you feel like you're used to it now? This is normal? Time to protect it, time to defend the trophy. And uh, obviously it was my always dream to win Katowice and just play in Spodak Arena. But just want to do it again. Want to do it again. 
and to make that happen again, to do it again, what emotions are you feeling this time? Is there any difference or is it the same? I just always remembering. Right now I'm remembering that those emotions that I, like when I was there, you know, yeah. and uh, I'm just trying to remember it and uh, do it again, make it happen. Do it again, make it happen. He's always ready. Good luck, mate. <laughs> see a dap like that and it just it just sounds crisp crisp clean daps boys yes indeed the make sure you sign it the high five yeah there it is uh okay yeah Monacy gonna be one of the driving forces we talk about it every single time uh and for this young man lifting a trophy again sure why not obviously it would be incredible for his young career but i do think that in some way we we underrate how much he's had to do with g2 recently like we just accept it as a blanket statement like oh yeah don't worry about it hunter and nico are gonna show up they're big games player it's gonna be fine what do we do with all of the games and the events where monesi was alone hard carrying my man need an actual physical doctor because his spine is broken from carrying g2 it's been monesi the last few weeks holy hell his numbers are crazy he would need some help he's not built for it. he's not pasha you see, that doesn't work out. He needs someone to step up, to be right there with him. So you're saying maybe like uh, the boy that was promised. How about Nico Kovac? Nico Kovac, uh, here we go. Every last year, they'll be looking to have that same success. Today, I've got Nico with me, and it's a quarterfinals matchup. But I want to get your opinion on just how you felt it went during the group stage for you guys. Uh, yeah, it was a grind. <laughs> Obviously, we had uh, the tough last two games on the last day, and uh, I'm really happy that we managed to pull through. But uh, overall, uh, it's been a bit bumpy, but I felt like we grew as a team. I think we improved a lot uh, from the first date until the last. So uh, hopefully, we're going to manage to gear up uh, for the playoffs as well and uh, show some good country strike. And in terms of improving as a team, do you think this update might have changed something to help you guys improve at all? How are you finding it? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, on paper, it should uh, help us a bit, but... Uh, I think like uh, everyone is adapting to the game very quickly and uh, yeah, we didn't really have too much time to adapt to it either. We played like one day, so uh, it's hard to say whether we're going to benefit uh, for this event or maybe the next one. But uh, overall, just uh, very excited that we are again uh, playing in this product. And now you're going up against FaZe for this game, right? This is a game that could be a grand final game, for example. But looking at it, FaZe have made some adjustments, right, to fit Frozen into the team. Does this change anything with your game plan? Is there a weak spot you can hit? Uh, well, Frozen is definitely not a weak spot. <laughs> but uh, they probably need more time to, you know, get used to the system and everything. Uh, I think uh, they are not at their highest peak yet. I mean, they could maybe reach a peak in the playoff. I cannot say uh, for sure, but... Uh, like we are ready, we are ready to take them on and uh, I think we have a good chance of beating them as well. I think, uh, I think it's a lot up to us. I think uh, if we show up individually, which is always our stronger side, I think uh, we have a good chance of winning. But uh, as you said, this could be a final game and I just hope for some uh, final excitement. <laughs> And one last question. You haven't been able to play Inferno this tournament, right? Normally, your guys are always picking this. Against FaZe, it can come into play. Are you still confident in it? Uh, yeah, uh, Inferno has always been our whole map, but uh, so was FaZe at some point. So uh, I think both teams are feeling pretty good on this map. And uh, yeah, I think uh, it's, it's uh, really weird to see that Inferno is not being played so often at the event. So uh, yeah, but... Uh, we are going to see it uh, in the first uh, quarterfinal at least. I like it. There we go. Let's see what Nico and G2 can do against FaZe next. And that's because FaZe versus G2 is Inferno Ancient Nuke. But let's talk about time to target, Yanko. Yeah, exactly. This is what we were talking about. I mean, Nico talked about the individual level that the players need to have. Look at how much time you have before you're dead. <laughs> like, this is also just from their last series that they played. I mean, that's why we Damn. keep saying, and the players themselves keep saying, you need to be on point individually. If mm. that doesn't happen, you have no hope of winning this game. And there's so much at stake as well. We just heard from Nico, of course. Somewhat, Trace, I refuse to think that the exceptional Nico is gone. I just refuse. I can't accept it. For as long as I have known him in Counter-Strike, he's been one of the most exceptional players we've had in game. Greatest rifle of all time. Is, is, is he gone? Is, he, is that it? Is he becoming a natural, an, an average player? That would piss me off. I don't, I don't want any no, of that. I mean, the silver lining here 
here is on that final day where they played two best of threes, he was their best player. I know. And he stepped up, right? So you're hoping that can continue coming into the playoffs. But I think also it's about everyone stepping up, right? Hooksy has been playing better individually. Nexa seems to be doing his job. It's Hunter, Hunter right, that we're waiting for, really. He was the MVP here last year, right? And we always talk about he steps up in the playoffs and whatnot. He, we heard it from him. He's working very hard to figure it out for CS2. Maybe the update helps him a little bit. I think more than anything, it's just placebo, right? Like you're just thinking in your head, okay, this is gonna make me be the same old guy, right? And sometimes all you need, Trace, is just to believe. Heart and soul, brother. Heart and soul, brother. He soul. steps up here. He needs a forklift. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll, we'll get that out. I think it's backstage. Gentlemen, thank you very much. We've had a hell of a pre-show here, but we have an even better game in front of us. The Spodic is situated, is ready. I see some people in line to get some refreshments, but we're all getting ready to jump into the server. So we're going to go to a break. We're going to come back. It's phase G2. Spodic, we'll see you in a second. Welcome to the Intel Extreme Masters Katowice 2024! Live from the historic Spodek Arena. And let's kick it off by putting our hands together for the Vice President of Product Development, the Executive Producer. You know him as Mikhail Blichars. We all know him as Carmack. Come on. Hey there, everybody. I missed you. I really missed you. So, I want to start off today by telling you a story about my son. It will make sense, I promise. So, he was born in 2016, a couple of weeks before Fnatic won the trophy in this place, in this arena. He's eight years old, and last Sunday, he had his first ever judo tournament. And as his father, I feel like it's my duty to help him and protect him. But when he was out there fighting, 
I couldn't, and he needed my help. He was hurt, he was in pain, he was crying, and he was losing. And in that moment, he was all alone without his daddy to help him. And he had two choices to make. One choice was to crumble and give in, and the other choice was to take responsibility and find a way to win. And what I saw later was he overpowered the other boy and he threw him to the ground. And a few moments later, he was my little boy, but from this fight, he emerged something else. He became my little lion. And what does that have to do with video games? Well, for many people around the world, also for me, but I'm sure, I'm really sure many of you as well, gaming is a hiding place. We hide from the bad stuff, from the difficult stuff, we hide from responsibility. But if we stay in this place long enough, this place becomes not a hiding place, but a proving ground. And it puts us on a path to here, to this place, to Katowice, to Spodek. Because if you want to be the best in the world, eventually you have to come to Spodek, and eventually you have to prove it. And this place is no hiding place. You come here to compete against the very best in the world. You come here to find out if you are the one that has it, what all of you have paid to see. You come here to find the truth about yourself. You come here to find the truth that maybe tastes like a confetti shower, or maybe a truth that tastes like a kick in the stomach. And sometimes on this stage, if you compete, you will be alone and you may feel helpless. And you will have two choices to make. You will either crumble or you will take responsibility, rise up, and find a way to win. And the cost for that, the cost for reaching your goals and achieving your dreams, the cost of that is very high. You have to leave some of the child in you behind. And I think especially the older players that have played here, I think they understand the burden of that cost. Because winning here Winning here is, and, and, and crying in those tears, that's a little bit of that child in you melting away. And it's those tears that tell us how important this is and how meaningful. And it is those tears that make it fascinating to come here every year and watch this spectacle. Because we together, right here in this arena, and the entire world, watching these players on this stage where there is nowhere to hide, we get to find out which one is the biggest of lions. This is Intel Extreme Masters. Welcome. Playing against FaZe in an arena is different than playing against them in group stage. I think that we both feed off the crowd and uh, it's always fun to play against them. It's always close games and um, looking forward to always to meet FaZe. There are so many interesting small things, so small matchups in the game. Us versus Nico, obviously. Taz versus Neo. Um, there's a lot of funny small stories, and I think the atmosphere is going to be crazy. Great to have this as the first game of a quarterfinal, and I just hope it delivers as I imagine. When you see a crowd and that many people, you're trying to not focus on anything else. You're just trying to enjoy the game because there's a reason at the end why we play that game. We are trying to enjoy every moment, and with experience, it's getting better and better. So. <laughs> You get to play in front of the crowd. You get to be two or three games away from winning the one of the biggest trophies of the year. That everything changes. Thank you. 
unexplored, its secrets, hidden in the cosmos. Knowledge is passed on, refined and used by generations to come, to define what's possible. Fight or flight. The journey is vast. Fame, glory, a distant star, far from one's reach. Stay too long in the star's light and risk annihilation. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three. It all begins with footsteps up a flight of stairs. Each championship team not just etched into the trophy, but also on the steps. A reminder to those ascending, the legends who made that very same climb before them. It is time to welcome our six finalists. Please welcome into the Spodek, it's Mouse! Secured in the semi-final, it's Team Mouse. Shiny, a man born in Poland, but grew up in Ireland. Can he make magic happen on home soil? Locked and loaded in the semi-finals, it's Team Spirit. We got Donk Mania, that has arrived. But can he handle the pressure at the highest level? A team looking to guide themselves into the grandest of finals. Playing in our second quarter final, it's Team Falcons. Always a bridesmaid, never the bride. Snappy, well, he won in Dallas, but can he take an all-star lineup all the way? Zonic, he believes. Facing off against the Falcons, please welcome Spodek. It's Ents! <laughs> Died to looking for revenge against his former teammates. He now leads a lineup that is sure to be fan favorites. This week, especially with their adopted IGL, Lukash! Now to introduce the teams competing in our first quarter final, it's FaZe Clan! stalwart of this stage, winning in 2022. Frozen, the young veteran, but he's still searching for his first big land trophy. And it's a tough road ahead for FaZe. Please welcome the reigning title holders. It's G2! Defending champions Nico and Monacy, they look to get back into form on one of the biggest stages in all of esports. Can they do it? Can they go back to back?
Oh, yes, here we go. Are we ready? You know we are. Now we have to bring something out, and that is to show what they're going to win. In this trophy, we have names of legends. They lift it in this place, a trophy that is built on the tears of the losers and, quite frankly, the tears of the winners. It is great to bring it out with two legends, and that, Spodek, is Lord, and please go mad, for Passion Biceps! Two legends of the sport, come over here, guys. Come on over. I guess the question is, bringing out that trophy, it's one of the great trophies in esports. What will it mean to the team that wins it? Panowie, panie, dzień dobry, rozpierdzielamy. Dzisiaj kibicujemy naszym do końca! You love this place, they love you. What is it like to be back here? Yeah, I would like to say thank you for yourself for inviting me with my friend uh, Marius. I am very happy. I love you so much. Thank you. Oh yeah, and Polish esports is back. Panowie, czekaliśmy osiem lat na tą chwilę. Pokażcie, że stać nas naprawdę na pokazanie, że Spodek potrafi odlecieć. What well, these guys said once again for Lord of Passion Biceps. Right, it is time for our first match here in the Spodek. If we can have our captains to the center, feel free to shake hands. When they shake hands, it's on! Right, here we go. Three days of esports rock and roll starts here. I love this place. We have filled it out with the greatest fans around. What we need to do now is find out who is winning this. Is it FaZe?
ready to get this show on the road. Two former Katowice champions collide in the quarters. On one side of the stage stands FaZe, G2, the other. Legendary names. We've just had some legends walking out the trophy. And now the names that have forged a path into CS2. We start on Inferno, Chad. The stage is set for this quarterfinal. And expectations are high for both of these squads. We all know what type of Counter-Strike these two teams can deliver. Let's hope today is no different. to start on the CT side, on the attack. Excuse me, G2 starting on the defense. FaZe Clan starting to bring that T side action. Let's get this party started. Slow and steady out the gates. U2 invested from FaZe. A couple of smokes, Molly flashes. But over towards B, three defenders for G2. Hooksy ready to block with the smoke of his own. Nico and Monacy, the heavy hitters, tucked in tight. Decoy used to clear out towards the half wall. And just making sure a phase that G2 are not trying any aggressive maneuvers out the gate to set the tone. Banana control has been taken. Now working on that halls and boiler. Standard stuff on a map we haven't seen a lot of. Lots of options available here for Carrigan and Coke. Moto smoke, long smoke. Molly towards the pit, looking likely. Hunter's first test. He spots them out. Rotates Nexa through. Out. Nexa's got a lot of pressure coming his way. And he does stand in the flames. Delivers! Triple headshot on the P2K. The rest is Hunters. He'll finish it with style. And Nexa, that molly meant nothing to him. That is huge right there from Nexa. He gets a second chance in G2. The first round in the quarterfinal up against FaZe. And he flatlines three. This is a confidence booster. And with the P2K, none of that USP business. That is beautiful. What a start. And again, I have to reiterate, the confidence for Nexa to get that early as a pit anchor, which is somebody, if I'm carrying it, I'm looking to exploit on this CT side. That is one way to kick things off. Oh, man, yeah, that's going to get the juices flowing for Nexa. FaZe Clan have immediately brought the Tech Nines out. Interesting. Opted for the force bite without that plan. Yeah, they're up against rifles. De defensive banana smoke. Trying to buy them some space. And while looking for space is Rain. Very Spots. cavalier about that. Has to be careful. Multiple bodies close mid. That's a bit of a pincer at the moment with two short, one long. Again, map control. Name of the game for FaZe. Frozen with a furrowed brow. Confirms top banana is theirs. Oh, again, it's possible for another execute. Long smoke will keep Hunter moving. Now he has a choice. Do I dip back to Arch or Library fast for that rotation? Or do I worry about an apps pop? You can see between those two minds now. There is a window of opportunity. Nades flying through. Hooksy, reaction. Smoke of his own. Do they respect this? Good counter utility. Look at the nade. Does significant damage. Faces is are ringing. And Hooksy, he activates with the MP9. He will go down. But at the back of the site stands Nico. And he delivers. Only Robs remains. A double kill so far in the round. It's not going to be easy to plot because Hunter's there. A missed shot from Rops just clips the ears of Hunter. And FaZe, they falter. It would have felt like a salvage start there if they were able to get that bomb down, but it's two rounds in a row where executes were on the agenda for FaZe and denied both times. So well handled on both bomb sites. This is very good work from G2. They're not tripping up early because now in MR12, you take a look at mistakes, right? Losing to a force buy. Well, they are amplified. So the fact that they've been able to weather this storm, the third should be a freebie. Deagles 2, Tech 9, 1, a P250, and Carrigan with Util to try and make something happen. So FaZe have been blanked in the early stages, and G2, this is a great way to build some confidence, this team. Inconsistent, sure, but the peaks as high as it gets. And again, defending their Katowice title.
Haven't even needed Monacy yet. And he was such a big factor in them securing the playoffs. Yeah, so if you can have the likes of Hunter, who the desk has discussed, actually it's been discussed at nauseum at this point because his performance is so out of character at the moment with the shift to CS2. If he can come online in the big matches, that's where it really counts. The team have been able to get them to this point. Stalled out now and very good economy of U2. They have a minute on the clock and look at the nades that they have left over. Take a look here at the right hand side of your screen. Just see all the nades that uh, are still being held on to. Mollies, smokes, and 45 seconds on the clock. So this one is looking very good for G2. Utility well placed. Still plenty in the coffers for the defense. Smoke on Moto, they will have to give it a go. 28 and counting. Nexa to be tested once more with support from Monacy. Draws his first frag into the head of Frozen. And keeping it clean, all five alive. It's got to feel good for G2, just converting that 3-0. Yeah, not only that, the fact that they've only taken three casualties in the first three rounds of play means their economy is sitting pretty. But they're not feeling under pressure now as we move into this first gun round. They can take a bit of a punt. If it doesn't work out, there's enough for a residual bite. Monacy bringing out the AWP immediately, and the same cannot be said for Brokey on this T side. So, FaZe, now we get to take a look at the game plan. Sure, pistol didn't work, forced by follow-up nothing, and blanked on the lighter investment. But this is where Carrigan's been cooking. What part of the map does he want to pressure? Is he wanting... What are the keys with FaZe? It's about setting your three stars. Now it's frozen alongside the likes of Robson and Brokey into these mid-rounds. So they need to be able to at least pressure across the map, break through and cause the chaos. Had that lovely highlight from the desk there showing, you know, just how quick you're dead when types of players like this are in the server. We have heavy hitters. Not a control at the moment, all G2s. And Buller and Hall's investigated now by Robson Rain. So space, but look at the stack from G2. Four players over towards the A side of the map right now, and they've allowed Nico, who's found his form towards the tail end of the group stage, just to stand tall. Banana called clear, but still. 45 seconds, crowd starting to make some noise. First fight. Monacy's got it covered. Pulls the trigger, reveals the orb, takes down Rain. It's flat Thirty now. Five, very uncomfortable for FaZe. Not able to get into these biffs and brawls and just denied by U2 again. This is fantastic from G2. You have to give credit where it's due, and the way that they're holding on on the CT side is fantastic. Yeah, very composed. However, it's Carrigan that's trying to forge a path into B. Nico catches him. What are you supposed to do with 15 seconds, a two-man discrepancy? They're heading into this B site. They know Nico resides. Hooksy in support, smoked off coffee. Eight seconds, you have to say. There's oh. no way in. They had no space, no kills, blanked again. Still only three frags to the name of FaZe, and we're four rounds deep. This is the kind of thing that can spiral. The absence of frags. You know, you're this deep, as you've just highlighted. 4-0, yeah, let's get the tag timeout. FaZe Clan have called their first. And a chance for one of the legends. We had all five of the Golden Five on stage, and now we have two of them behind both of these championship squads. Well, they know all about lifting the trophy in the Spodek, does Neo. They're absolute great. Go back to the 1.6 days, he was a beast. And Taz, well, a beast in the personality department, but also in the server. Those two, once upon a time, enemies, then best of friends, and now, facing each other here in 2024. And all five of the Golden Five on the stage in the Spodak in 2024. Kind of crazy. 10 years on from their major success. I'm worried about FaZe. They've gone for an investment behind the safe gun, sure. But look how light in util it is. You're talking three smokes across the team, only one Molotov, a couple of flashes. You might have to do something a little bit more in to force a fight because they haven't had any chance. It's just been slow as you like. Okay, well, Frozen. The new name in the FaZe Clan jersey. Did start to take some early control. Hooksy on that reload. It was a window of opportunity. Here comes Frozen. Looking for Hooksy. Already dispatches Nico. Ouch! That will leave a mark. Hooksy deleted as well. He 
he wants it. He wants the sight. Not ready, though. Not ready for this one. Hunter holds on to B. Uh, look where the bomb is as well. There's no phase finish. There's just a lot of pressure and at the moment. Monacy still over towards A. Not an easy defense, but one I'm sure Monacy could pull off. The hyper aware youngster. Oh, but it's Rox prepared for the duel. Punished for his peak. A side open for FaZe, and they will find their first. That three rifle save has saved them. Yeah, and again, they had to force themselves into a fight. They had to actually play for that banana control, and we can turn our attention to Frozen. And we've got uh, 10 players on stage, two coaches. Well, that's 12 in total. 11 of those individuals have been in a final here in the Spodak. Nine of them have lifted the trophy. Oh. Uh, only one of them is fresh faced to this experience, and that was Frozen. So getting away with the needs to in Banana, that's the fire starter for the team. Get on the board one to four. Yeah, the interview he gave to HLTV about why Katowice is special to him. And for a lot of the players that we just saw step out onto that stage is that Katowice was where this kind of obsession began. You saw what others were doing and you wanted to be there yourself. Well, here he is, it's his chance. It's a nice round to win. We're gonna keep three alive, back of the pit, bomb's gonna go off. And an AWP for Brokey picked up off the corpse of Monacy. That one kill catching off guard, Rops, laser sharp, and it was from Monacy's POV, we saw him go down. And that's exactly what that highlight reel the desk had for us, right? You just blink and you miss it. This is the Frozen double. First two kills of the game for Frozen and impactful ones. Those are your favorite, as here it is from Rops' Ooh. POV. So we you're dead. just the tip of the barrel for his awareness. Monacy goes down. So some individual duels won by FaZe. Brokey on the AWP is just disgust. This is heavier in Banana. Most definitely, Hoopsie's hearing a lot of this. Carrigan ships in the night, they passed him. Are they aware? No, they're not. Hoopsie disrupts. Caught by Frozen, can't double up. Carrigan concedes. Well, you trade the brains. Now they can both puppet from the grave. Hoopsie and Carrigan, the leaders. Down and out, but still so much time and they can micromanage, start clicking through. See who's got what left, what space we hold on to. Maybe just maybe a banana execute. Nico on the jiggle, smoke and a molly for the defense. He can drop that and molly so they can't just run in and actually changing his mind as he's been playing anti. The tail of this Rops now joining the party. Plenty of smokes, flashes and molotovs to make a full B execute available. Well timed from Nico. Allows him to get his own smoke down and reposition. But, but just note they only used one smoke. They still have two more. So they baited out Nico's utility there. He's scared, they're coming. And still no rotation. Nico isolated on this site. Molotov forces him into the open. He's blind, he's burned, and he's dead. Giving it a go with a nade on the smoke. Misses his chance, Monacy won't get another one of those. Uh, you can see there though, just that CT smoke was enough pressure, Nico knowing he was the solo defender. It went quiet, he thinks, all right, I'm one of the best rifles in the world. I'll see what I can do, boys. Don't rotate over just yet. And then immediately, FaZe follow through with the coffin smoke, another CT, the flashes, the molly perfectly placed, flushed into the open. And FaZe, now just two rounds the difference. And again, it was another banana tussle. This time, <laughs> it's much more of a clear indication as we can see, look at all the smokes in banana, puffed up. Yeah, I mean, I'm actually really glad we saw that from Nico's POV, just how helpless he was. And that double pump from FaZe, very effective. So Carrigan calling a good game, recovering, making it just a two round discrepancy now after that 3-0 G2 start. And look at the turnout, by the way, the Spodek on a Friday afternoon, showing up in full force for our first quarterfinal. And well, tell me who's missing the blockbuster of FaZe versus G2. This is the type of game you can almost be assured is gonna deliver that grand final back in 2022. An absolute barn burner as there he is, Taz. New to the coaching realms. And they're not down and out just yet at G2. Still plenty of money. Go to get them through another buy, the Monacy AWP. Do they want to try and set him up for an early pick, an early fight? Hooksy, unfortunately, will just be operating on a Famous. Has a lot of util to go with it. Nico's the only one currently light on. And Nico, I was taking a look, Alex. Mm. First day of play in the group stage, he was using a red mouse. Second day of play, a white mouse. And third day of play, a black mouse. And that's where he had his good form. So he's on the black mouse today. Okay. Banana aggression again, the harassing top banana, the orb oh. almost oh. blown out of the server. Oh. 
barely hanging on by a thread is Monacy. And he's solo. Good grief, he's, he's in trouble. How have they not rotated? How is he not asking for help after catching two nades? Oh, he's got a job to do here, and they're trying to call the bluff of face. So all that util cleared out top banana, Brokey holding the line. I don't think we'll see the head-to-head -head between the two of them. It might be frozen to pick first. Doesn't have to be a headshot, though, does it? A single bullet would do it. Harrigan retrieving the explosives. <clears throat> 70 seconds. Let's see. Backing himself, backing his aim, and his reaction time. There's few that click quicker. Rain. Dips out of boiler. Oh, Nico. Didn't spot anything. Is it missing? Add info. Exactly. Kagan's got slipped up short. This is a hard one to break. Walking in. To the stacked side, Nico gets punched. It's Karakun with an opening kill. Hooksy, though, holding on to long. This crossfire established. It's going to be uncomfortable for FaZe. Pokey, a quick adjustment. Removes Hooksy from the pack. This next a Hunter crossfire, though, with 18 seconds left. FaZe need a hero. The smoke isolating the duel. That's not a good clear from Frozen. It's Nexa that will piece it together, and only one stands. G2, hold on to A. Nexa has done fantastic in this pit position. The pistol around the test, the P2K with three. And now just being stoic, letting that clock sink through. Nico either didn't hear the comms of what was or was not being held because he gave himself up as a bit of an offering there. But the fact of the matter is Hunter and Nexa held on. They stayed tight and an important round. That was from the gates called as a 4-1 setup for the CT side. And we saw just how much pressure Monacy was under. So they had to call the bluff there, G2, and massive work from Nexa. Again, the confidence for him has to be swelling at the moment. This is a change. Very quick, making footsteps. Nexus heard it. Nexus heard the steps. Robs. Made it down. But is he anticipating someone so close? He adjusts. Nexa concedes an opening death. Monacy spotted, forced off of the angle. That's a lot of pressure now on the A defense. Lily really stalled out. Smoke top mid. Flash and the go, top banana. So keep your eyes on Hooksy setting up Nico with the alley oop. Silent dismount. Element of surprise is theirs. But Karen Ganada wears. Caught by Nico. An equalizing frag at that minute mark. And Nade as well chipping away. Heavy damage onto Frozen. Nico, he weathers the flame to reposition. But again, G2's defense is impressing. Keeping them moving, however. Monacy this time to be tested. Oh, Monacy. Caught a whiff of rain. And it's the AWP again. Removes rain. Uh, oh, miss. Frozen alive. He shouldn't be. 30 seconds. They have to commit up. Trying to smoke off this AWP. The missed shot from Monacy. Counting on Hunter. Going forward into the duel. Monacy can't hit anything. Now the Deagle connects. The sight not lost yet. As the bomb goes down, Monacy trying to find a perch over the smoke. A three versus two retake. And Hooksy, not ready for Graveyard. Six bullets. Only six bullets, but one on Monacy's orb. It could be good. He misses it again. Run on down, and Faze will take the round. Oh, back and forth, that one went, and between the sights. Monacy with a couple of uncharacteristic misses there. Does that shake his confidence, Chad? That's not like him. Oh, I think the first one where he missed on short was awkward because they weren't actually parthing in his direction. They were both actually trying to get away. Yeah. So it's one of these weird peaks where it's not what you're expecting. They look like a sitter, but sometimes they can be harder to hit. But he was under a lot of pressure in the pit with an AWP. That's not an easy place to find yourself. Frozen finding that one onto Hooksy as well did make the job a whole lot more manageable and towards the end. Very important because the side player was mollied out of position. It was the bloodlusters. Yeah, the couple of misses from Monacy. Oh, the he, jump. He was trying to assist because he see he was getting smoked off. This was very important from Frozen. So again, impactful kills from the young vet. To just find ourselves into a little bit of a technical timeout. We'll stay away from discussing the finances for a moment. But there was a big question coming in today. We got Neo behind FaZe. Right. You've got Taz behind G2. Right. Who was going to be the crowd favorite? I, I wasn't sure. I was listening to the, the OJ 
Temperature check. Maybe G2? I mean, let's find out. Are you cheering for Taz? See, okay, that's G2 covered. What about Neo? Remember the 1.6 days? Yeah, I heard a uh, word on the street is he was pretty good at that video game. Yeah. All right, well, we're back underway, and those finances we can discuss. G2, lost bonus coming into this was bottom of the barrel. They have to go for the force bite. Doomed if you do, doomed if you don't. But being able to salvage things with two M4s and another stack from Hooksy, knowing the CT side of Inferno, you need a few gambles. Be ripping a page out of James' book, but especially so when you're lighter on in the U2 and weaponry department. These A1Ss are complemented by some 5.7s and Deagles. Smokes as well to corral Carrigan. It's maybe an inopportune decision. Synchronized flames, signals. A lot of presence towards top banana. Now, questionable, right? Are you trying to block them or do you want them to come in towards the stack? Well, if there's only one there, that's his smoke. Very good thought process there indeed. That could be the case. That could be exactly the mind games that G2 are trying to play, but they will investigate elsewhere. The CT top mid smoke will be fading momentarily. Rain while he's at the porch. It's Hunter. Oh, we said he's a big game player. Have some big game impact. Has been absent of his traditional form. Truck smoke. Look at how that plumes as they're wrapping long, but this is all the ruse, the bomb. So deep, and there's only 28 seconds left. They've got to pick oh, a side. It's beautiful for Hunter. The bomb's coming back. Oh, he's been spotted out. It's Rain that plucks him from the pack, but it's too quiet. No attempted trade. The bomb's going straight into the completely unguarded A bomb site. It's just a save call at the moment. You're not going to give this one a go at all. We already know on Inferno how difficult it is to retake the sites. They gambled incorrectly. They dropped the round, but how much more do they lose? That position just highlighted there by Rush the Ranger. Frozen pushed all the way up. Any. Sound cues made by G2 will give up their position. Brokey, well, he's also investigating towards spawn. The push from Rain into CT. They really want to hunt. The finances for FaZe are not fantastic either. Yeah, maybe this is going to be just more of a containment. Rain's having a look. And Monacy spotted out. Being cheeky with it. Not going to force this issue. You know there's potential crossfires established. Frozen is having a look at Nico. He's spotted out, but will duck under cover. They'll get away with another bite, a second bite of the cherry. And just one round the difference. And this is where G2 won't be able to invest anything more than they just saved. They need the loss bonus to be accrued in the next. To get themselves into the buy department once more. We'll be looking at 2,400 for the next round of play. And the second tactical timeout used from G2 now. Now, Neo's had a bit longer to get himself accustomed with his players and the coaching role. First couple of months, he made it clear he was there just to observe, see the pieces, learn about what to expect, how Carrigan likes to play this game. Both of these teams have very strong in-game leaders, right? Hoxie, uh, Hoxie, sorry, obviously doesn't have the same pedigree uh, at the moment in, in terms of trophy cabinet. Yeah. He won a Katowice and a Cologne last year, so uh, he's definitely in modern Counter-Strike looking pretty damn good if you ask me. For sure. Well, they've taken this time out, and is it another gamble again? Well, it is. Uh, another 4-1 split of the defenses. A deep mid-smoke maybe can be met with some CT aggression. Monacy pushing down silently, however. This will be known, right? That deep smoke, it's always a possibility. His teammates are going to try and assist in halls and boiler. And he's going to catch him off guard. You can see Rain jumping, shocked. And now they're trying to aggress. He needed the transfer. Carrigan could not finish onto Hunter. And now a rifle Bombs in second has mid. been recovered. Yeah, Brokey's trying to contain. There's so many questions. Doesn't want to lose this AW. Doesn't want to lose the round. I mean, this has gone a little awkwardly for the FaZe Clan project. Bomb under enemy rule. The best thing they have going for them is the amount of time. But FaZe, this is very, very difficult to get back into. They're going to give up the bomb. Well, Hunter will throw a flash. That'll keep them looking for the time being, but they are going to evacuate. So looking to play the number advantage right now. You're going to see how much time FaZe burn, clearing all of these corridors over towards second mid. Are they still in window? How far have they pushed? You have to be worried. But as I said, they did have an awful lot as far as the clock went. So the bomb now picked up. This is a big test for Frozen and Brokey. Look at them calling the bluff. 
This is where the enemy just was. Yeah, they partner up, and they have to take some risk in pursuit of the reward. Timing on this is everything. Hunter's just transitioning back over as they peek out. <gasps> Worried about Pit. Spots one, spots two. Info, and he's alive and kicking. Needs a headshot, frozen flustered. Running out of bullets, it's Hunter onto Brokey, all onto Frozen. This would be some clutch. This would be a necessary clutch from Frozen, an impossible task, surely, with Nico and Nexa breathing down your neck. Now, getting the bomb in is one thing. It's up to Nico and Nexa to convert this. Or will Frozen aggress into Nexa? He's bringing it together, piece by piece! Big impact yet again from Frozen. And this is how the round started. It looked like it was crumbling apart. Just an aggressive push down mid. Monacy with the safe rifle finds the first. The pistol's pesky as you like, but Frozen, a one on three. Beautiful work. He's been doing this for some time as Frozen. Sure, baby face, but big time. Now on the big stage, getting it done. Does that throw a spanner in the works of G2's confidence? Ah, look, I'll be honest. You think you should pick that one up, but you know that you're investing into this one. You already have five on the CT side. That's going to motivate the phase ranks as well. Quiet so far has reigned. First to fall in that previous round. Different setup. Early control. Hunter's going to have some choices to make here in a moment's time. Smoke about to land at his doorstep. So the three quarter. What a fight ahead of it was rain before the smoke had plumed, but more damage done to the defense as now they're scrambling, trying to block, coming through. Whoa! Carrigan pulls it off, pushing the smoke, and down goes Nexa. A big headshot, sight lost. Round surely to follow. 11 frags and counting for Frozen. He has not let off the, the gas as a sixth round imminent for FaZe Clan. I remember how this game started, right? We were in a massive hole as far as FaZe is concerned. Trying to retain this one rifle. It was a 4 0 start and kills. They couldn't be counted. That's right. But this is the thing, Alex. Disposition matters more than position, and they were behind, but Frozen was the one to get them started. The banana entries. That's right. Two massive kills to get FaZe on the board, and now the tone has been set. They will take the lead, 6-5. to five. Frozen giving us a show for our first quarter final of Katowice 24. Do they rip this away? Rain's coming looking. Your valuable asset into the next round. Here you go. Poised. And important, very important. You can take a look at the finances here going into the final round of play. Nico will now be able to drop an extra rifle. The rest of them just under that 3K mark, but this is phase. They hit the go. Right, they were forcing pressure towards long. They were blocked towards short, but on that timing, were able to push themselves through. Monacy couldn't get the job done. The phase might be heading into the halftime with a 7-5 to five lead because G2... This will not be an easy round to win. Sure, MP9 is very serviceable on a map like this. But Carrigan, he's hit his stride now. Frozen, forced forward. Nico investigates, claims control. Carrigan playing the fade just as Nico looks away. The nade, though. Could do significant damage. Carrigan finds the head of Nico. They've opened up and they're continuing without the bomb, but pushing the site. Who's he gone? Slight concern about the bomb, but Rob's holding for the potential aggress mid. And they have so many re-smokes available for spawn here. So no real issues at the moment for FaZe. Range joined the party. This info play, it's going to be met by Rob's. Oh, he's hearing all of that. Readies himself. No, he's pressed to the monitor. As he confirms the round and the lead for phase at the half. Carrigan with a beautiful double into the B site. 
I think he started zero and seven. Yeah, he's found his foot, his foot footing, excuse me, five frags in, in this first half. And there we have it, FaZe Clan 7 working their magic to recover the half and leave with the lead. First quarter final of the Intel Extreme Masters Katowice 2024. G2 taking us to Inferno and starting oh so strong, but Carrigan he found a formula. And FaZe coming into the second half with a 7 to 5 lead. Moving into the CT side. Yeah, and considering how things started, FaZe are going to be very happy with those seven rounds to their name. They got blanked. Nexa with some big impact on the pistol. Also on a gun round, so it's great to see him finding that confidence. And now as we head into the second half, G2, I'm sure they'll be content with five rounds to their name. It's their turn on the attack. Questions were raised of Hunter, so far so good. Oh, wow. hello. Well, might just be taking advantage of uh, the recharge feature. Yeah. Well, he might get a chance, Alex. This is interesting. Next is just around the corner. My God. Come on now. There is no way. Robs has been theory crafting already. Yeah. Unbelievable, and it's not gone. As you said, 30 seconds, he'll have another one to go. Hold on to that bad boy. <laughs> Frozen 
Frozen though, he's getting run out, he's getting run out. Wow, composed is Frozen. And blocked. RG2. They're coming through. Giving it a go, smoke of their own. Frozen, what? Full flash, now Kerrigan gets another, the back is turned, and it's all five alive for FaZe. Oh, an electric start to the second half. Oh, I can't believe Robs has already been cooking. That is so cheeky, and we were just talking about Nexus' confidence from his impact with that first half of play. Well, that's like getting knifed. Oh my goodness. Pants here. That's got to be one of the first Zeus kills on a quarterfinal stage in the Spodek. Oh, my that is God. Uh, something special. But this B defense as well. Beautiful. <laughs> and, yeah, all you can do is smile as Carrigan, the showman, happy with that. Oh, wow. That's such a big smile out of rocks. Grins from ear to ear as nine, destined to be uh -oh. face glance. Ah, don't worry about it. They're on a full eco. Oh, it would be nice. Some damage, but uh, yeah. Definitely. I mean, th th this is going to put them in such a good mood. You want your opponent's map pick. You just want the pistol. You feel like you've got nine guaranteed. You should have nine guaranteed. Oh, right? Uh, just a quick <laughs> whack around the ear. I think Rain will think better of that, but Rob's won't. This is oh, Rob's just domain and another dink with a Glock. Careful now. Well, any kills the G2 can get here. Hooksy would be well and truly happy with that. Bomb going down, surely not. Mid, very fortified. You can see the position Rain's holding over towards short. He can always pivot in and help. As he's not really watching apps. It's just kind of caretaking at the moment. So they're worried about a mid pop. No flash, though. Has to be dry. And running into the loving embrace of Brokey. There's one from Nico. Gets the Glock head shot. We'll finish off what Monacy's Glock had started for just the one casualty. You mentioned Monacy. Difficult map to see him coming alive on T-side, AWP, Inferno. Yeah, but I mean, we've seen his rifle. You know, he's definitely no slouch on the rifles. Pull G2 at times, kicking and screaming with his performance on it in the server. And so, yeah, he's got that AK out. These uh, first CT rounds, especially as a bit of a bonus with two MP9s and a Famas getting carried through. This is a very important round to see what Carrigan's been cooking up. Do they have an aggressive maneuver? Do they just want to play things quite static and standard? Deep banana smoke missed. You can see that on the radar. It's over towards T spawn. Let's see if I can highlight that one. Oh, there we go. There it is. That nice. blue smoke all the way back down T stairs. So that one has missed. Well highlighted as well. Thank you, Mr. MC. No. It's Carriga. Wow, you saw that. Just, just deleted. A momentary burst from the MP9, and an opening kill has been found. Rops has a timing. Exa has a headshot. This bonus you discussed seems like G2 are weathering the storm. Check this out. Full rotation, the B-bomb site has been evacuated. Everybody has rotated over to defend A site's honor. The nade? Ah, uh, that was the team nade. Yeah. Maybe telling and actually forces a reposition. Ah, the rain. Awkward. Very uncomfortable now for FaZe. Brokey needs at least two. He's provided and Frozen unable to start that clutch machine whirring into action. Instead, it will be G2 on the board for the T side. Okay, okay. Well, the MP9s took the first two fights. That's part of that bonus round, but it doesn't really feel like a bonus when you take a look at FaZe's finances. It's enough for a couple of rifles, but emissions for Rain and Robs if they were to invest. It looks like they're just going to be chipping in. So nothing too hefty. Pistol upgrades for every single one of the FaZe Clan members, but G2, your chance to just pull this back to a two-round game now has been hard fought. Find the two picks, you collapse onto the side, it gets chaotic. They knew that there were two members there because of the double HEs, right? One landing and actually giving the sound cue away of rain, and then the other that he threw toward that porch side. So they knew they were in for a, fuss, a fight. And so this one, Normally in a round like this, you're having a hope that you find a big kill on one of these deagles early, but they're not really searching over towards B. This is just on the coffin's position. Carrigan ready to block from first oranges. And on a string is Brokey. Smoke pulls him further in. Second smoke landing and yeah, those headshots. Ooh, well, it's damage, significant damage. It might ward them off. And yeah, the fact that they just found rain when looking with the dual Berettas in the boiler. 
don't think the rotation can get here in time. Yeah, no fun for Robs here as Carrigan is investigating, and it's Nico who is trapped. No, he's not. Frozen will finish off that Deagle frag. Robs would have to go mental here. Yeah, with an armored P250. Wouldn't hold your breath. Brokey as well on the side, misses his opportunity, and that's the P250 gone. It's G2 clean and converting. Now, well, with the digits getting punched in, we're going to see the next 40 seconds of Frozen trying to hold on to this new prize possession. Interesting stickers on that AK. Yeah, I was thinking the same. <laughs> well, it is Nico's. Once upon a time. Representing. Oh, interesting. Wow, interesting ones on that. That is a stacked. AK-47 for Monacy. Well, they'd love to carry this through. Lost bonus, of course. In 1900 into the next. It's going to be a bit touch and go, but now that Frozen spotted, will they let the Hound off the leash? He even wants to continue to take a biff, knowing that damage is also name of the game for FaZe, try and chip away at whatever G2 have invested in. Taking his time as Monacy doesn't want to give away. The AK steps out, Frozen loses it all, and Taz happy with that hunt. Now on that one bullet headshot machine could be a bit of a dilemma going into the next. Now phase second gun round. Will they be able to respond immediately? The weapons rejoin the fray. Yeah, you saw that on the replay that uh, rain boiler fight happened off cam. Don't have the fireworks just yet, but the way this one's trending, you never know. Brokey, AWP out. We are back underway, three banana. Flying for control. Nico more than happy not to take that flak damage. Well, Hunter, his cousin works on the boiler space, helped set up there by Hooksy. So they do have some room to work with now, and they are calling out how much util has been used from FaZe. Which is considerable. More from Hooksy this time. Rain will respond with an incendiary. That's the last R. Baroki. And how much pressure does it really feel like G2 have applied? Not a lot. So they're putting their guard up early phase. They're going to have to get it done with the guns because G2 are stacked in the util department. Hooksy's in a very good position to call them into a round finish. They got full mid. Trap behind the smoke is Rain. He needs the first. Hooksy's going to smoke off Banana and there's a flash, or is it going to go deeper? It, it might be a pop. Yeah, they fire off the orb shot, bro. He needs to get back, needs to get back. Nico accelerating, trying to isolate. Look at him, knife out, straight into the side. What's going on, Nico? Can't believe it. Frozen's there, as is Brokey. Hard shot to hit. Cut down by Hunter, very uncomfortable. No kit. A good damage. Hunter brought low. 32 points of health between Hunter and Monacy. Does Carrigan give it a look in? Rops with just an MP9. Oh, that sinking feeling again. We discussed how difficult it could be to retake. And if they'd only known how much damage Rain was able to achieve there as they scurried in towards the site. And you can understand from Nico, and I respect the hell out of it. Right. You see the AWP top banana, you expect it just to be the AWP, and they've hedged their bets with four over towards A. That wasn't the case. He gave up his life, but he took a lot of space. And that is key. Sure, it doesn't come with any kills. It doesn't come with the stats added to the tally, but you get the round. Yeah, and maybe, maybe that play, you know, is, in a nutshell, summarizes Nico's new approach to the game. He's always big enough, Monacy. Oh. And he, he's playing for the team. Just want to make a quick note. Rops was able to upgrade his MP9 into an A4. He was hanging around there, so okay. that MP9 to carry through as a save, not great, but he was able to pick up an A4 with the bomb going off. So that was frozen. Picking up a cheeky frag onto Nico Brokey, only getting one was run down. The rotation, not quick enough. Yeah, big frags from uh, Hunter and Monacy there. I, I love the call from Hooksy. They pivot back, they do all the mid pressure. They know that the ADP, well, actually, they were calling that before they had even noted the ADP and Banana. So that was an all in regardless. So well handled. Yeah, good flash as well. Brokey fires off the shot and Nico just charges. We got a one round game here, folks. This is G2's pick. Three consecutive now. Wow. We, we saw G2 couldn't really do a lot in the first half with saved rifles, or at least invested on one of those Damn. mid loss bonus, right? So they had to invest, but th this is saved. And well, if you phase, 
Do you have a move in store? We know Rops likes to be quite aggressive towards the boiler and halls. They're going to go for a 4 1 of their own. So Carrigan towards B cannot go down in the early stages. Rops. Well, the Spodek and this balcony. Some good memories once made. This G2 just going through the paces again. This time they don't have as much util to force out of phase whatsoever, but you do want to try and identify where these rifles are. He's to move his mic down there, Hunter. May not be hearing you right now. Yeah, Taz, that uh, might be your job, as he's definitely having something to say. Yeah. Now's not the time to be fiddling with your headset, though. Just focused on the task at hand. Loud is... Yep, yeah, there it is. Audible. Rops will be relaying the information. <laughs> there we go. It's all right. I'd see. Oh, they slip into Boiler just as the util arrives, as do the players. Hoopsie's back was turned. A good timing from Rops. One of those two save rifles has drawn first blood. Spots the barrel, controls the spray, takes down the Orber as well. Nexa into the site. Activates. Out of apartments into the pit. Rain. Only three kills for Rain so far. This could be a big, impactful round, and the Norwegian needs it. Yeah, and no armor on him. Oh, Carrigan just stampeding and oh. still beats up Nico. Has he done that? I don't think Nico knows, but either way, Hunter use a, using the AWP off of Modesty's corpse in the low HP. A 2 on 2. No armor for phase. Oh, Brokey doesn't know how close that was. With Hunter's HP where it is. And now it's all on to Nexa. He has some camp. And he's got a clutch in front of him. What can you do? Five seconds as he has to hold it. Has to hold it. Brokey. Closing the gap, it's Nexa's chance, and it's glorious. Triple kill from Nexa. Whoa, that one was labored, and Nexa bails them out again. That's three rounds we can put to his name. The newest addition to the team, he's done the G2 jersey before. He's been here with the final without the crowd. And this is a quarterfinal with it, and he is standing up to be counted because the community, not a massive fan of this addition, the roster change come with some scrutiny, but Nexa, <laughs> impact, and that is gonna feel real good. He's contributing. 9-9, nine, nine, we're all tied up. Yeah, and Monacy's fed up. But these slow pace rounds, charges up Banana and dispatches Carrigan. Looks like Hooksy's talking a loss. So with an early pick, he has a clear game plan for the finish. Rain's having a rough game, Alex. Yeah. Will it continue to go that way? No, with the spray, nearly three. The dink onto Monacy puts him on two. Still pressure on Robs. Yeah, we're trying to reposition, finds a safe haven between the flames. It's actually broke, he's up onto Nico. Looks like FaZe have done enough, unless we get another heroic next around. Brokey says no. His 15th frag, a double in this round. There's a one on three on two HP sound. Sounds impossible to me, Chad, but maybe not to Monacy. He seems to have a very good idea. Sneaking suspicion. How to get the bomb at least. Oh. Whoa, goes for a lightning fast quick scope. Does miss out on that. And Brokey closes with his third. Faze the first to find double digits. Uh, there's Rain. Uh, very important double kill and damage done on that short side. Uh, to be honest, I thought he should have contributed more in the previous. Mm. Yeah, well, there's some redemption for him. And it breaks the streak. That was four straight for G2. But the first to reach the double digits is Faze. And the third tactical timeout now called by G2. That was even with the opening pick found in Banana. And you heard in the interview Hoopsie gave just saying that FaZe is a different beast on the stage, and they're starting to feel that now in the server. Final timeout from Taz. As a reminder, we do have Entz, the hometown heroes coming up next against Falcons. Locking horns for our second quarter final of the day, but Nico 
Can he find success with the banana entry? Molly down to position, nade in his face. Does he want to flash? He wants to fight. Oh, the barrel was spotted, and Nico, he committed to that spray. It's Carrigan that will take him out of the round. He tried to go for a bit of a all-in maneuver. Up, banana. This resulted in already an early casualty. And this could hurt even more for G2. This is for phases 11th, but the finance is only 1,900 as the loss bonus for G2 going into the next. They need to try and make a dent in this round. Keep phase honest. See if you can get the bomb down. Give yourself something to work to the next, or even better, pull off for 4v5 number disadvantage. Yeah, well, one of your rifles now. Hooksy's Tech 9 littering banana as the flash from Monacy trying to regain that space, regain control, and it seems that phase will allow it to happen. They've retained full mid control right now, have phase. So that's great information that, hey, fortify that B bomb site, get ready for this hit. Frozen still has a smoke to block. So when this U2 bombs through the sky, he can get that out. Oh, he's holding on to his smoke, okay. Good decision. He's ready now. With that orb, misses him. Hard swing, wide. Come from Hunter into the site. They still have to find him. Not the weapon for the job. Hunter knows there's someone else. Brokey firing off, shot through the smoke. And Reigns flank, floored by Monacy. 2v2 in the smoke, this is chaos. It's all done on the round. How did FaZe hold on to that? How is Brokey still alive? That is insane. The response time from his teammates to take the pressure off. They were just flooding in through CT and Banana. Then I mean, the Brokey just leaping around. He dropped his smoke. We had the frozen smoke back aside. We were just gray screened. That was chaos in Banana, but this is the opener. This time, Carrigan getting the better of Nico. Rotates in the ah. damage done by Frozen onto Nexa. That's beautiful. But it was just a quick response time to deal with that. And it's so awkward as Nico frustration starting to show. G2 out of money, and they have to go for the force fight. Phaser in control. Full control. The 12th round, ooh! Could have been secured in the opening instead. It's Nico. Disrupts with the Deeg. Takes Frozen. It's become a whole lot more winnable now. That is a massive pick, and you can see what it's forced out of the rotation. Playing 2-2, two -two, and an Amps pop with this type of a bite. Maybe perfect. Rops back up on his perch. Rain. Underneath to support. I believe a sound cue was just made towards Halls. Taking it out. Hunter trying to be cheeky, cheeky with it. This is essentially going to be a 2v5, Alex. Yeah, by no means easy for Roth. He's going to need Rain's help, Rain's support, the util to be tested. Here comes G2. Turns the flash. Roth nails it! And combined with Rain, it's three on the spray. Hunter holds on. Just enough health. Five HP in it. And he gets the bomb down. Nico's going to be overlooked. Or not, Carrigan clears. And a Hunter, 5 HP clutch. Seems like they're asking too much. 18 kills, he's having one of those big games. This would be huge. This would be ridiculous. A single bullet from Brokey. And then right next to each other, there it is. It wasn't the first bullet out of Brokey, but it gets it done. And 12 in the bank on G2's pick. Phase, one round away from taking the first map of this quarterfinal. Again, the finance is going to be the biggest problem for G2 going into round number 22, very likely to be the last round of play. And the fact that Carrigan has the awareness, right? They only knew where Hunter was, but once the bomb goes down, you usually be lining it. So great cognizance there from the in-game leader. And Hunter, he is having impact in this game, but it's not enough to get across the line in a two-on-one situation. They bought the best they can. That plant is going to help. Galil's AK, Mac 10 but face, this is their map to win now. Ancient up next, their choice. Luke he's fed up. He just runs straight into Frozen's M4. Already Nico chipped away, hamstrung at 20 HP. Lane's found an angle around this smoke. Hunt's going to walk straight through it, loses his head. It seems Inferno falling through their fingers. G2's pick. And it's flying the phase flag. Shake of the head, the tut of the tongue. The two heaviest of hitters, both kept relatively quiet on Inferno. This started with a 4-0 lead. 
The pistol for FaZe, the conversions, dealt with the first gun round, but then Frozen happened, and then Frozen happened again. Spoke about the fact he's one of the few members on this stage right now, including the coaches, to have never played a grand final here in this photo. The other season vets at this stage, well, Frozen's been looking comfortable, looking right at home in this FaZe jersey. Honestly, he gets away with that first, but it won't happen again. Nico, the last to fall. And there you have it. Face Clan taking G2's Inferno. Carrigan very happy with that one. And a strong debut in the Spodek for Frozen. 17, top of the board with Brokey. We asked about a well-established coach. You have a brand new coach, a uh, big man, big personality. He was your security guard at the award show. How's Taz going as a coach? Uh, he's very good, very good. Uh, yesterday, he, he was a big part of uh, our wins. Uh, he had a very good uh, motivational, like, not speech, but you know, he, he had a good, uh, good words to spread to us uh, when we were obviously having to win two games. Uh, it's not easy, so he helped us a lot yesterday, but uh, Overall, his game understanding is uh, is very good, but uh, you obviously need time to to adapt to the new meta. He hasn't been competing for a while, so it, it takes time. But uh, as probably Zonic and uh, so, like he's also super hardworking. I have never seen a guy work harder than him. He's watching CS nonstop as well, and uh, he's trying to sometimes do too much, <laughs> in my opinion, as well. <laughs> so uh, that's super nice to see and. Uh, and him and Rasmus are also getting uh, very well together. So uh, I'm uh, looking forward uh, to working with him more. We have a good balance. I'm playing and he's watching. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's a good balance. Yeah. But he's really good. Yeah, I like him as a person as well. That's the most important thing if you have a person who is really like, who's a good person. Like you make fun with him and you can speak with everything with him, what you want. Like it's just a good. Wow, first map done, dusted. Is it like that? Is it really going to be like that for G2 out here in the Spodek? Let me just go ahead and do all of this where I tell you, you're watching the Intel Extreme Masters in 2024 in the city of Katowice in a quarterfinal. Who's showing up and who's not, Mania? Well, I'm going to tell you this. FaZe is here to play. And in spite of a good start from G2, which was one of the win conditions that we have painted here in Spodek, FaZe completely outclassed them, turned things around from 0-4 to 13-9. to It is a clear victory from FaZe Clan. Absolutely, you know, G2 started off hot, Nex and Hunter in that pistol round really delivering, but when it came to the gun rounds, we were we had a big question coming into this game. Was Frozen going oh, to deliver? Yeah. Was he going to sh show up? And boy, did he deliver, especially on that T side from the get-go in, in some of the first gun rounds that FaZe was able to win and stop the streak from G2. It was Frozen finding those entries towards B. So let, let's do this from a technical aspect. Let's start to jump into some of these rounds that we have. Well, Yanko is talking about it. The first time you see Frozen in the feed, the first time you notice him is round five. And he actually unlocks the situation for FaZe. You were talking about a hot start from G2, and then you need someone to find that entry power. We know that G2 play a little bit with Spawn when it comes to Banana, who's going to fight there, but Frozen does it for FaZe Clan, and he absolutely destroys him. That's a double kill. I could mime it for you guys at home. I don't think I would pay the full picture of the round, but here you have it, Frozen being thrown in. Great timing, the top flash as well, Nico is blind. And then after this, he's going to have that little bit of a flicks here onto Kerrigan, onto Hooksy rather, and that's the double kill that unlocks the situation. That's his 
first two kills. He's got 7 ADR prior to this. And also, if you look at the money for FaZe, I mean, this is right off of them losing the first gun round and saving rifles, right? Like, if they end up losing this round, G2 really uh, gets rolling. They have a lot of money. They're up 5-0. So this was crucial for FaZe to gain a foothold yeah. in that first half. Yeah, and, you know, you talk about footholds. For, for FaZe's foothold here, uh, just putting their foot down might have been the great part. Look again, we talk about Frozen. Not only does he unlock the situation, but he stabilized as well. One versus two, round 10. And this was a round as well for context where G2 were very aggressive. We talked about early skirmishes. G2 deep dive into second mid, got a couple of kills. Hunter made life very complicated for FaZe. And then it's Frozen stabilizing at the end. Like the value of these rounds from Frozen. We said he was going to be tested here. I'll say he passed the test. What a way for Frozen to kickstart his big stage career with FaZe right there big stage on the phase career like the whole debut right there so you know if we are we out of rounds there's no way we're out of rounds you guys like around eight was probably another example yeah listen there's plenty of rounds to dive into i'm a generous man myself so i like to <laughs> yeah i just okay. like to give like to talk about counter strike all this way here it's a little bit about faith being able to sustain as well some rough start ish we have frozen finding the kill onto nexa we see monesty trying his very best here and then nico finally in a good position yanko yeah, Nico finds another kill, so now it's a 4v4 situation, right? And G2 just off of the back of a round win themselves. Monesi gets the first kill, and now it's a 4v3. It's only him and Hunter here, but then we see some of the misses from Monesi. He had plenty of opportunities in this round, right? Like tries to find, tries to make something happen, misses another shot, finds a kill with the Deagle. But here the round falls apart a little bit. Still 3v2 three, three for G2. Hooksy hears the player burning inside from the incendiary, wants to push the envelope, doesn't know that again Frozen is the player who got up to Graveyard and broke in Frozen, win that 2v3. There were so many of these sort of close rounds where even G2 has a small advantage, but the phase players managed to claw it back. I really wish we could hear what they were saying in this round because in my eyes, Monesi is very responsible of this situation. Not only because of the misses, and he's got a few of them, and after this round, by the way, he disappears with the AWP. So talk about emotional impact. But as the player being alive in pit, he's supposed to supply information to the rotation. Sure. Let them know what's at risk, what is safe, where am I, be careful. And you can see the rotation coming in, completely lost. Hooksy over his flank. I don't know what was said. But what I know is that this was the beginning of the downfall for Manesi. We, we picked him, I pinned him as a win condition, the only carrier of G2. Brogi just put him in his pocket. Manesi was nowhere to be found in this game compared to the other sniper. Which, which is a scary thing. It, it doesn't bode extraordinarily well for G2. We're going to get into that next map uh, sooner rather than later, but I'm thinking right here we got to highlight uh, our United States Air Force Aim High player of the map, and that's got to be frozen. Let's just run the numbers and tell you exactly that. We're sitting here singing his praises, and for all intents and purposes, he's doing it in the server when it matters. Yeah, the pyrotechnics don't seem to impact him, Trace. Yeah. He's still ice cold in this game. We talked about some of these rounds and the impact he's found, right? the T side wouldn't be the same if it weren't for Frozen's plays. And after that, when we move on to the second one, I think it was as a team that FaZe managed to sort of bounce back. Even Rain, who was struggling, had a round or two towards the very end that was really important. G2 had their opportunity yes. in the second half. A couple of 5v4s towards the end of the half, but they just couldn't convert. And I love that some of the highlights that we see from Frozen here, they, they paint a very accurate picture of where Frozen is at with FaZe right now. T side is where he does his magic. Like he's got such a good way of positioning himself to be in that trading position, to follow the likes of Rain, to follow the likes of Kerrigan, and find a way to be impactful mid-round. This was a great first map for Frozen. And we talked about roles prior to this, right? We're talking about getting the spots that you want on the maps, and Frozen's making good use of that. Yeah, absolutely. See, he's on B now, right? Rain has been delegated yes. to the A bombsec, perhaps a reason for some of the struggles. But I think for me, going into Ancient, right, the big thing is just going to be, is G2 able to mentally reset, right? Because Monesi has had a poor game, a lot of misses. Nico, towards the end of that game, a couple of really frustrating rounds. The one behind broken with the banana, with the AK, then the one with the Deagle towards the very end, where G2 forced like, the two lost 5v4s, right? All of that stuff. It can be really tough to deal with that. And if they're not able to reset, FaZe will just end the game. Just run them over. I, I just wanted to add to these rounds. I agree they are frustrating, but they also paint a picture of this is the Nico with the least amount of confidence I have witnessed in the last five years of Counter-Strike. Period. He is never supposed to let people walk into his crosshair and miss. He's True. done it twice with two different weapons. He fires too quickly. When the hell does Nico fire too quickly when you walk into his crosshair? This is a man that's lost his absolute certainties in the game. You can witness it, you can feel it, and it hurts me. 
I can feel I it the way you're saying it I right now. Just, My you, goodness. Can just, you can just see the doubt, right? Yes. In his okay. game. It's yeah. the doubt because he doesn't know if the game will cheat on him again, right? Like he's not feeling it to the same as well naturally as he did in CSGO. So he's holding some angle or, or making the play that he believes is right, but it's gone south so many times that perhaps he's doubting what's right anymore. Yeah, and you know what? I get that feeling. I understand that feeling probably much more than I probably should. Now, before we jump into our next map of the series, coaches, they got some words, and surely the G2 side's gonna have something to say after that. All right, just talking to uh, Neo here, and I said the gamble paid off. Uh, yeah, Inferno. Um, the gamble, I mean, for G2 didn't pay off, is what I asked him. And he said, no, and it's so, so, so important because he said, I'm not entirely happy with the entirety of the map, but I'm happy that we showed the resilience because it was so important going into Ancient with this win. I also asked, are you feeling it, that they're cheering for you as well as for the players? And he said, yes, and it helps so much. Well, it sounds like you got a good amount of information. Yeah. Taz, um, less so many words for me here, and obviously frustrations are high. I touched on the fact that obviously both Inferno and Ancient, they haven't played here at Katowice. Will that play into it? He says, yes, with our good maps we know what we're doing with it he just felt like it was a bit slow to start and the warmth was not there for the guys but that's not good enough on a stage like this he's gonna have to make sure they're hyped up and ready going into the second map absolutely all right look uh, here's the realities taz coach on one side neo on the other that's already just a blockbuster storyline writing itself if you're taz you're standing over there behind g2 where it really did kind of fall flat a little bit what are you telling your team yanko i feel like there's two ways you can go with this right when your players are struggling a little bit individually either you can try to call more team-based stuff right not the defaults where they have to make decisions and have to have a lot of confidence in their duels or if that's really not the case, if they just feel like, you know, it's, it's been a couple of bad moves, but the players still have confidence, then, it ju then it's just about reinforcing that, mm. right? Going to saying, guys, you got this. Like, we're not going to change anything. We're going to keep going for that. It's going to turn in our favor. You just have to believe in it. And I feel like I lean towards that solution. I liked how G2 entered some of these rounds. They didn't look to me as they were afraid. I think they had the right idea, the right um, proclivities at the beginning of the round. We talk about Hunter being aggressive second mid. This is about just stabilizing, solidifying some of these late situations. Need a couple of those just to get the blood flowing again, and they're not too far away from the truth. And Okay, but let, let's take that same idea and that same thought process here, apply it to a CT-sided start for G2 on the next map. How do you go about stopping face from dictating pace early on? They get aggressive, get in their face, all this, but... Yeah, I think you have to be disruptive, right? Like, it all begins with the pistol rounds, and then what's the economy situation like? But you could see for phase, it's playing steady, slowly taking map control, trying to puzzle the pieces together and figure out what it is that the opponents are doing. So, yeah, definitely be disruptive. Don't sit back. Don't let them have everything on the map. Yeah, map, map control, but like freedom of movement, really. Hey, right? you talk about map control. I think Ancient was on the map where Robs did his absolute best work early on in CS2. In terms of like the amount of space he was allowing himself to take versus what the what resources were devoted to him. And we haven't exactly mentioned his name too, too much. We didn't really need to either. Which, by the way, it would be criminal for us not to mention Brokey after this first map. Have to. Uh, what a showing from him with the AWP. Ancient famously a map where he absolutely shines in late round situations, combat style AWP as well. This is going to get real complicated. In the duel of snipers, he's got the upper hand right now, and that, that needs to be a different story if we want to have a map three. Yeah, no joke. And, you know, Yanko, I hate to do this to you, the pain you like this. The G2 you saw in the first map lead you to believe that we can go to three? No, not really. And I, I think more than anything else, because of the lack of individual performance in key moments, mostly from Nico and Monesi. I mean, hey, right. we had questions about Nexa. He did his job on both sides, yes. right? Hunter showed up in this game too. Hooks, you sure you're gonna look at the kills and say, oh, it hasn't been that great. I don't think that was necessarily the problem in this map for G2. The calling was good, so it has to be Nico and Monesi stepping up if they're going to have a chance to take this into a third map. Thank what you. Said. Yeah, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Uh, and on that note, we go to a break so that we can maybe come to a conclusion in the series, but also maybe go to a third map. Who knows? Let us know what you think. That's hashtag IEM. We go to the break, we come back. It's phase G2. You're watching the Intel Extreme Masters, y'all.
Hello. Didn't see you there. We've got a little game show. Uh, I was going to play with you boys. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's some skins from the game. <laughs> okay. That you guys are going to be guessing the prices okay. of. Okay. The start game. Uh, and you can collect your points. So let's have a go, shall we? Yeah. Time starts now. Oh my god. Oh god. Oh god. We get a slight zoom in on this. What are you? Bl oh yeah. We have yeah. picked yeah. the blindest. Blind. Uh, this guy is for a Krieg of some description. Okay. Wow. That right there. Uh, 45 seconds. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to guess yeah, maybe. Time pressure is really. Maybe insane. like uh, I'll guess like. Ten dollars on this one. Ten dollars. Yeah. Ten flat. Okay. It's quite high. Nice high. This is a stat gonna... track. Yeah, but it's, not, but it's not very good. Is that a carbon I'm gonna, seconds? I'm gonna guess eighty cents. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's not. Yeah, it's not above a dollar. Uh, I think that's the Glock Catacombs up next. That's pretty cheap. I think that's about. He does know his skin. Fifteen cents. I'm not gonna go very high. Twenty seconds. Yeah. Uh, but it's snatch rack, Harry. I don't know if that makes a difference. Oh, it will actually, but I can't. You don't wanna go back. Time. Uh, seconds. This one. This is about fourteen dollars. Is it? Yeah. Um, and then I think that's the Crimson Web. Oh, that's the Crimson Web. Is it? I'm guessing. Yeah. I'm gonna guess. Four seconds. One dollar. One dollar. Oh. Oh, with one second to spare, he's just across the line. Oh, that okay. was stressful. 27% close. 27 oh. points. It was $80. Oh. So, hold on. $80. Yeah. Dude, $1. On the and also, the $10. Yeah, I was just running out of time on <laughs> yeah, this one. I'll be honest. It, it got very stressful down the stretch. You were bang on about the Neon Revolution. I thought that would be way more pricey. Yeah, I felt that was the one I felt the most confident on. Yeah. The fact, I didn't see it was Stat Track. That was on me. Are you ready to play? I am ready. Fantastic. Chad, I'm ready. let's start that timer. Game on. 60 seconds on the clock. All right, for the first one, Mac 10. Don't know what that is. Going to go with a flat $5 straight off the top. Okay. Deagle as well. I'm familiar with this one. It's well worn. Let's go low. Let's go $1.50. Uh, Old. Galil. Ah, oh, I actually own that Galil, I think. He's but I'm lying not, through this. 40 seconds left. I'm Harry. not sure. Well worn. I feel like there's a bit more track. discussion on my one, I'll be honest. Look, I'm letting the clock. I'm letting the clock speak for itself. That Galil is. is That's right. Ah, but it's well worn. Let's go. Back let's go $6. Let's, let's keep it fairly low. Uh, the Orp, it's battle scarred. It is a Asimov after all. Uh, I, uh, I should know this. I'm going to go at, at $40 for the... Oh, no, actually, that's... It's just because oh. Battle Scarred Asimovs can be quite... Um, $40, 13 seconds. seconds. Deagle Print Stream Factory New. Let's go $150. Let's go high and let's he lock that in. this. That's quite <laughs> absolutely butchered. Quite a li 44 nah, man. Eight, five points. He gains the points from He's early on. The Asimov wasn't too far off. Okay, Wait, sure. I over the Print Stream was so high. I overshot on the Print Stream. But I didn't undershoot on the Asimov. That was quite a Listerine phase that Harry went It was. It was the Prince stream one that like really sent me. You couldn't quite believe it. That was my yeah, closest right. one. What are you talking about? The others are like 10p and I'm guessing no, the dollars. the closest one was the Asimov. Yeah, how yeah. can you say oh, sorry, the Prince yeah, stream sorry, is the literally stream, sorry. double? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Look, he, close. Yeah, he can talk smack. Good. He got half my points. Yeah. yeah. So currently, Hugo, if, if it was just the leaderboard of us, yeah. you'd be getting the $100. Damn right. It's time, Katowice, Spodek, get your snacks, get in your seats, because we are getting ourselves situated for map two of this quarterfinal phase already up. And with an opportunity to close it on their map pick, Chad, surely this is the red carpet rolled out for a semi-final in two. Yeah, their map choice, another map that we're yet to see G2 play here in Katowice. Will Carrigan get the better of G2 again in the Spodek? Well, let's find out. Let's. Hunt has arrived. Didn't get the map win, but we know that, uh, well, previous MVP of 23 on this stage, looking to pull G2 into a full three map affair in this quarterfinal phase. Starting on the T side, G2 on the defense, and that black box, ancient, we don't know what to expect. Maybe phase plan two as we get ready to rock and roll into our second map of this quarterfinal. Are you ready, Kanavica? Haven't delivered the fireworks just yet. No overtime. Ancient would be a perfect place to deliver it. I think we can expect a few more punches to be thrown on a map like this. It allows for pace and, well, Monacy needs to start with a bang. Oh, that's tough. Nexus turn. Oh, he gets one. Frozen deletes him back. 
not an immediate rotation. They think it's all fakery. No bomb was spotted. It puts it all onto Hooksy. And Molly landing at his front, front door. Gets away. Puts one into the head of Frozen. Seizing control of Donut. Planting in that smoke. Thank you very much, G2. Strafing through. Nico down to Carrigan. And only Hooksy and Hunter remain. Hunter slipped. Hang on. There's an opportunity. These dual Berettas can unload damage. Oh. Destruction takes another. Frozen and Brokey are so low. Maybe he's got it in him. Time. And no head caught by Brokey. <laughs> Sharp shooting in that one. The A main duel. Modesty going in aggressive. Trying to get that early info. You can understand why you'd want to go for an A main push. Sure. You have so much early info on B. And Nico, camera zoomed straight on him, looking straight down the line, but this is the... Oh, oh. no, and whoa! <laughs> Brokey with an impactful round, Frozen. Quick as you like as well, and for Nico, you never love to have to opt for that, but when the bomb's getting punched in, you try and take the risk with the flash jumping through that smoke. And, and we yeah. saw... <laughs> again... Is this a recurring theme? Carrigan onto Nico. This seems to be an interesting one. Yeah, in that first map of play, Carrigan had 11 kills. Six of them were on Nico, right? So if you're going to have frustrations, your old in-game leader of Once Upon a Time, the in-game leader that you in that phase clan lost hope in. Yeah. Remember where Carrigan got booted to? He ended up on Envy for a while. My God. Right? We're going back in that time machine. So this man on your screen, a bit of a crowd favorite, right? back at the helm of phase, has been causing a bit of a nuisance for Nico, who up until the last day, it felt like his confidence, it was in the bin. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned that he had different colored mice on days one, two, and three. What does that necessarily indicate? What does that mean? Well, look, uh, I played with a bunch of players in the past who would have multiple mice plugged in at once, and they were, you know, they had oh, a no, bad no. death and they would change to a different mouse. Now, look, this is Nico, one of the greatest riflers of all time. Maybe this is what he does all the time. I've never played with him. Maybe we need Yanko to uh, break the ice on this one. But if a player is changing their tools every day, yeah, at a, at a <laughs> tournament. It's not a, a very good sign. Now, look, like I said, maybe that is just something that he does on a frequent basis, but he went through three different mice over the course of the group stage, and the one he's using now is the one he was using on the last day where he played well. Okay. Not a great sign of confidence in someone you need at the tippy top of this G2 roster. Yeah, and the same for Monacy. He has to come alive now as well, right? Uh, that's the driving force of this G2 team. Right. Nexa had his impact, he was doing his job, highlighted by the desk. Hunter was online, but really, it is all about Nico and Monacy. You and I got to have a chat with uh, Magisk and, and Snappy, and that was exactly what Magisk said. He said, look, uh, if you two play well, you can win. Well, flash at the ready, Carrigan might get caught by this. This could be some confidence boost. Oh, confidence boosting frags. I don't get to finish my sentence as a bullet lands in his face, and Hooksy's found a double. He'll be happy with that. Phase perhaps not, but all the same, it seems the round really hinges. Hold up. Next is looking for revenge, Alex, and he's even got the skin. Nah, nah. There's no way. Not this again. He should be set for one. Thank oh! He's got it done! Oh, no! He bought his from the $2 store! <laughs> oh, God, next up! That one. He's like, what? Oh, Rob's obviously doing it better. The developer knows how to use it. <laughs> Where's that gone? I don't know what happened. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, huh? Yeah, everybody astonished by that one. <laughs> bizarre, bizarre. Let's get it started, though. It's gun, it's gun time. Round three. A little bit of a fumble on the bottom. Might delay some of the timings. Looks like they want to apply pressure towards B with the u that's being lined up. So Molly's towards heaven, and it's gotten a whole lot brighter out here. As ramp has been blocked. I think they're going to... Oh, they were... Oh, beautiful. by Hooksy. He is starting ancient strong, Chad. Both Carrigan and Hooksy, leaders that, you know, fragging isn't at the top priority, but they will have a map. They'll have a map or two where they come alive. And right now, Hooksy started strong. Another opening and back-to-back -back rounds. Well, here's a smoke to block over towards Cave. Nothing for Nico, however, and... Oh, he's about to have company. Hunter's rotated in time. Long smoke. Short as well. Flash and go. Great. Trying to be the spearhead of the operation. Shunt down. Spam does not connect. They are up. Sneaker onto Brokey. So they have continued to twist the knife of that opening kill. It's Frozen trying to turn the tide of battle, but Hoopsie holds on. Bomb down, short. But Robson Rain, they are dead men walking as Hunter makes it so. 
Puts one into the head of Robs. Only Rain stands, trying to do something. Only the one. G2, that's a very convincing start to your CT campaign. Yeah, good impact from Hooksy. Two kills to open to give them the number advantage. Then on the way into the side, also finding another. So good job. Well handled, and that was with a buy, which definitely had some emissions as far as the util department went. So this opening kill through the boards from Hooksy, very important. Nico grabbing one through the smoke as well, just well aware of these sight lines. Brokey doesn't even get a chance, and Hunter does the same, straight to the front of the pillar, laser sharp. But the plant, pretty damn helpful if they wanted to go for a buy. If. Yeah, Brokey with an AK. Armor behind it, a deagle for Frozen and Rain. Kagan with a smoke and a flash as they've missed their double mid molly. Hopefully that isn't an it. Ooh, when they've just double smoked elbow. Okay. Yeah. And they're starting 0A. Well, the gap is being filled right now by Monacy. B called clear. There's a rotation as well from Hunter. Monacy just in time, gets that nade down. Position well, that's a lot of damage. Finishes off Frozen, Hunter combines. This is perfect, handling a business. Brokey, that rifle does nothing, and Monacy with five bullets, he'll put one in the head of Rops as well. Nice little confidence builder there for Monacy. Four kills in that round. Responded to that just in time. Nade doing all the damage before he even had to take that fight. So the info comes through. G2 set up a strong defense, and they deal with this, and there it is, that nade again, just shattering FaZe's chances. That was a lighter investment from FaZe. Brokey operating with the Tech-9, the rest with AKs, and Taz happy with that, a bit of a grin on his face. So Carrigan's been given a heaven smoke by his teammates. Oh, that name, oh, it was heard, and what? He spotted him just through the smoke as it was naded away. Nico needs space. Yeah, he's taking it with force. Pushes pre-pop, catches Rain walking out, and now they've lost complete control of the B side of the map. Yeah, good mop job, and you can see Rops isn't even over towards A main just yet, still parked outside. So the thing is, by the time that they start leering in towards the site, G2 will have all the information. They've got full B lane, they're calling mid completely clear, and if any sound cues are made, Monacy is up close and personal, and Hunter can also hear this from Donut. Yeah, you can see, he's very cautious. They are aware that a leak was possible, right? Somebody could have potentially found the timing and pushed in towards Temple. But that isn't the case. Should be sitting pretty for this one, G2. Yeah, should have no problem. Well, can we take a look at Monacy? He's investigating back through red. Yeah, so they are really worried that somebody from FaZe has slipped in towards spawn. In the meantime, they're only just progressing now. Boosting Frozen up. Where do they use the smoke? Looks like CT. Not Donut, that means Hunter will be active. Temple Molly. Frozen, that was his chance. Squandered. Hunter posts his fifth. Bomb down, covered by Rops. A quick headshot, two versus four, now three. Look at the damage, though. Rops into double, double donut, not planted for you there. It's looking for action, looking for headshots, and oh, Nico's lost his. They have a smoke on Nexa. That would make thing diff things difficult with the diffuse kits present. Smoke on Nexa. Not planted ideally for donut, they double up. They don't know. Snappy as all hell. That was a 2v4 situation. Just turned on its head. No information, no map control. Completely stumped. Karrigan got that opener right through the smoke to start the round. That's mad. Bringing the fight through Donut. Hitting that double as well. Two versus four already. Gonna really rock G2's confidence. It can get worse. Face win this, they break the finances of G2. The red smoke, I think it's missed. G2 had all the info in the world in that round, and still it crumbles. Yeah, you can see, it hasn't quite landed, but the way that FaZe are postured, four players outside the B doors, allowing this smoke to subside, but you know you can isolate that one B defender if you're quite poppy. Carriage is going to creep through, so the util isn't set up to be thrown just yet. Nico still has a smoke to block. Yeah, he's jiggling for the shadow. No one's given it to him. Only into Jag. 
procedural map control. As this crunch gets it closer and closer, rotating through his Nexa. Hooksy spots and concedes Cave. The Snade, it lands. Carrigan crawls forward. They're starting to pincer in. Trying to erect a boost, but completely isolated is Nico just to drive by from Carrigan's Tech 9. The site is lost, and don't forget what Chad was saying. If they really want to put all their resources into this, they'll have nothing in the next. Hooksy's already taken a heavy blow. Finished now by Carrigan, they're still there. Nice one back, Nexa survives. This can't be in their best interest, and they think the same. But look at Frozen. Look at Frozen, he's already a step ahead of this. He wasn't needed over towards the site. They might try and rip everything away. This As they be. evacuate, they need to be aware. This could be heartbreaking. Three rifles is workable. But Frozen so far ahead of this, ahead of the play. Rain joining him. When that bomb explodes, there could be some chaos concocted. Honestly, he won't be ready for the close peak. Here he comes. Frozen. Crawls into the line. Down goes the Orpa. Nexus spotted out in the temple, but that's the most expensive gun gone. That is a big hunt, and he will know that the AWP was dropped. There was no way for it to be picked up. The fact that he has decided to go through that donut position, wrap around into CT Sport and clear temple from that angle. Monacy was not ready whatsoever. So FaZe, a very simple execute. I got a little bit worried for a moment because when you look at the real estate they have for the post plant, they had nothing. But Carrigan playing in the fade of the smoke, that kill he gets over towards the long side, that's the difference maker. G2, no, we don't even have that part of the territory. How are we meant to retake? Two rifles, that's all they have. Hunter, run boosted. Yeah, he's gonna have to be the hero. One of those two. Stampeding. Through. Straight through, Rain ready, receives him. And Hoopsie as well, caught in the spray. Nico, next on the naughty list, may have caught a glimpse, caught a whiff of Monacy trying they want to that rifle. People. They're in the smoke, passing each other in the smoke. And now as it fades, Rain gets some... Oh, I was going to say, oh, Monacy just about holds on to his life with 18 points of health remaining. Well, they know where both are. You just put this in towards A right now. Head on over, Frozen. Oh, he's hearing this. Yeah, Nexus just loud about it. Frozen should have him dead to right. See you later, mate. Bullet to the back of the head. Monacy recovering an AK-47, it's something, but G2, I mean, they have got their work cut out for them already. They are setting a high bar here, FaZe, as a fifth already secure. And FaZe, they're definitely not having to rush the issue. We've seen them sit passively outside the doors. No need just to run in and take all that flak damage, and Monacy might be going down frozen. Invigorated on the hunt yet again. Now Monacy's spotted, rocking a hard place. If he heads towards spawn, he will go down to Brokey as well. Has he been able to pip a bit of a timing? Well, even so, Brokey clearing that out quite diligently, as you can see. So they must have a good idea where he's gotten off to. Maybe not. Monacy gets one, but for his troubles, Mops will finish him off. And I feel like that clutch that, uh, well, that 2v4 situation. Yeah. Right? This is the thing. We discussed it previously, but we are now in MR12, and mistakes are amplified. But if you're going to lose a round like that and an important round where the finances really take a heavy hit, it is going to have echoes, and those echoes are being heard by G2 in this current moment. They're going to take their first tactical timeout, Taz. You need some words of inspiration now. This quarterfinal might slip through the fingers quicker than you'd like. Yeah, a lot hinging on this next round from G2. Taz, trying to impart some words of wisdom. FaZe Clan, a tough team to put away on a stage. Neo's got to be happy with how things are currently trending. We're getting the better of his former teammate here today. So listen, mate, you've got some up and downs to go through. I've only been here for six months and it's a wild ride. Wow, that's loud. But I like this. Donut. Yeah, they're no going to take knows. a lot of space. The orb can post up, hold the big box line. Ooh, Nexo, he's aware. A reactionary smoke of his own. And they've done exactly what they'd hoped for. Look at the rotation that it's forced. And there's also a lot of utility that's been limped through from G2 already. They have one smoke left on Monacy with an incendiary, a couple of flashes. So, so nothing for G2 to work with. And we have a minute 20 left on the clock. They've already expended almost all of their util. Deep Donut Smoke is selling this A play even more. It's essentially drawn all eyes off middle. Yeah, Hoopsie, he took a glance. Nothing to report as they do sneak contact out mid. Does he really want to poke his head out cave again? He, he smoked off. Confirmation of presence. Hunter prepares. Brokey 
Holding on towards the clear. That's perfect from Brokey. Close combat warping onto Hooksy. Frozen has. Ooh. Oh, they've lost the sight. Monacy goes down. Nice one back from Nico. Frozen has the bomb on his own. He can't really go. Uh, Brokey needs to support him. As Reigns saying, the B side's feeling pretty quiet, but little does he know. Rounding the corner is Nico. Another one. A double kill to level the odds, but Brokey's still a problem. No next is the A defender. Such a nuisance. Next is going to be finding a little bit of a timing. Takes down the Orpa. Frozen's it's got the bomb, but he holds on. Nullifies the threat. And a one versus two presented to Nico. I feel like he has to go for this. Doesn't have a kit. It's going to be problematic, and he's gone the long way round. Frozen might even get the jump on him. This is an uncomfortable one for Nico, but it does feel compulsory for G2. Frozen does get the jump on Nico. Six already in the bag. Such a dicey scenario, right, with that bomb postured forward in red. Carrigan goes down. Frozen knows he can't go on his own, otherwise he's going to take the bomb right to their door. And this one might be quick as you like. Phase six on the T side. This is beautiful work. Oh, Hooksy knowing he has to search, right? They don't have any info. There's pressure towards red. The map feels very, very small for G2. Because look at how they were toyed with. All the A steps through main, yeah. the smokes as well. It drew the attention of two. B lane was clear, but what does that mean? Nothing as G2, again, will have to just limp in with hardly anything of an investment. Nexa does have support, and the two of them have high fire rate weapons. B lane called clear again. Phase tried a lurk smoke, which didn't really draw too much attention as Hooksy. He's called the gamble. So, boys, we've got the live buy. Let's stack the site. Ways to collect his next. So goes a bit overstepping the mark. Someone had to put him up there. It was Hunter, and Carrigan finds his head. Only the one for Monacy. And Nico firing off shots. Willie nearly needs Shot. Gets himself a double, just playing on the edge of the smoke. He fires off another towards Frozen, Ed narrow do miss. Nate doesn't find him, Nico's getting chances. Just needs one more to connect and Frozen just stands there. Oh, Nico knows he had more in him. That right there, that shot frustration. Shot after shot after shot. Yeah, I'm sure we see that again, but that is real frustration. And that's what's been bottled up from map number one. We spoke about Carrigan getting the better of him in the head-to-heads. And this could have been a confidence builder. This could have been the way Nico builds his way back in. The first two beautiful, but then labored and frozen, just standing and trying to tap away as well. Yeah, that's an ugly fight. Both of them know it, but Nico, that is a real desk slam. Oh man, no timeout either. We're straight back into it. He's, He's in a one on four on a low buy yeah. as well, right? I, look, I get it, but that, that's more telling of how the game's going, not that round specifically. It's Hooksy. Frozen. <laughs> Flash by Brokey, Rain collects a freebie, and now Nico just about survives the fight onto Carrigan. Yeah, that would have really soured the Oh mood. no, yeah, you can't have that back to back, but G2, they need rounds back to back, right here, right now. If they want to stand their ground in this second map of the quarterfinal. Well, this is where Nico last year finally had the breakthrough. The team lifting the trophy and it felt like the curse was lifted breakthrough you know a breakdown he really felt like he'd achieved an all-time career goal to be back here now to defend your title honestly circumvented not with the snade on the smoke rob's cut down early that gives g2 a leg up in this round he goes very low for this fight oh, far from a guarantee here chad smoked off okay pressure applied b side has yeah, to take a risk, sure. There by Rain. Brokey makes the steps, continues to push to Nico, and oh, Brokey hyper aware. They still can't find them. Where did these B defenders go? Oh, tip of the head, and now dead. Nex is cut down. It's only Hunter around. And I'll find one covered. Pinpoint perfect from Rain. It's three kills in this round, and now Monacy's been spotted out already. Phase, they're so diligent. Every move seems to be the right one and rewarded eight to two. Speed running ancient right now. Yeah, Rain had a tougher map on Inferno. Obviously swapping positions with Frozen. He's taken over towards that short side. Frozen getting his choice of spots when joining FaZe. What a luxury. Yeah, and I, I spoke to Rain about it. He said, yeah, like, we gave him a blank sheet of paper, said, where do you want to play? And he's like, I actually don't mind playing. I like moving around a lot, getting to rotate. 
Well, showing some comfort in a lot of different duels from Rain in this one, and it is going very well. Carrigan, he's hyped up. They have G2 under the thumb. Yeah, you heard from Carrigan as well, talking about how this is one of the arenas where he's lifted the most. He wants to do it again. He's making a long and, a, well, a strong statement of intent here in Katowice. Well, Taz looking quite uh, stern right now. Maybe having to have a quick talk to the boys. This isn't done. This isn't over. This is Counter-Strike. We can always battle our way back in. But the way that the mood is looking in the camp, it would be sour. Yeah, they need something. They need, as you just said, you know, you talked about the, the power of these fumbles and the ramifications, the echoes, as you put it. Well, you can have one back. But it could be too little. It already too feels late. too little too late. Look, it has to just be a partial investment with the max loss bonus coming into the next for them to get a buyout. Right? So this is the type of round that you would love to snatch away. It'd be great for the confidence of the team, and you could walk away from the half with four. That's the best you can currently do. Even that puts a grimace on your face, does it not? Such a strong start from FaZe Clan. And I'm sure Rain would love to get another crack at actually being able to lift that trophy, not locked away in his hotel. Yeah, oh gosh, yeah. Rob San Rain back in 2022. Suffering illness, not able to compete in different portions of the tournament. JKS having to stand in for FaZe and JKS a part of G2 when they lifted the trophy last year. If it sounds confusing, it's because it is. But yeah, absent, he wants to be there with his boys. I'm sure Frozen would love to take on Mouse in a semi-final. Yeah, you heard from Exertion as well. He did gave an interview saying he, he's happy for you, but I can't wait to beat you. And Mouse with a very strong showing against Ents to get them straight in towards that semi-final. Completely locked out is Nico, and you can see which way this round is going. Your gamble stacked on the lighter investment. You've completely lost the sight, locked off, volley, smokes, everything obscure in your view. And you may as well give this one a go. Next round, the cash will be available for a final chance at a round for G2. But they're all coming the same direction. Brokey having one hell of a performance so far. His whole squad with him in support. He has missed that one. Brokey doesn't make the same mistake twice, though, as they rack him up piece by piece. Nexa, however, has voiced concerns. It makes it a 1v1, but no kit. No time for this, and Frozen, he saves their hides. Significant damage, but the round is theirs. Nine already. I think that's a key that G2 need to remember with that round. They didn't have a kit. They were out-positioned or out-maneuvered. And the fact that they did a lot of damage, sure, it doesn't really account for anything as far as the economy is concerned, but at least some kills, right? Some confidence in that department, because three feels like a bare minimum at this point. You cannot go into the second half of play. But just the idea of playing two maps on the stage that you haven't played in the tournament thus far. Risky call from G2 in the veto. It seems to be working out for FaZe. Oh, Monacy. They tried to set him up for aggression and Carrigan just swats them away. Hunter will maintain. In his domain, smoke out from Hooksy, forced by the damage. There's a smoke on doors, so B lane is flying the G2 flag as Hooksy spots out one elbow. He wants to go. It looks like he wants to fight with the flash. Back turn from Frozen does evade. He really wanted to keep this AWP fighting for it. He smoked now. So mid held on to. B lane was called clear. And Roki. <laughs> he does not relent taking down Nico. And it sounded like a dink, right? But Broki still with 61 points of health. Through the corner of the wall. This next set will be summoned to help out Hooksy. Another round, another opening kill for FaZe. Smoke and swing. Too comfortable for Rain. As FaZe's 10th seems like a guarantee. Unless Nexa comes alive with a double kill of his own design. A one versus two for Hunter. With the orb? With the orb. Yeah, this ain't going his way. Off. Doesn't quite pop. Fires off the orb, so they know. Now there's looking it's for something weapon, more serviceable. Anything. Yeah, the orb doesn't seem to be the weapon for the task at hand. He has got the kit. He has an idea, a sneaking suspicion that Ram's not shooting. A couple of straight bullets, and the first is found. Hunter and Robs. 
And I can't believe he's held that one down for Hunter. Pros do not fake. On the quarterfinal stage, he's given them a lifeline. Three to work with for survival in this quarterfinal. You know what they say about sequels? It can be hard to beat the original. And right now, Brokey, the original gangster, has put FaZe in the pole position to close their map. And of course, this quarter final. Frustrations running high for G2. Celebrations imminent for FaZe Clan. Yeah, I think if that uh, Nico Deathslam doesn't tell you how things are going, maybe the Hunter Diffuse does. Didn't need to win the clutch by killing them, but still snuck away the round in the one-on-two situation. And it wasn't the weapon for the job. I think he knew that. But let's see. A pistol. Maybe, just maybe, we might have something to discuss because this has been one-way traffic. A disgusting 2v4. Shoots all lined up. Rops. He has support. Frozen. 30 bullets to unload. Oh, doesn't find his first there, Nico. P250 in hand. Trying to adjust. This does take the head off of Frozen. Rops under a lot of pressure here, and he goes wide. Plucks Monacy from the pack. Somehow still alive, now covered by Carrigan as G2 capitulating, slowed down. How is Rops still alive? Hunter's down. It's up to Nico now. Two kills in. Carrigan is next challenge with only one he needs to reload. Both towards main, the rotations are through. 
Isolating Jules, not going to be easy, not going to come easy here. As it's all down, and it's all over, 10 on the board for FaZe. That compulsory pistol slips away. I just think we have to turn to G2 not showing up today. Not seeing the format of this team that we know that they're capable of. Oh. Honestly, must have known Rops is towards the big box position. So that right there jumping out, I guess just trying to create space. It looks desperate. And getting fired up now, Frozen. Oh. Carrigan, the roars. They are just three rounds away from getting that chance against Mouse in the semi-finals. Oh, that's a cheeky forward nade from Rops. Alex, I'm sure Mouse, the organization, would love to get some revenge on Carrigan for pilfering their team time and time again. That's for sure. You came, you played. We picked up some big trophies together, but now you've taken Rops. Yeah, and you... Are you and you've taken Frozen. And you thought that, you know, Glaive versus Astralis was the juiciest storyline we could have had. Well, here we find ourselves in the playoffs, and it could be Maus looking to uh, get some revenge of their own. Waiting in the wings of that semi-final. And FaZe Clan, three... Doesn't sound like much, does it? Three rounds. Uh, and they're taking their time about things here, G2. Stall that again, another deep B door smoke, but this is only gonna last until about that 40 second mark. And we can see, starting to congregate now, Hooksy. Manko made the sentiment on the desk. It wasn't like he was calling a bad game on an Inferno at all. It was the heaviest of hitters, not delivering. Hooksy doing his best. The T-Size just started. This is where he's meant to do his best work. This flash has got Carrigan's name all over. Everyone from FaZe will be here in a heartbeat. And he's down, free flash. Smoke obscures Rain's view, but maybe the element of surprise present for the Norwegian. Brokey spots a lot of bodies, closing the gap, running him down, goes wide, Hootsie. Only the one from the rifle. This is promising now for G2. Nico nailing Rain as well through the smoke. Explosive from G2, and yeah, explosives planted. So we've got to see how FaZe are even going to try and get back into this. I think we just saw a diffuse kit deeper down on the lane. Maybe that's what Frozen's investigating. If somebody oversteps the mark, there it is. Maybe just maybe Rops will be able to pounce. But as that bomb halfway gone, so is the round. So G2 haven't given up just yet. And a great decision. If a team's going to go for the full press, damage is going to be done. Rops can't get anything and Monacy goes down as well. That's one of the issues if you go for the full press mid and B lane is eventually you're going to run out of that U2. And if you linger around, teams are getting better and better at being able to exploit that. That passive smoke broke. You could see he was in two minds. That second look he went for at the top of the ramp was a big issue. And that's a huge kill. Cool. The smoke's just come out of the hands and hooksy has been able to pick that up. If Brokey was able to stay alive, be more passive in that environment, then maybe, just maybe. But that should get you fired up. That is probably one of the best rounds G2 have won so far in this series. Yeah, just a little bit of a return to power. Well, they know that FaZe are likely to force fight. So again, those amplified mistakes. There's one from FaZe. You win this, they have to go down to an eco. And at that point, the scoreline 10 to 6, just a four-round game. Gun rounds come back out, you win that, they're down to another one, 10 to eight. We're back in with a conversation of a winnable map for G2. It's not over till it's over. Don't count your chickens until they hatch. Brokey, weapon out the scout, this full investment as you've highlighted. G2 can't afford a fumble. This must be well executed. You can see Hoops, he's already surveying Donut. Feels like he'll go down on this swing. Yeah, Frozen's off angle is, well, rewarded and Brokey converting, Carrigan. Needs to live, oh, Carrigan. Oh, God, Nico, he took a beating. One more bullet from that P250 and he's a dead man. He still should be able to get to be up the ramp. That's the plan. They molly back sight, so Cave is trapped. Carrigan can only go forward, which is exactly what he's doing and finishes off the job onto Nico. Frustration start to bubble to the surface if they don't close this one here. Monacy, good, steps up to the plate. Brokey clears, misses his shot. Hunter comes alive on that red room lurk. Rob's spotted out as well. Painstaking. Diligent, Hunter getting run out. Rob's brought low and caught by the spray. They know where Rain is as well. And Hunter's not waiting around. He brings the fight to him. They get through it. So this is where you wonder what the communication was like from FaZe there, because we could obviously see how much pressure Carrigan was under, but I don't think he was buying it. 
Uh, I think he thought it was a few less bodies and that they were going to try and finish towards A because the rotation, they didn't even have to rotate because they were worried about red. You could see that from Brokey's position. They had known that they had given up that part of the map, especially with Hooksy being so deep in Donut. So Brokey didn't want to overstep this mark. And uh, you have a question at that point. Well, the A defenders, you have to push your way through. Do you go A main, secure that information? Do you go through Donut? Then you have to deal with the red guy together. But either way, it wasn't quick enough. The decision making for phase there, just not quick enough. And this is the sixth. And well, we've seen this before. Maybe we'll see if it's the position, not the weapon or the user. But if it is on Nick. Yeah, my no, thoughts exactly. No, surely not. Hunter again, just being wow. a nuisance. This is the thing. A player like Hunter, if you can get this red room, it's going to be such oh, a problem to deal with. He's terrifying. Oh, that's, oh, that's disgusting. Brain taps surely not nico two headshots and then you surely can not nico i mean you do clear right side pretty close this could be horrible for g2 nico and to the zeus Brokey down as well they should be able to clean this up despite the stack into the site it's hooksy holding on just a scrap of health bomb open no, so okay. the, what? they've lost track of him and now maybe rocks can do some more damage recovering the round it's a four round game chat oh, oh. Uh, yeah i mean if that had spiraled any further i feel sorry for the desk but fortunately g2 struck strong and this was the double dink out of rain yes yeah, a gorgeous shooting rocks he demonstrates that perhaps it was the user as opposed to the Zeus. So two from two. There is Rops on the new investment of the Zeus. That would be loving that. And he smiles. Okay, what okay. else can you do? Hooksy did clean up the mess there with a delicious little multi, but we're back underway. Monacy, fast as you like. KP with the orb, flashed off the line. His aggressions have not been working out for him so far. That's not going to stop him from trying. Gives it a go. This flick. It's all about the pressure he just applied. The B defense on high alert, on their heels. The bullets do connect into the ankles of Brokey. One smoke left just on Carrigan towards B. So forced through the utility quite quickly, our phase. Red smoke redeployed. That will mean that Robs now has to worry about mid as well as A. See how this is softening up the CT side. Rox feels the pressure, has to worry about Donut. Frozen has to leave red to pick up A. Carrigan has to leave B to pick up red. They're softening the site now, G2, forcing these rotations. It's beautiful. You say that, but Carrigan's actually just going to leave it. He's gambling. And that smoke was nothing more than smoke and mirrors. They know they have to gamble without this U2. Heads up callers. They're going to have to clear red together here. When's the B hit coming? 39. Util forward. Nothing peaking. Onto the Monacy scope, 30 seconds and two doubling up on this close angle. The hard clear. What? Carrigan just pulls the trigger, takes down Nico. Brokey comfortable onto Hunter. Three versus three, 20 seconds. They are into the site. Can't seem to contest the plan. A couple of stray bullets from Frozen. They do not connect. Good spam. A lot of damage. Combined with Frozen, it's shaping up nicely for FaZe. Unless Monacy can get more, he can't. An 11th secured in a team effort from FaZe Clan. That Carrigan frag starting, in, and it's the rest finishing. Frozen's double. Yeah, and for Nico. Of course. He was completely blind, wasn't he, Carrigan? But still gets away with murder. We'll see it again. Blind, holds down mouse one, weathers the storm. But that impact and that rotation was quick. Whatever the premonition for FaZe to give up A and mid in the air. Well, we've already seen it bubble over. Now it's just simmering. Not enough to break the finances of G2. They can dip back into the bank balance and go again. But as mentioned, if they won that round, get themselves up to seven, the finances for FaZe are not there, likely to get eight, and it was just a two-round game. But extending that lead again, our FaZe. I feel like they probably should have closed this quickly with the pistol win. Lane Molly missed. Could be a problem, but no fast cave control. Oh, oh, oh. combined with the flame spread as well, Monacy. Sticking around despite the low HP. Carrigan just looking for info and answers towards the ramp position. He's spotted them out. They're in. Yeah, straight up this side of the guts. Monacy onto Carrigan, clears out long. Some heavy damage dealt. Oh, and Hunter, he fumbles onto Brokey. A quick one on the orb. 
So low. Really uncomfortable. It gets worse. Punching in the code is Nexa. Pressure applied from every angle. Frozen. Brings down Nexa through the wall. And this low HP from Monacy now haunting him. How are you supposed to win this one? Hoopsie trying to isolate the duel. Down goes Monacy. It's only one man and a MAC-10. An impossible round for Hoopsie here. Upgrades the rifle. It's not planted for him. He can't even knock him off. Rob secures it in phase. Edge ever closer to closing. And knocking out the reigning champs of IEM Katowice in the quarterfinals in two maps. Inferno and Ancient is where we do battle. Maps they haven't played. It's been till this point in the tournament, chart, it seems like a risk. Hey, look, uh, obviously matchup specific is something that plays in. We have seen a lack of Inferno, and they had Blast just before coming over to Poland. But in recent days, reps do not exist in the official realms as the third and final tactical timeout for G2 has been called, but is it too little too late? Well, it definitely feels that way. Six rounds the difference. The champ v champ quarterfinal matchup, and it looks like it's going in the favor of FaZe Clan. A menagerie of a purchase here. Some Galils, MAC-10, Deagle, the Utils there. We've already seen them win a lighter by round, and that started the conversation in this second half. It was only a three-round spread. And now FaZe with Frozen. They're viewing on this stage. Looking like they're going to take one step closer. Certainly looks that way, Hooksy. Despite oh. so much at stake, and Nico's just charging. Froki was caught off guard, but down goes Nico. Hunter was right behind him. There's a gap, but they're not going to be ready for Rob. Rob's hiding behind the box. It's all done. It's only these two. Next to Ramonesy up against the world for survival. Somehow, miraculously, the first two of this two versus five have taken shape. Honestly, got the orb. That's something as well. Maybe. But Rain, this is a fast call. Next to spots him out. Oh. What a shot from Rain. And Monacy does not have the health as G2 counting on this boy to do it all. And the second and final map of this quarterfinal phase clan, they just need to bring him down. The first onto Frozen is found. Bomb loose on the site. Monacy piecing together the potential puzzle. Nose rain was main. Was. Was being the operative word. Carrigan lingers CT as rain looks to join, facilitate a trade. Investigates Dono, actually, maybe he's got a premonition about this as well. 40 seconds, and now the activate, what a shot! Carrigan had the jump on him, he did the damage, only 3 HP. Still worried about main. Now, I'm honestly not going to be ready for this, and there we have it! FaZe, best G2 convincingly in the quarterfinals. Cut down. Absolutely obliterated here on map number two, Inferno. That got real close in the opening stages, but Frozen came alive. Round number five, two kills, top banana. And at that point, FaZe started playing the type of Counter-Strike that they know they can. It was a great start from G2 on their map choice. Frozen also had a big clutch in that first map of play and looking right at home here in the FaZe jersey in the Spodek. People questioned how long does FaZe's hot start continue? New game, same FaZe. Incredible individuals, Frozen joining their ranks and loving every minute of it, stepping into the Spodek victorious. And quite the contrary for G2, eliminated here on the opening day of the playoffs of the Intel Extreme Masters. Katowice 2024. And one of Spodek's favorites standing by with OJ for the tip of the stage. Thank you so much, Alex. I'm here with Carrigan, and I think something Alex said is interesting. New game, same phase. You guys are looking good. Yeah, I mean, uh, just enjoying. I remember one year ago, I was really upset and disappointed that I didn't get to play in front of all these guys, and I'm super happy that we're back and we're playing some great CS today. And you've taken out the reigning champions. That's always sweet. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> it's Katowice. We always face G2 at some point in the tournament. So uh, yeah, super proud of the boys, and uh, what an atmosphere and what a game they're warming up for later today. It is going to be a great game later on. Looking forward to tomorrow, you're going to be taking on Mouse. One thing you say a lot, you guys come alive on the big stage in front of a crowd like this. What is it that makes you play better in front of a crowd? If I knew, uh, I think we'd be the most dominant team in the world. So uh, um, we don't know exactly what it is, but uh, just the atmosphere, uh, the motivation, the fire, the energy. And uh, yeah, um, I just think Everybody enjoys this moment. That's why you practice 24-7 uh, in your life and sitting here and, and playing in front of this beautiful arena and beautiful crowd. 
And that is why we love watching you. And you say the fire, the passion, the energy. How much longer can you do this? I don't know. Uh, hopefully, I'll come again uh, back next year. Who knows? Like, uh, I just love playing with these guys. And uh, I believe we still have it in us to win tournaments. So um, who knows? Well, we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Congratulations. A fine win. Put your hands together for your champions today through to the semifinals. It's FaZe! Yeah, after the multitude of questions we had about FaZe, you have to look at it and you have to wonder if they have just been awakened from a big slumber. That's right, we do have a semi-finalist in FaZe. Tomorrow, they're going to stack up against Mal's, but for the time being, we're going to put some loose ends to rest here as we say goodbye to G2, gentlemen. Yeah, no doubt the better team won, right? A 2-0 from FaZe. Uh, despite that, you know, poor start on Inferno, maybe towards the very beginning on, a on Ancient. It yeah. closed for a little bit, but ever since that clutch from Brokey, that spray transfer, I think from that point on, it was FaZe all day. Yeah, we could feel it. I think something broke in the stadium, in fact, yeah. after that spray control. And also, you got to give it up to FaZe. Not only do you have individuals stepping up, but Kerrigan calling in accordance with the psychological sort of atmosphere of the game, like knowing when can I give my team a little bit of leeway? When can I take risk? When can we be ambitious with the calls, taking mid control, taking window control? He knows how to push the advantage. This is championship winning level from FaZe. Like this is how it looks like when they go on and win the whole damn thing, right? Like it's good calls from Kerrigan. The team is playing well as a unit, but it is also their stars, their individuals mm. stepping up when it matters the most, right? Like it was frozen for the most of map one. He had a good map two as well, but it was Brokey who yeah. really delivered a couple of key rounds. Definitely. And, and in the pre-show, you had this little package you put together talking about like time to kill, how you would walk in a crosshair and die. I just saw that from FaZe. Absolutely. Literally, any time there were situations a little bit 50-50, um, post-plan situations where maybe G2 had a, had a way into a retake, you would just be on a camera of a FaZe player who would watch, like swing and one bullet. Wait an angle, one bullet. Immediately. G2 was a bit more labored. You could definitely see some frustration signs here and there, just fiercer and more apt and precise on the side of FaZe. Yeah, that, that time to target really does hit home right now. Bro, it was like... Yeah, it was, it's obvious. It becomes much more apparent now that we, you know, we sit there and witness it in real time. Uh, you know, obviously for G2, this end of the run, uh, here at least, there is not going to be any returning champion sort of mantra that we're going to go for with them. Any, any saving graces we can pull out of this for G2? Nope. The fact that they made the playoffs and that it seemed like Nexa was doing his job, right? Like he was playing well in some of these key moments. The fact that Hunter seemed a little bit like him, like his old self in the playoffs. But I mean, that's not going to be enough when you have both Nico and, and Monesi faltering, right? Mm -hmm. Like I, I think they have to figure out, the, I think more than anything else for Nico is just mentally trying to block it all out in a way, right? Like, okay, you're not unhappy with the game and you're not really feeling it at the same extent, but no point in overthinking it. I mean, that desk slam and, and all those misses from the, like, you can't tell me that's because, like, the game changed. No, no. Right? That's, I think, him letting everything, like, that's happening sort of get to him a little bit more, losing his patience, starting to doubt himself a little bit, right? Letting the frustration get to him and then get a result like that. You have Monesi sitting next to you, right, who's still a young player, hasn't played, you know, a hundred big events playoff games, you know, that's not going to help him to perform at his best no, either. definitely. I mean, we're not going to use that as an excuse for Manesi. I still, I'm left wanting a little bit from this series, but just to bounce on your Nico point as well, you have to remember, prior to CS2 coming out, we are talking about the lore of Nico, who's gaining in maturity and learning how to play these big events moment and have, having that performance, that star performance at the very top. And he kind of reaches it in 2023 and we applaud him and then now this happens. So it's kind of a contrast, a roller coaster that he has to handle better than he did here. There is no way around it. It's not about finding excuses. This G2 is not going to work out with Nico in that state. The question is when and how does he figure it out? Yeah, and well, figuring it out at this point would be phase, would be frozen. We put the G2 conversation sort of to the side for now. Obviously, they're out of here frozen. Hello, hello, hello. How's it going, friend? We just won. Yeah, no joke. Congratulations. Uh, congratulations, yeah. You so so you go into the semis, man. Tell me what it's like to play in front of this crowd. They Amazing. love you. I mean, last time I was here, I was as a fan sitting in one of these rows. Yeah. It is incredible, honestly. I, uh, it's a dream come through to stand on the stage and uh, play the counter strike. And uh, yeah, it's amazing to play this product. Yeah.
we were talking about before the game started, right, you know, such a massive matchup, G2 versus FaZe, two teams that always deliver so much skill on the server too. And you even said yourself recently in an interview, you know, it's up to you to perform in these games and in this, in this team. And you absolutely did. So how did it feel for you coming into this matchup and, and just playing the game? Yeah, I mean, uh, we knew it's going to be a battle of good individual skills, so we just have to come come prepared. Um, they caught, maybe they caught us a little off guard on, or in Inferno. It was like 4-0, 5-0 start for them. And then I said, like, we need to go a little bit more in their face. I think I got like a, two, a 2K bana on banana. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, you know, from that moment, I just knew, like, that's the way. We just need to keep pushing, play with the balls on the table, you know. Right. There it is. Yep. And uh, Again. Yeah, Again. I mean, uh, I don't think it really came down to, like, crazy clutches. I think... Uh, we actually played pretty smooth. There was some force by classic for, uh, face in this tournament that we lost, but uh, yeah, I'm just glad that we closed it out. We obviously, that's our role here at the desk to talk about drama and stories. And we oh, yeah. talked about you and the expectations on your shoulders moving in now in the face jersey on the stage here. What was your mindset going into this game just internally? I had no doubt that I'm, I'm coming here for a win. Hell yeah. There okay. we go. Yeah, you know, we had a whole conversation about roles, this, that, or the other, but that's kind of boring right now, isn't it? So perhaps we jump into some of the rounds, Jinko. Yeah, I think uh, what we have here is a round from Ancient right early on in the first half, which it looked like it might be a good round for G2. This is like early Carrigan plays, right, going for that cave fight. He's going to catch Hooksy here off guard. And I think something that you guys did really well was these, once trades happen, sort of, mid-round, late-round situations, 3v4s, 4v3s, all that sort of a stuff. And that's exactly what we're going to see here. So now you guys are in a 3v4, moving all the way to show it for Aaron back home. So all the players are here. G2 is a little bit split. They cleared mid beforehand, so that's why Hunter now can be focused. They even know FaZe could be out A. That's why Monesi is just watching for CT spawn. So they're a bit afraid here. And what was it for you guys? It was just like, let's go and execute A, see what happens. I think it was more like that. I mean, we basically had almost nothing to work with. It really felt like they had B, right? They had the mid control. Yeah, I mean, Robin was just rotating towards A, and I mean, the only thing we could actually do is go out A here, and I mean, Brocky, it's I mean, insane shots here. Like, this was unbelievable. Actually. Yeah, you talk about insane shots. That's a question that I had. From us, from an external position, it was very clear that in the duel, you guys had you had the advantage. Like, from, from this moment on, you had all of the advantage. Was it something that you guys felt as well in the server, that you were ahead in the duels, or is it just something that we kind of fabulate about just watching the game? I think maybe on Ancient, because, I mean, as well, there was a lot of rounds where we got a lot of early kills, but I wasn't really involved, I feel like. You know, I was outside mid with Robin, and all the kills were happening on B. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, Rain and uh, Brocky, they just ran over him uh, on the B side. Yeah, it, it creates a, a bit of a mess right there. There we go. Hey, uh, you guys like Frozen, right? <laughs> Big fans, Frozen. You want to talk to him? You tell him anything? I'm just happy to be here and uh, hope to put, uh, not hope. I'm looking forward to play here tomorrow, the day after, and uh, coming back every year. Love you guys. Yeah, they there you go. They absolutely love you too. Hey, man. Uh, yeah, we'll get you out of here. I think uh, really and truly, that's about that. Well, maybe just one more. Just real quick before yeah, we let him go. Ahead. You know what you got? Game tomorrow. Oh, mouse. Yeah. Mm. Give us some thoughts. Ruh -ruh. I mean, I said. Um, I think I expect a good game. Um, I want to see what they can bring. They obviously saw what we can bring uh, since they probably were watching the game by now, right? Um, yeah, I expect a good match, but uh, yeah, they should be ready. All right. Cool. There you have it. We all cool with that? Yeah. Frozen, why don't you try that one more time? Tell them, hey. I can talk to them. Hello, they guys? can hear you, can you now. Hear me now. Oh, nice. I love you guys. It's, uh, it's amazing to play in this arena. It's my first time on the stage. And uh, I was watching only from home so far uh, ever since. But now, yeah, I fell in love with this arena. Cool. And we're going to be seeing more of FaZe tomorrow. That's right. They've got their stacks in a row to go to a semi-final. Hey, thank you very much, Frozen. And in the meantime, the in-between time, we're going to look at something called the DHL MVP. That's right, it's time to vote for our DHL MVP using those Twitch channel points that you have been saving up idly there at your home or wherever you're watching from. Perhaps you're sneaking in at work and you're like kind of watching it on your phone, but also not supposed to be. We're not going to tell your boss, but as long as you participate in the DHL MVP vote, again, we'll be using those Twitch channel points, kind of bringing it all together at the very conclusion of the grand final, catching up with the winner therein.
plenty of plenty of stats here you can go off of, but uh, for you guys, who's your MVP? Well, I'm going to go ahead on a limb and say probably someone from FaZe currently. Mm. Yeah, that that fair. seems like okay. a fair risk to take. I don't feel like we've given Brokey too much time, but he did have an absolute blinder of a series once again on Ancient. Rain came alive on the second map. It was referenced by Frozen in the interview here. It's time to kill Superlow. 20 kills as well. Plenty of trust. Uh, the question is, are we going to see someone from G2 up there? Oh, there, there we go. There we go. Ask and you shall see. Who, <laughs> by the way, got robbed on that Zeus. Yeah, that is true. Nation. It's like, how does it work for Ops? Does it work for Exa? I mean, that was point blank, you know, but uh, sometimes it'd be like that. It's not fair. Monacy making the list as well. Monashi. Monashi. Yeah, it looked like maybe he could start, he could get it going on Ancient, right? But I think FaZe was just too good today. Uh, as a team, they, they were one step ahead of G2 for the most time. Yeah, and again, that's you using your Twitch channel points at home to uh, put in your vote for who is going to be the DHL MVP. We catch up with them at the very conclusion of the tournament itself. Uh, Yanko, what else have you got cooked up in the lab for us? Yeah, we don't have Frozen anymore, but I think I want to illustrate just how good was FaZe on this map and how far ahead they were of G2 in this game, right? Like, after those couple of early initial rounds, they just Played, played G2 like a fiddle, you know, and I think Kerrigan did a great job of abusing some of the rotations, right, of knowing that G2 is going to be frustrated and just being really smart about how he was going to exploit that, right? Like when you're playing from behind, you're going to be more prone to over-rotating, moving on the map, just reacting, trying to make plays. So if we just get into it, I can show you guys what it is exactly that they were doing to make that happen. There we go. The, the start of the round, what FaZe does is they throw some early A utility, right? And you can see the, as a result of that, the two guys who were at mid, they feel pressure, right? So they go back towards A. This is a, a cool little way to sort of get, not necessarily get mid control, but get the CTs to step away from it, right? So once they achieve that, you can see some of the utility coming in for the T's to go back to mid. So there's this deep donut smoke. This is Rain just putting some pressure on Cave, and that's going to enable three guys to walk out mid with Brokey on the AWP holding that deep angle right towards Cave, which is something that could be open. So G2 is trying to figure out what's going on. You can see two players that are down towards Banana trying to retake control. And here it is now, as they're moving forward, as they're gaining more map control, right, going towards red. Rain is holding for this aggression. Brokey was waiting, and you have, of course, Brops lurking towards A. Just see how the kills come to phase. Brokey just kills Hooksy trying to walk clear mid. Rain gets a free kill on Monacy trying to do the same on B. Another one from Brokey, and it's just so clean for the phase players yeah. because they completely outmaneuver G2. And G2 trying to individually make plays instead of doing something together as a team. Those are clear signs of sort of a team falling apart during a game and being frustrated. Yeah, and it is extremely frustrating if you're G2 because the start of the round is not that bad, right? You gain B lane control. Granted, you have Rain who's behind the doors. That, that's okay. It's just the reaction once you have that first death, that, that screams a little bit of frustration. When, when you just give away another duel and another duel and then you just walk into people who already have map control waiting for you, that's, that's a checkmate. And a word we used a lot for G2 in this series is frustration, right? I was surprised they didn't take timeouts in the first half. After that, Brokey round, right? I mean, they went straight into a buy round after that. Just take a timeout. It's a bad round to lose. I mean, you were in a 4v2 there real quick, then Hunter repeats Donut. You know, let everything calm down. Tell the players mm. it's fine. Don't just get into a game. Then after the Nico desk slam again with the Deagle, no timeout. I mean, you know, there's not 100 rounds to play. The half ended really bad for them, and there just wasn't enough rounds to work with in the second half. Well, let's, let's do this. Uh, it's only fair that we hear from the G2 side in an exit interview. I'm told it's Nico, so let's hear what he's got to say. G2 fought hard all event long, but here in the quarters, things certainly didn't go to plan. I want to just touch on the Inferno coming in there. We hadn't seen you play it so far this event. We only saw you play it a couple of times when it came to Blast. Do you feel like you were lacking some reps on this? Uh, yeah, for sure. Our Inferno is definitely not where it used to be and uh, not where we would like it to be. But uh, it was very hard, Vito, coming in versus them. Uh, like, they had a very strong maps uh, that we are very, very strong at. So it was very hard to choose uh, what to pick. But uh, yeah, I mean, definitely, I don't think we lost because uh, of the, the map pick. We just, they, they were better. Like, they were clearly better. and. Uh, yeah, they out tamed us, they were just better prepared, and uh, props to them. Were you expecting the Ancient pick as well? 
Uh, yeah, we were expecting between ancient and overpass. That was our uh, read, uh, mostly uh, ancient. So, uh, yeah, we didn't get surprised by their ancient. It's just, again, we let them too much space. They were dictating this, the, the tempo. So, uh, yeah. And we can see again, right, and this is the type of player you are. You're so good, but the frustration as well, when you want to do well, you want to feel it. How much did you want to perform better here? Yeah, honestly, I'm very disappointed in my performance. I was feeling much better than uh, that I showed, and uh, I missed some key frags in Inferno, where Kerrigan was running, and I didn't kill him. And uh, yeah, ancient, it was hard to get into the game. I think overall, uh, they were just much better. But uh, yeah, definitely not the level that I want to show, and definitely not the level that I was uh, I was feeling much better in general, so uh, it sucks that I couldn't uh, show it, but uh, got to focus on the next one. And in terms of the next ones, we've got the RMR going into the major, coming up very key for you guys. What's the plans for G2 to be your best and be ready for that? Uh, yeah, we don't have much time. We travel directly from Katowice to the, to, to the RMR. Uh, now we have two days to fix what we can. And uh, yeah, I think... Uh, we are definitely uh, better than what we have showed against FaZe, but uh, still we need to we need to play more. We need to get used again to the, this new patch and uh, the teams at RMR is going to come very hungry. So, uh, yeah, we need, to, we need to do better. Full focus moving forward. As you can tell, the frustration is still there a little bit, and, and, you know, that's going to happen when you take an L like this. Yeah, absolutely. It sucks to lose. And I think with, within this G2 phase rivalry, sort of, there's an in interesting, you know, bit where G2 gets the better of phase usually in groups, you know, like they beat them to get to the playoffs or to book a spot in the semifinal. When it comes to the games on the stage, that's where phase has a big advantage. So, you know, something that for G2, they're going to have to figure out moving forward. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, for them, the problem is not going to be the stage moving forward, is the qualification to the major. Right? We're talking about RMR. And then Nico says we have to fix our mistakes. I don't think there's any fixing to be done in the next 48 hours. And that's really rough because this game that we just witnessed was about being mentally broken after round five of map number two. That's what we witnessed. And then the fabric just kind of comes un undone, and then the rounds just fall apart. And that's not really something that you just fix. You just have to make sure that even through hardship, you stay true to whatever principles and protocols work for you, and you kind of work your way on, a, on the treadmill back to some confidence. And, and that goes through just going through the rounds normally, not dropping some of these rounds, and gathering confidence over and over again so that you know you can do what you can do. Here, that wasn't the case. I don't think it's about fixing mistakes. Sure, getting adjusted to the patch, yes, playtime will help, but that's not what we're talking about here. The key is playing with confidence, right, and, and being proactive, being aggressive if you're G2. Nico was talking about giving too much space to phase. They can't let that happen at the RMR. You know, the teams, some of the teams that are there, they have nothing to lose. Oh, There's yeah. no pressure, right, and you can get caught by that. And G2 did in the past, in prior RMRs, you know, for the Rio Major, for example. So, yeah, just need to have a proper approach because it's a completely different tournament to what we had here in Katowice. And the harsh realities are this. Yanko's G2 and your Vitality are on their way to the airport. And that is... Oh, they already... They already oh, yeah, home. they're actually they're already home. home. Like Half of that equation's already gone. <laughs> but perhaps we explain through the brackets why that makes sense or doesn't make sense, depending how you want to look at it. This is what the playoffs do look like. FaZe and Mal stacked up tomorrow. Oh, boy. Boy. By the way, I don't know what you're talking about, Trace. I was never a part of G2. Well, uh, yeah, no, he was compared to FaZe. But see, yeah. see how he gives up on his team okay. in the losses? That, that's how you know. I see what you've done there. Check out these brackets, though. Yeah, if, if you're talking about ceiling for miles and learning from your mistakes and getting better and better on that stage, who else but FaZe Clan to go up against? Like, this is your foe. This is your, your goddamn monster in the closet that's waiting to eat you at night. That's who FaZe is to Mouse, and they're going to have to beat their own fears. They want to make it to the grand final. Yeah, the question is, is Mouse ready to take that next step, right? They're a good team, no doubt about that, good players, but they're, they're yet to win a game like this. You know, on the big stage against a more experienced team, against one of the big names, and I guess we'll get an answer for that tomorrow. And Frozen in here as well. Well, I mean, let's also kind of expand a little bit and say Jim Fat just said, you know, hey, I want to play on the stage because my brother did the same thing. I, seems like a pretty good reason to want to play on the stage here. Nonetheless, guys, thank you very much. We do need to go to a break. We can't come back with it's going to be another quarter final. We're looking at Ents taking on the Falcons. And, uh, Polish yeah. team back in the spot. It, it seems like the after place eight to be. years. It seems like the place to be. You see him getting out of the van, but the truth is, being inside this arena is exactly where Counter Strike is going on. We're gonna go to a break. We're gonna come back. We're gonna get right back in the action. You're watching the Intel Extreme Masters.
smokes. That's it, double smokes in the same place there. Simple just jumping casually into the side. Wait, 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 wait. What, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. That's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. I'm good. Yeah. I mean, we're playing in Spodrick, so of course I'm good. Yeah, again? Yes. I mean, last year was not that good, though. We lost third map against Liquid. Mm -hmm. I still remember this game every single round. That's horrible. <laughs> yeah, so really happy that you can make it up. But um, I was talking to some Pius. He said, well, actually, we didn't really expect to go to playoffs. Is that the same for you? I mean, I think it's natural to try and understand the, like, the stages of the team. And I think, I mean, let's be honest, we are a new team. So I think it's quite difficult to expect to just go to the arena uh, because there is a lot of good teams and, you know, a lot of upcoming teams as well. So I think it's, you know, you always have to fight for every centimeter. And right now we are not in a position to actually just go out and say, hey, we are favorites to win the tournaments and stuff like that. So I think we, we, we just wanted to be realistic in the sense that we are not 100% as a team yet. but. We also know what we're capable of if we're playing our best CS um, as individuals and as a team. Yeah. Why do you think it is that there's so many uh, of the top 10 teams that failed quite horribly and that there are so many unexpected teams in the playoffs? I mean, first of all, I think you can see the difference between teams and the amount of hours people are putting in. Um, I'll be honest, I think a lot of the teams that is upcoming right now is also the teams who is playing the most yeah. and grinding and you know, not having time off and not really spending holidays and stuff like that, which is a good thing if you want to be an upcoming team. But of course, teams like Vitality, they're obviously also prioritizing more uh, days off to make sure they can actually, you know, be professionals for a long time. And now I also know a little bit of how they work. I also know that the priority is going to be to be 100% at the Amar and at the Major. So I think that is also the natural process of upcoming teams that they prioritize everything, uh, like everything. And teams like in the top five, they will maybe try and put a bit more focus on what is important for, you know, our careers and what, mm. where do we want to peak as individuals, but also as a team. You're such a great person to interview. So <laughs> insightful. But maybe we, we take, a, take it a bit lighter now. Snappy's over there doing some media stuff and photos. Who in your team is like the best at doing the poses and stuff and, and, and the photos and, and the looks? It has to be a guy from Spain, no? Uh, yeah. He has a good tan. He looks good. I mean, I mean, he has to be the best, you know? So I think uh, he also has a, a lot of confidence. So, so, you know, he's not afraid of uh, going into... Uh, good poses. Yeah, good jawline as well as necessary. Exactly. Yeah. You've got the good beard though. I mean, a little bit, um, but it takes a long time to grow it, so oh, yeah. it's not coming for this tournament. For me so. as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> um, so, have you been able to uh, take a look at the update? I don't think you had time to play yet. Um, so, what do you think? I mean, from what I could read at least, it seems good. Um, I think that was one of the main issues, especially for the AVP players, but also the Rifles, was that you have to had to move like 24-7. Um, and of course, it's like the same for everyone, but some people are better at moving all the time. And I'm one of the persons who was not always the best at moving mm -hmm. all the time. So I think it's going to be a good update for me, but also for the team in general, because we have a good all player. And now they all probably also be a a little bit better because the Rifles will have a little bit more hard time actually just peeking into the VPs. Um, so this might be the nerf to dunk that we needed. Yes, that's. <laughs> I think that's what everyone, they think that everyone is hoping. I mean, we don't know what's going to be the case uh, for these playoffs. Um, for you as a player, um, would you like it to be implemented before the playoffs or do you think that doesn't make any sense because you've been playing the whole tournament on the other one? I think it's very important it actually gets implemented. Okay. And that is also because we have the Group A and the Amar coming up right after this tournament. Yeah. And we will have to go from this playoff directly into the Amar. And if we want to make it fair for everyone, I think it's important that we actually change it as fast as possible to give us time to kind of adapt into it. But I also think it's not that big of a change in the sense that mm. it's like unplayable for other teams. Um, so I think it's very needed that we change it uh, into this playoffs and just yeah get, get started on it. We'll see. Everyone just wants to nerf Donk anyway. <laughs> yeah. Of course. I mean, he's uh, having probably the best uh, tournament rating ever. Yeah. Um, so if he continues like that, you know, everyone is obviously going to be a little bit scared uh, in the sense that, you know, he is very good. Let's be honest. And if we want to play against him, um, a little nerf to Donk wouldn't mind. Like, yeah. it would be perfect, no? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I kind of want to see him absolutely pop off in the spot deck, but we'll see. Um, did I have another question? Yes. Did I? Do you have a question for me? 
No. I thought you, I thought you asked if you could have an alcohol. No, I just I, I I'm blanking. I, I'm out of questions. I think. Oh well, I guess this is the end of the interview then. It is. <laughs> yeah. Snappy. Hello, hello. Snappers. No, that that doesn't work, does it? I mean, you pick. <laughs> okay, snappy is fine. Uh, so, how are you doing? I just saw you doing the photos. Do you like doing that kind of stuff? No, I think that's one of the most uh, boring parts of uh, the job, but okay. uh, it has to be done, right? So, yeah. yeah. It does have to be done, and the photos always look good, so that's nice in the video. So, um, crazy scenes here with Falcons in uh, Katowice, USDIGL. I mean, it, it was so weird how you went from pretty bad performance and then kind of hit such a high peak. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just uh, the process kind of like every game. is. We, I feel like we're growing, uh, we're finding a lot of uh, things we can improve on. So I think for now it's just that we use every game as like a training camp mm -hmm. and um, it brought us to the playoffs, so I'm obviously satisfied. Yeah, I mean, I've, I'm hearing that from a lot of teams uh, about, you know, because everyone's thinking about the RMR and everyone's thinking about the Major, and I get it, but this is the Spodek. And I know you, you love playing in arenas like this as well, so... You know, I just want to hear a little bit more about like, yeah, we are going to try and win this this damn trophy here in Poland from teams and, and not like, yeah, we'll see. No, but I think if we were coming like with our old teams, like with Inns or Vitality, we mm -hmm. would have that mentality. But right now we just have been together for a month. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, the practice has been limited. And I think teams like obviously FaZe or Vitality came in with that mentality that they're here to win. Um, but it's also kind of maybe... Well, I guess it's not unrealistic, but it is a bit ambitious to be uh, together for a month and say, ah, we're just going to uh, go and win the trophy, right? But, I mean, it's up for grabs if, uh, if we're good. Yeah, it's true. But who do you think the, the other best team is that could win it then, outside of you guys? I actually think that all six teams has a shot. I think uh, it's... In CS2, it's not really uh, certain who is uh, mm -hmm. who is great yet. Uh, people thought it was going to be Vitality, but now they completely... Uh, well, they lost two games and didn't win any, so I think that it's it's a very open field at the moment. Yeah. What do you think about Spirit? I mean, Donk. That's what I think. <laughs> is it? It's not just Donk, though. It is pretty much Donk. Come on. I mean, no, obviously it's not only, but <laughs> it is also very much Donk. Okay. Uh, all right, Zontix, I got you. I know you're playing well, too. No, Chow, I mean, you? they obviously have a good team, but like... His performance yeah, this yeah, tournament yeah. is almost historic. Like, yeah, I mean, um, I think it's hard to ignore. You yeah, know, absolutely. It is crazy. Uh, maybe the update will nerf him a little bit. What do you think? And what do you think about it? I mean, I have watched some of his uh, demos and I cannot replicate the thing. Uh, like, he's never standing still. So I think uh, if it is actually a nerf to the Pika's advantage, I might. Uh, I hope he's going to get nerfed 10% because I think all teams need that. Yeah, I think so too. Um, Magisk was saying that it's probably good for him. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think it's good for guys like me and Emil because we are anchoring on a lot of sides sitting still and we, we are the ones who are getting swung on. Yeah. I think it's going to maybe nerf some of the very hard entry, like moving around the map constantly, those type of players, uh, if, if Pika's advantage is indeed nerfed. Yeah, I'm hearing it's better for the old, older players. Yeah, it's probably true because I like to, you know, sometimes chill a bit, you know, in the yeah, corner. Yeah. So, yeah, true. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. How are you, Boris? I'm good. How are you? I'm really good. Thank you. Uh, I wasn't able to watch that many of your uh, games because I was covering the other stream, but all I kept hearing at some some moments were that you are that guy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, in the beginning of the tournament, we lost to internal fire and we was a bit shaky. Then we needed to work hard a lot. So we fixed a lot of things and uh, we played much better in the coming games and for, from me individually, I think. Yeah, what individually uh, do you think you were doing much better by the end of the group stage? Um, I was just like working hard and fixing like some mistakes, like I did as an individual. And uh, it let me like uh, to just play with a clear mind, like don't think about strats or something. And uh, it show, like uh, it make me better individual. Okay, uh, are you looking forward to playing in the Spo deck? Yeah, of course. Uh, like. It means so much like to play in big arena and like uh, to have crowd and I know that crowd will not be with us this tournament <laughs> because <laughs> we're playing against uh, Polish players so I'm looking forward to this. Do you take that uh, as like a challenge? Do you like that? Maybe the fact that you know, oh, they're not here for us, but I can shut them up? Yeah, of course. I want uh, to make them quiet. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see if that happens. Uh, what do you think about the update? Uh, I didn't play, but I think, uh, as what I heard, like I think it's good that uh, it makes like uh, people with um, 
just speaking so much like uh, it nerfed them mm -hmm. so I'm looking to it. I hope it uh, will be like CS again, it feels. Yeah, is that what kind of everyone wants to have it more, uh, just in general, to have it feel more like CS again? Yeah, I think so, because um, yeah, it feels better in CS, so yeah. I want it again. Okay, Valve is listening, so thank you. No problem. <laughs> What's up? We got Frank here. Uh, he's running away, uh, but we can follow. Uh, come, into my, come, come, into my office. come into his lair. All right, so here's the pitch deck. Uh, Frank, you're the, the man who makes the, the sketches happen, yeah? Indeed, well, for, for the most part, for the most part. A few of them. He's humble, he makes a lot of them happen. Uh, we've been enjoying this cinematic masterpiece of, uh, of the, the, the table reads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the room that you can see behind you. This is the table read room. We've got the poster in the background, the storyboard over there. Uh, it's looking a bit bare bones, but yeah, this is the location. I actually hadn't seen this poster yet. That's incredible. Yeah, it's a good one. Anton. Get, get some close-ups on, uh, on the poster to show the faces. It's not been shown in its full glory. It's, uh, it's nice, yeah. It's nice. So, yeah, we did it here. Uh, we're going to release the full thing, um, I guess, for the lobby. It will be on the day. So the full thing on Thursday because, yeah, it's not done the best online in these parts. So we're just going to go full release, everything together. Certified banger, we hope, but who knows. Certified banger, I'm sure. Has part three hit yet? I've seen parts one no, and two. Part three is gonna come, but we're gonna we're gonna put it all in one episode. So we'll see. One, yeah. That's that's the the decision's been made. You know, no short no short episodes. We just go one long table read, and it all it all makes sense in the chapters. So we'll see. Full ripper, cinematic masterpiece, one long table read. Yeah. When are we getting the budget to do full of special effects shoots with the players? It's a good question. It's a good question. I thought it'd be here by now, but no, no such thing. No such thing. Uh, maybe the evidence in the table read, you know, we'll see the, you know, the players are good actors. Yeah. I think all we need is a bit of cash and we can make it happen for sure. Hollywood. Makes sense. Hit us up. Hit us up. Hit us up. How are you? Pretty good. Yes. Free day. I mean, media day. Yeah. It doesn't stop, does it? Play so many games. There's always something to do. Uh, when you win, it's hard. Yeah. Well, would you rather not win? <laughs> oh, it's better to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're going to this photo deck that is insane. I mean, you probably had a little bit more time to think about it now, like how crazy your group stage was. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah, it was insane, actually. When the first game we lost, we didn't play like like maybe half of our game. And then uh, we just improved so fast. It was so good to watch and to feel and to play. <laughs> yeah. Are you already nervous about the Spodek? Is it like nervous or excitement or stress? I think it's so excited and happy. Like even though we lost yesterday, I, yeah. I couldn't get sad <laughs> because <laughs> I was still thinking I will play in Spodek. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the best thing that could happen. Yeah. Dusha, hello. hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Are you looking forward to the spo deck? Yes. And are you looking forward to who you're playing? Because there's, you know, there's just so much, um, you know, ex-teammates. Snakes. Say it again. The teammates, ex-teammates. You said snakes? No, ex-teammates. Are you sure? Yes. Did I hear that correctly? Yes. Oh my God. So, uh, no, but seriously, um, I, it was so lovely seeing your reaction to the qualification. Are you already dreaming about being on that stage? Maybe. We will see on Friday. Oh. I mean, it's, it was special to qualify here, for sure. We tried three years in a row and we didn't go deeper than second day of playing, which is not really deep, I would say. <laughs> so, yeah, it was special, especially in the Polish team. Yeah. So all you needed was more Polish friends and Lukasz also. <laughs> yeah. I think it's because of Lukasz also. Yeah? Yeah. Why? You know, he's Polish now, so it's easier to communicate. Okay. We don't need to speak English. <laughs> Do you just ignore him? No, he's just speaking a few words in Polish and then we, we are trying to continue. Okay. Cool. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you in Spodek. Uh, one thing, did you get to play already on the new update? Yeah, we played two matchmakings. And what do you think? Uh, it's fine. I feel like it's much better than it was. Much better? Yeah. Do you want ESL to implement it right now? Uh, I'm not sure if I can give this answer here. <laughs> I don't either. We don't care. We don't care. You don't care? Yeah, we don't care. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Cinque. Hello, Hades. Hello. How are you? 
Vielen Dank. Ja. <laughs> Vielen Dank. Ist das ein Meme? Ich weiß nicht. Ich würde sagen, ja. Probably. Ich weiß nicht. Ein Polish Meme. Oh, ist es ein Polish Meme? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, congratulations. Uh, what a run. Um, going to the Spodek. And it's so interesting to me because you were, of course, in this lineup before. And then you played with Snappy ages ago. And now you're going to meet him. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I'm not really like thinking that much. Of course, I want to beat them, you know. Yeah. But it's not like I've got like any grudges or anything, you know. Mm -hmm. We just want to go as deep into like the event as possible. Well, regardless of grudges, I guess you want to have a good personal performance, and that does mean that it's versus some bias. So, uh, you know, how do you feel like you have been playing on the op specifically? I know that some people have been struggling with it, of course, now uh, in CS2. I mean, I think it will depend on the patch we're playing. Like, I've played the two matchmakings also, and it seems a little bit better for the Opus. But uh, I think I've, on LAN, it's much better. Like, this is the first LAN I've actually been to in CS2. Mm -hmm. And it just feels so much better than online, you know? You don't get as much peak as advantage, I think. It's to get some, but it's a bit better. So I was surprised how well I'm performing this event. <laughs> so. But yeah, I think yeah, we're ready for some pace, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the momentum really carried you for a while and then in the last match maybe not so much but do you feel like once you get on stage there and there will be tons of Polish flags I'm sure there will be tons of support I think I mean it's going to be one of the biggest things ever for you in your your career I guess Yeah I mean Antwerp was crazy and I think Katowice will be even even crazier you know so yeah. I cannot wait to like just get in and play that Okay uh, well I can't wait either Thank you Thank you The iceberg of success. Above the surface, the sharp, blinding tip. What everyone pictures when they hear your name. The headlines, the accolades, the trophies, the confetti flooding your face. But lying below the surface, plunged into the darkness. Years upon years of trials, tribulations, failure, rejection, heartbreak slapping you round the face. Adversity is one thing when those around you support your dream. But what about when no one ever believes you'd even come up for air? Let alone stand amongst the greatest of all time. change of lens, a new perspective. Because for one man, unadulterated aggression was paramount. In 2015, Apex was basically a wild animal. Untamable, very aggressive, very emotional as well. He would rather destroy the wall than pick the lock. That's how he loved to play the game. Meanwhile, regional politics reaching boiling point. French players were given way too much power for way too long. It was a big hindrance for the scene. Better lineups arguably could have been put together had people put the victory above everything else and no politics or no issues left and right. And then, deserted. Watching your fellow countrymen leave you drifting in a vast open sea. Despite the red and white bricks you pave, the foundation continually crumbles under your feet. For Snappy, I feel it was more the daily scene leaving him behind than necessarily him not wanting it. Coming to think of it, he's never been the big guy, he's never been the Gleam, never been the Kerrigan. They were all viewed above Snappy. He always had to, to go by with the third, fourth best Danish team. Never really got the credit that he deserved. A place told that so many loves to hate. Classic Jane time. You could just look at how he plays Counter-Strike and decide that you don't like it. But as soon as you pay a little bit of attention, you start to see that it is way more complicated than it looks like. You are dead from inside when you play against them, but you have a feeling that VP is also dead from inside. Take the gamble. Only you know the true cards in your hands. Time to show the world you're not bluffing. 
becoming the brain of your team when your previous style was running around doing all sorts of crazy stuff is not a career path I ever would have imagined Apex to. But I didn't think he would have it in himself to change as a person. Paris comes as a, a reward for an incredible amount of work and you could see it on his face how much it meant to win here in front of his crowd. Unlock the young guns around you. He will never let you down, no matter what. You have more confidence to make the plays, and that's why I was performing like this. Oh, yes! Have you ever seen anything like it? I know it for a fact. He wants it more than anyone. And now he's moved to Falcons, and he has unfinished business. Prove that your approach is gospel. It was almost impossible to see Jane winning that major in video. I think outsiders seize an opportunity that nobody ever saw coming. Redeemed here is no better than anyone else that complacency kills. Not every fairy tale has to have a happy ending. The clock is ticking for Alexi B. Uh, I think he is severely underrated still. Uh, he's had his opportunities. He obviously had ends where he did God's work. I think that's one of the most remarkable in-game leader performances I've ever seen. You cannot fail another project because then you look back and you say OG wasn't that great for the vast majority of the time. G2 never really worked out and now Navi couldn't get fixed either. Even those who have forever etched their name into our Hall of Heroes. Not letting a changing of the guard put an end to their story. Players who have been achieving big things in the past, having this winner's mentality, they are just missing some success and something else than, than winning is not for them. So, how do you want to be remembered? I think Nafani has been one of the most polarizing and criticized figure. And the question is now, can he redeem himself? When I think about Glaive and his situation now, I'm torn between an incredible respect and a thought of, is he crazy? Why would he care about that? Why would he care about what the community thinks or, or doesn't think of him? He could have stopped with CSGO. He would have gone down as one of the, the greatest in-game leaders, if not the greatest in-game leader of all time. If he wants to play Counter-Strike, if he wants to give it another go, then go for it. Because no one ever truly beats this game. So, why let it beat you? Hello, Glaive. Hello, hello. So you got to do a little uh, warm-up. You got to go on stage for the opening ceremony. Did it feel good? Did it bring back some memories? Uh, I mean, I didn't feel too much because uh, I was looking for some white dots that was not there. So you weren't standing in the right place? I don't think so. <laughs> well, if you're on the right place in, in Counter-Strike, that's more important. Hey, uh, you've got to lead these troops today because you're actually the only one who's played on this stage before. So are you ready to do that? I mean, yes, of course. I mean, the last few times I've been at this stage, this stage has been pretty good. So uh, hopefully it will be good once again. Yeah, hopefully indeed. And what do you think uh, about the bond that you have formed with these players? Because I feel like it really went from being a, OK, I guess we're playing together now to a, no, this is great. This is awesome. And the bond is growing before our eyes. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it has been like a, a big change coming to this tournament. We had one boot camp before, but I mean, it was still really new to, to know the guys and to, for them to know me and to know each other and everything. Uh, but this tournament has actually made us a lot closer, like uh, personally. And uh, just winning together is just an amazing feeling. And I can feel how hyped they are for this uh, game. Uh, and uh, I'm really hyped as well. Looking forward to it. Good luck. Thank you. Never mind raising the roof because this crowd are going to be ready to rip it right off. For the first time in eight years, we get a Polish core inside the Spodek as we see Ents arrive to take on the Falcons in our second quarterfinal. The Intel Extreme Masters had a bit said. My name is Ferris Biz, joining me, Maniac, and of course, Steel for this coveted second quarterfinal. This is going to be a banger on all accounts because we're talking about 
hometown heroes finally getting to be on this very stage. It's been a long time as well since the hometown heroes were on the stage, and I remember a time where Virtus Pro was on the stage going all the way through the grand finals, and I was here, I was behind the stage, I was the observer, and I know what it's like to go against the Polish crowd. You're not even get, going against the team, you're going against everyone in the stadium. Oh, oh, so, so you know what it is to have everybody in the crowd scream at you every time you die. <laughs> every single P90 Pasha kills in your face. You have thousands of people screaming at you. This was great. No, I, I know I what it's like when they're time. screaming at you, though. You know what it does? <laughs> they scream to you. Yes, you're right. Listen, we, we obviously are going to talk about the history of Polish Counter-Strike, and, and we have the members of VP scattered all across the place here in Spodek, but just Polish Counter-Strike had to wait. Polish Counter-Strike had to be patient. For a long, long time, it was lost, trying to find its way. A few individuals here and there, the Shuhi, the Diha of the world, maybe making an impact at the very top level. And then we have this nine team who pops on our radar at a few tournaments here and there. They become expert at a map, but they seem like there's a ceiling they can never really cross. But now we're back in Spodek. How's it going, everybody? I always wanted to do that, oh, sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to do it. I'd love to see it. I mean, uh, Matthew, you know what it's like to be on the receiving end of this very crowd. Yes. We uh, just aptly spoke about what have Falcons got in store waiting for them with this uh, crazy crowd behind us. Well, listen, when I when I played against Virtus Pro in 2014, that was a very, very tough time for me here. Um, they destroyed us, went ahead to win the entire major. They were unstoppable. So I, I have a feeling, I know what Falcons has to, do, to wait in front of them right now. We'll see if the, the history repeats itself. I I do hope for them it's going to get a little better. Well, we've obviously got, you know, the Polish storyline coming into things, which has just been absolutely insane to witness unfolding. But uh, when we're coming into this specific matchup, it's quite the drama, isn't it? We've got a bit of a soap opera on our hands because let's just talk about the amount of rivalries we're going to be seeing in the server today. Yeah, listen, uh, if you're a fan of Game of Thrones and you like uh, drama, I think this series has got you covered. There are so many interesting angles we can dive into in this Ents versus Falcons. There's obviously the Glaive going up against uh, Majisk and Zonic. Glaive as an Astralis player here, lifting a trophy, sort of uh, paving the way for the rest of nine. But there is obviously the Diha versus his old teammates, and that one in itself is a super, super enticing one. Yeah, going against your ex-teammates that you've, uh, you know, jokingly said, oh, they're snakes on a content piece. That's uh, something where there's always a little bit of truth to every lie type of thing. So yes. every joke, <laughs> it's got a little bit of truth to it. So he's definitely not super happy about that. No one could be. Now, obviously, you have the Hades versus Sampaios as well. Just a little bit of a history here. You have to remember, Hades used to be in that Ed's jersey, and then he got replaced. So if I'm Hades, maybe I want to just beam, like just literally oh. beam his out there like an X-Men. <laughs> I mean, the fact is, Sampaios was always paved as a very much big stage player, and we said Hades couldn't do it, couldn't crack it, couldn't hack it. Now he's got a beautiful moment to do so. So it is full of rivalries out there. Yeah, he's got the opportunity to show it straight up on stage here today. Right, Josh? Yeah, I, I think it's going to be one of his tall orders. I guess because he's been, you know, accused of by Snappy by not being a, a stage player. He's got a little bit of stage fright. Whereas on the other hand, Snappy's been saying about Sun Pius, it's like he, that's when he shows up is the stage matches. Mm. So that's going to be a very interesting storyline to see how that develops in this game because these are the oppers that are going to be making the biggest difference. I think when we talk about the styles and the styles are going to come from Glaive, the styles are going to come from Zonic and Snappy, for example. And when we see something like Glaive style where they are doing some very team oriented game plan and someone, you know, throws a wrench in the gears, how do they recover from that? And you have these inexperienced players on the end side. How are you going to deal with that and adapt? Whereas on the other side, you have Falcons. They are all individually skilled, and they haven't had the time to spend with all the game planning because they spent most of the time on the foundation and building a, a team core. So you know, outside of the server, let's get together, yeah. and then let's go into the server after that and start making plans. So Falcons might be able to adapt a little bit better, but then Ents is propped up. Probably. I mean, you, you talk about experience, and, and we just have to take a second to appreciate this this strange mixture that Ents actually has come to be mm. with Diha from the old roster, Polish sort of pillar of experience in the scene, then Glaive, who's just ended up in this Polish team right there with the core of nine. We talked to him during the media day, and, and I asked him, when did you realize that the success was going to hit you? And he said, halfway through the event. Like, I had no idea showing up here that we would have so much success. And they got caught in this tornado that's happening now. And I think there are a team that will be extremely emotionally oriented and 
react to it. You saw the game versus Mouse, where there was a little bit less at stake. They didn't really show up. But here, this is this is where you expect people to, to stand up. You're talking about Vitality in Paris. You are on home, home soil here. This is your arena. You're going to have everyone with you that can push you to accomplish a fairy tale which has no legs to stand on. It's got no basis. It's got no narrative. It is just supposed to be beautiful. And an arena where Glaive has lifted the trophy not once, but uh, twice on that former Australis Org. So certainly a man who's hella experienced here. But we've talked about, you know, the young stars of Poland rising up. As you aptly mentioned, Matthew, we have some of the veterans, you know, just walking around these halls. We have them behind squads now. Right? I'm talking about Neil, I'm talking about Taz, obviously aptly coaching some of these squads. But the fact that we get together, right, the old 1.6 lineup, um, it, it, it's crazy, right? We've got the likes of Pasha, Cuban, Lord. Neo and Taz still walking here in 2024. That's magical. Yes, and some of them are more involved than others, right? We are always super happy to see Pasha back here. Kuban is going to be behind the boys as well. Neo just had a, a moment of success. Taz, unfortunately, the road stops for here. But for, for a country, for an entire country, this is where the history of Counter Strike sort of starts. Like it starts with the Golden Five, with these guys then in the Versus Pro jersey, and then it's about patience to find new champions. These paved the way of Counter Strike here in Spodek. They lifted trophies here in Spodek, and now maybe Enz can be the next. And talk about Diha being able to look upon of legends of his childhood, right? I talked to him on media day and he said 10 years ago he queued up at 5 a.m. outside this very arena to witness three of those men that he was looking at the stairs actually lift the trophy here. Like, it, it's magical to see the trajectory that Diha's on, no less, right? Yeah, we saw Diha, how much it meant for him to just advance and qualify for the main playoffs because, you know, that is the goal for a lot of these guys to get on the stage and to go all the way to the end, but we all also know that you know this is kind of unexpected for them they're like oh we yes. qualified for the playoffs we qualified for just the quarterfinals and it's like we made it and it's like is that enough if you feel like you've already made it now like what what do you have left in the tank and that's always going to be a question that lingers on here what do we expect yeah that is certainly going to be the question hopefully we can get some answers courtesy of Diha and shocks Dicha, uh, what a day for you. First up, Ents, 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 Ents. Um, I need to get a clarification from you because um, I asked you about playing versus Falcons and you said snakes, but then you said, no, I didn't mean it that way, but then you tweeted it. So what's going on? No, it's, uh, it was just for content. I love all of them. Nothing, nothing bad. I know you do. Uh, listen, what an important and big day for you. Um, I heard that 10 years ago at 5 a.m. you were queuing in the Spo deck to try and get in to watch, and now you get to play here. What an achievement already. Um, I mean, 10 years ago I didn't know that I would play CS, so yeah, it's pretty crazy, I would say. Um, and now that you've had the opening ceremony, so you got to stand here already and you're setting up, what feelings are overcoming you knowing that you could make history here today? Uh, it was amazing. I swear I was uh, getting emotional, so it's amazing. Snappy is, of course, on the other side, and I think specifically him being an IGL, you know what makes him mad. You know what makes him tick. So have you been able to share that, and will that help you today? Yeah, I think there was some tricks, which I said to our new coach and also Lucas, so... Let's see if it's enough. Yeah, let's see if it's enough indeed. Now, also, there was something else you wanted to say or announce? Yeah, so, as you know, guys, I'm playing in Enz for the last three years, so I want to announce that I'm staying in Enz for two more years, which means I signed a new contract. Fantastic. Uh, final question then. I've asked Glaive the same question, but it's incredible to see how Enz kind of you got thrown together and there was a lot of uncertainty, but it feels like you have bonded so much together. Is that the case? Yeah, I mean, uh, creating this uh, roster wasn't easy. Also, our first uh, like matches, it also wasn't easy, but I think the guys are doing much better than we, like everyone expected, so yeah. Good luck. The crowd, understandably, very, very happy indeed to hear that news about Diha. But we tackled the emotional angle, Matthew. I think <laughs> technical for a second. What did we learn about Ernst throughout, you know, the play-ins and the group stage? Oh, this my. Point? Then I guess I have to stop being romantic for a second yeah. and just use our brain a little bit. Yeah, we, we can get technical a little bit. Ernst, obviously, a team that doesn't have the most experience out there. And it's something that kind of transpires when you look at T-side versus CT-side. Their T-side, when, when Glaive can have the calls and they can have these strategies from the get-go, they are able to be very deadly, very vicious, very efficient. 
important. But on the CT side, and Glebe also spoke about it in media day, he said, I have to be able to trust my teammates. I have to let go a little bit of the control. I have to trust that they are going to have the right ideas, the right calls. It hasn't really come through too much. And now the question is, sink or swim, right? You're in the big stage. Is there a moment where you're going to dare to make these moves, make these rotations, have these calls? Or you're going to sort of go back into your shell and disappear? This is what we're going to see what they're made of. And the, on CT side is where the individual skill kind of shines. You don't get to have someone holding your hand every direction, every moment of the round. So you need to be able to make the right decision. So Glaive giving up, you know, he's historically known for being really micromanagement heavy, just commanding everyone everywhere. So to give that up and allow his teammates to kind of make their own decisions, we saw an interview as well with Diha saying that after the big game, after that loss, he told his teammates, hey, like, you have to be able to take more risks here. And I think I saw that coming into some of these other matches because we saw a lot of risks and we saw that p get punished. That's why they have such a horrible CT side win rate. Sorry. Yeah. You know, it's true. Five v four is well true. complicated. It's it's where it starts to you know fall apart. So when they start losing players, that's when they start to bleed out. So what they want to do is you know if they were able to take the break after the Mouse game, and that's pretty much what they needed. They were playing all the way through play-ins, all the way through groups. They needed that break. Now if they have time to get a game plan going together, and they get to sit down and say, okay, what happens if this player loses a life here, or we need, we lose control of this map point here? What are we going to do to? get over that. And I think that's mainly what they need to fix if they want to be able to have a chance here. Machi, you touched upon the individuals. So, Josh, how do you frame the situation between Hades and Sampaios, not on a dramatic level, just when we're looking at the AWPers inside the server? Yeah, so Hades was an AWPer that wasn't really doing too well. He is, his form was pretty bad, um, especially on big games. He had not great impact. His rating was low, his impact was low, his kills per round were low. He was just not even on the server. But in this entire event, through the play-ins all the way through groups, he's been one of their best players, or if not their best player. And he's had such high impact. He's had kills with the AWP. He's been entering with it. He's been running around, no scoping people. He does not care right now. So it's going to be interesting to see if he carries that onto the playoff stage here, whereas Sun Pius has had a really not great series. He's had three series where he had horrible rating, horrible kill per round, but going Going into the match against Na'Vi, he just put on, like, I don't know, he went into overdrive. He started playing really well. He is known for being a stage player. That's what yes. Snappy said. Snappy said, Hades, not land player that, or stage player. That's why we replaced him. We got San Pias. He is a stage player. So it's going to be interesting to see if he's able to kind of correct his form from the earlier stages of this tournament and see what we can see from, you know, his game against Na'Vi. He was just crushing them. I mean, the quality of San Pias, I feel like, is already known right now. We know what he's made of, and he's already made an impact in the scene. I think it is an angle, a filter through which we can watch this series, that the individual experience on stage and what they have delivered up until that point, and it's true. At that game, Falcons, they, they got ends covered. It is just a fact outside from Boros, for whom we are still waiting to kind of discover what are you made of, how do you react in these moments. Snappy, Madden, Sampaio, somebody, Magist, not even need to mention his name. These are people who know exactly how it is to perform your best Counter-Strike at this very moment, and they're going to be equipped to deal with the hardships much better than ends, I think. And the ends is going to be a bit more momentum-based, whereas Falcons individually have a stronger backbone to resist whatever's happening here. And you talk about the back of that backbone as well because there's uh, Zonic standing behind them. So even if you get flustered in the moment, Josh, uh, all you got to do, call, tack time out, and then Zonic's in your ear. You know, it's all calm. It's all good in the world. Yeah, I think one of the main things that we've been pointing out is Glaive is a two-time, you know, trophy lifter here, but so was Zonic. He was right there, part of that project. And part of what made that project work was how he they got together on the original Astralis era, like that one everything, is they got together, they didn't even participate like with PCs for two days. It was just all about building a team, building that foundation. And this is a concept that Zonic's taken actually to this team here with Falcons, and they spent four days without, you know, touching the computer, without talking about tactics. It's just team building. So they have the team building elements you know, laid out, and now it's time to start adding in the layers to that team. Whereas Ents, it's just, it, it seems like it's all game plan right now. Yeah, I mean, we cannot imagine that Falcon's playbook is finished right now. It, it's completely impossible, and even yeah. their way to the playoffs has been through hardships and through sweats and tears. The comeback against Na'Vi, I don't think it's just a playbook base, it's just strongly mentally. You're talking about a team who, a few months ago, we didn't even know who was going to be in the lineup, and then, oh, this guy's coming, or maybe he isn't. Then the crowd is just hyping the hell out of them, and then they end up with this line. No, they're in the playoffs. How crazy is that? The crowd are either very excited for the veto, or there's probably a Polish legend walking around. That's what's happening. But let's talk about the veto. 
get Mirage picked from uh, Falcons, overpass from Ents. Did you uh, expect this? Yeah, so what is interesting here is that you have a floating of Inferno that comes into play, which means people can ban maps they would definitely not want to play. It's kind of psych, you're never going to get to play your best map, which is which would have been Vertigo, of course, if you're an Ents player. Ancient has been a go-to, so I don't really know how to frame this. This is basically making sure that you take the best weapon away from your opponent, and we're just going to get messy, and I'm going to drag you down into the mud, and I'm going to punch you as you punch me. It's, it's going to get dirty. That's what's going to happen. And another thing to point out is that Overpass picked for Ents, they haven't actually shown an Overpass game because they were created from like the scraps. They had like, oh, what are we going to do? There's like one day, two days to find out what we have to do. They put together a, a roster. We haven't seen them that play that many officials. They've been hiding this. This is a pocket pick for them. So it could play out in their favor really well. I've got one question for the Spodek. Are you ready to see Ents on stage? I think they certainly are. But not before we head to a quick break. When we're back, Falcons ends out on this very stage in the Spodek. feels amazing. I mean, there's so many stories coming into this matchup. They are a new team and they have like the honeymoon period. But to be honest, I'm not scared of them. I think we can beat them easily. The crowd will be against us, so we need to keep them quiet. The core of the Falcons just left ends and uh, kind of left Powell staying there. I know that he wants to win against them, so I hope that I can help him uh, achieve that. Tears in his eyes, right, as he secures yeah. a spot in the sport deck. I feel like they have two more experienced guys, which is Zonic and Magis, and it's helping them a lot in this type of situations now, maybe to handle the pressure. Once I think we have the better experience, like our coach and Marco Gel, I believe in him, and uh, we have better players to win. If we are on point, I think we'll, we can win them easily. And of course I want to beat them and they want to beat me because they will always be like kind of funny band. We're really good friends, but still it's, it will be nice to beat them. Right now they are definitely in like a honeymoon period, but I think they will try and find themselves. And that is just something that takes time. You can do something, but I think playbook for both teams are, are probably the weaker side right now. Crowd being with us will be a huge uh, like advantage. Since 2016, Ents is going to carry on the legacy. Half few minutes after the match, because I was in shock a bit, but we did it. I'm getting emotional in these big moments. I don't think before the games I really understood how much it actually meant to them. Getting some tears in their eyes, it kind of melts my heart a bit. Beating all these good teams, being like a fresh team as well, it has been insane. You know? It's like a dream come true to play in Spotify. It has been pretty crazy uh, with this run we have made here in Katowice. Really surprised, but also really happy. I didn't expect us to qualify to Spodek, but I was expecting us at least to go through the playing stage. We didn't really have that much time to prepare. Being with Kuben, like as a coach, not only like a great dude, but he has like a big brain for CS and he has like a really great approach to players. 
I expected Glaive to have like a lot of ego. This guy won everything, you know, and he's still like pretty humble, like just tries to make everyone feel comfortable, like in their roles, in the position. They're really good guys and I like to play with them and I think it's only getting better. And may I say, I have done this job for a while. Every now and again, you get a matchup where you can taste the excitement, you can taste the danger, you can taste the heat. And that, my friends, is what we've got right now. Two teams who won that place in the semi-final. On one side, a team that contains one of the greatest players ever, a coach that has won everything. On the other side, let's just say, are there any Polish fans here? see from the heavens down to the ground we have a stadium that is ready so let's bring them out first off they're new but the story has just started containing as i said some of the greats please welcome to the spodek it's the falcons But it takes two to tango. Put together with just 48 hours notice, for the first time in eight years in the Spodek, it is time to welcome a team made up of Polish players with just a sprinkling of Danish magic. Oh yeah. Please welcome. on their faces. Both teams are on this. Let's have the captains. Let's have the captains up. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. What we're going to do, when these fists touch, that means the game is underway. Look at them staring each other down. You ready? Please shake hands. Here we go! Right then, Spodek. This is the moment. A place in the semi-finals taking on Spirit is up for grabs. And I want to hear you go wild. Sorry. Right then, who's winning this? Is it going to be Falcons? Whoa. Is it going to be Ants? Come on, one more time. Is it the Falcons? Is it Ants? You guys are the best. Are you ready to get it on? Well, let's get it on. The presence of Poland truly illuminating the Spodek. The first time in eight years that we get to see a core on home soil. And we roll it back uh, 10 years ago, Josh. BP lifting the trophy here. Another opportunity now for Ents to be clawing themselves ever closer to that semi-final than that grand final. Yeah, it's more like a five versus 10,000 right now instead of yeah. five versus five. It's a little uh, lopsided here. And listen, I hope you guys can see these images as well on stream, because I feel like it's very telling. On one hand, Falcons behind the PC doing the huddle. What is Enns doing? They're staying in the middle of that stage. They know this is the power that they can channel, just staying in front of the stage, making the best of this moment. 
I don't think there is any story for me to lie on and tell you that ENDS have better players, stronger players. But we are not here to think. We're here to appreciate. We're here to dream for a team that has taken everybody by surprise. And now, with that little bit of flavor, that Cuban flavor, that Glaive flavor, maybe can just defy the odds once again and punch a ticket to the goddamn semifinals. And they have got a whole lot of magic rooting behind them. We heard exactly what the crowd was saying towards the men on the other side of the server. But Josh, who do you see taking this one? I, I, I'm so torn with who to go with. It's such a 50-50 that I, I just, I honestly don't know. With this crowd right now, I'm, I'm kind of siding towards ends. But beforehand, I was thinking Falcons probably wins through experience. Listen, it, it takes, it would take a whole lot to go and bet against that crowd. I will say there's quality in the Falcons roster in the sense of Snappy's got resilience. He knows how to deal with that. The Snappy versus Glaive duel is extremely enticing. But you know what? If this, I'm going to go with Ants. I'm ready for the Gurum, baby. You're believing in the magic. And you know what? I don't blame you because the atmosphere, absolutely electric inside the Spodek. We have Mirage. We have Overpass. We have Nuke if we do so need it. And we, of course, have Moses and Dinko to be guiding through what is going to be a magical quarterfinal. The stage is set. We have our story. For the first time in eight years, a Polish team has earned the right to fight on the Spodek stage. Tonight, all bonds interact with fresh dreams as Ents and Falcons begin their chase for the Intel Extreme Masters Trophy. My question is, if you believe in Ents, do you believe in the power of Poland? Then Katowice, let them hear you! It's a big one. Sonic matches against the old teammate. Snappy Madden some bias against the old teammate. Rivalries everywhere. And Enz was birthed inside this arena. A household name they became inside this arena. And another chance here with the Polish lineup to make their name known. And we're kicking this show off on Mirage, a quarterfinal for history. Team Falcons on that T side, Ents will start on the defense. And this round's about settling nerves, settling into this environment. It's a huge energy rush you get out there, adrenaline pumping, and those young players on Ents, some of them haven't seen these stages before. Goofy and Kyler, they haven't been in this environment before. Diaz gonna be pushed up towards ramp. Glaive gonna be smoked off, and right out of spawn, Falcons calling for the A execute. And it's Glaive first up. Diha inside the ramp, waiting to go. The Joel Moran is rattling away, but he's down first. Snappy's headshot, Boris' his follow-up. And this is good for Falcons so far. They're in towards CT spawn. It's a clean, decisive pistol that ends beginning to bite back. It's Hades. And he's got a bone to pick tonight. He's got Boris out of that. Hades falls. Magis follows up. And the experience seems to be coming out on top at the moment. Kylo locked out in a 1v4. Yeah, this is a rough pistol round for Ents. They're going to be knocked out immediately. A good execution from Falcons and not enough production. But as you said, settling nerves, getting used to this environment. So much of the focus, so much of the workload feels like Glaive's shoulders, that experience IGL. Getting these guys to just relax, get comfortable in this stage, in this crowd. And Kylo tapping away, can't connect. That's pistol round secured by Falcons. And this this man behind them is not going to be feeling any nerves in this moment. Zonic's been up here so many times, so many trophies picked up over the years, and you can see that Falcons look pretty composed in this pistol. They kept it simple. And that's the that's the scariest factor about this. Much like in the in the, in the earlier series, the Phase versus G2, Falcons also have those players like Magisk, like Sun Pius. They get better when you put them on a stage. They get better in the playoffs, better when the pressure is on, and that's experience that Ents doesn't have. And despite the fact that both teams come into this as new rosters, new teams a little bit shaky you have to imagine Falcons are gonna have another gear that they know how to get to oh. there's Madden shutting down an early push double kill and a five on three and Ants have gone for this force by they want to get into it as early as possible but the issue is when you lose two players this early the force by becomes so difficult from this point and you're giving Falcons the best start to this game possible that force by is going to be a little bit rough going against him for the moment. Hades and inside the A bomb site with the scout. First chance. Tags up Snappy. A little bit of information passed over. That one is straight to the dome. 
nice shot back from Hades. And a great read. Immediate shift to the B bomb site. They see him trying to storm up catwalk with presence at A. They know B bomb site's going to be under pressure. And D Haw's got back into position early on with the Deagle behind the bench. We know what D Haw can do with that Deag up against his former teammates tonight. And this time he is taken out. Madden finds him behind that bench with no issue. And Goofy is left alone on the other side of the map. Yep, all about saving that MP9. So early going, Falcon's going to get a leg up, and the next round should be much easier. And this is where it gets to calm down. This is where you get to have a little bit more of a conversation. Not only is Glaive going to be under that pressure, but Cuban as well, standing behind Ants, going to have to be using his timeouts wisely when he notices the pressure causing his players to crumble a little bit. That's going to be a huge role for the coach and in-game leader in tandem. We noticed as soon as they qualified into the spot, we've seen that look over from Kubin to Taz. They know how much it means to be back in here again. So far, Ants yet to win a round. They will not likely win this next round either. Their money is gone. Everything is shot. And Falcons have a good start on the T side. And Steele was touching on that on the desk, Jason, about some of the CT side weaknesses that Ants might have. They take some risks. They really got this far because of those risks, but sometimes it can unravel this defense. Well, the entire conversation around Ants right now is, is how little time they've had to kind of flesh out any sort of playbook. None of, none of the, the boot camp, none of that went particularly great for the end side of things as they tried to figure out different ways they can add new things in. And we've seen a couple of times, again, as Steele mentioned, them get stalled out in games, early starts, not having a game plan throughout the entire half not having it fleshed out amongst all the players. But that's the beauty of playing in this kind of an environment is you have this crowd. You have this entire stadium behind you. That's what can give you energy when you start running low, running out of ideas. That's what can help propel you for, uh, forward, at least in theory, as we have a short tech issue to fix before we can get this match back underway. And everybody tonight, the Spoda has turned up for this opportunity the first time since 2016. And it's great to see the support here for Rents. You see the players walking out. You can almost see it on their faces, the, the tension, the pressure that's going to be on some of these players. In particular, d -Hot. Saw him break down in tears just a couple of days ago. This was a long dream of his to qualify to be on this stage at this event in front of this crowd. And been able to accomplish that and trying to build upon it now. And like we said, his former teammates on the other side of the stage trying to stop him. It's a big task for Falcons as well. Same kind of concept, very new team, very inexperienced together, even though the pieces are experienced. And they'll lean on that experience in this matchup. Well, that's not forget to mention the greatness and the experience that Ents have within their ranks of play that many rid off over the last few years. Glaive, who came into the Sense project not expecting to play with four Polish players and have Polish co standing behind him, but throughout this event, he has gathered a newfound respect for his teammates and realized how much potential they really do have. He won here in 2019. I've got two. He's got two Katowice trophies along with uh, Zonic and Magisk as well. And it was against Ants back in 2019. Now he plays with them. And these are the moments where experience also plays a factor. When you have an extended tech issue on that stage, you've got to make sure that the thoughts don't slip, the focus doesn't waver. And you get back into the game. But once again, we go back into the action. Unfortunately, an eco ahead here for Ants. Just that MP9 that Goofy saved and USPs across the rest. Yeah, any kill you can get would be great. Not a, probably a whole lot. One HE as well. A little bit of a flash game, flashbang set up from Kyler if they want to go for a peek. Looks like that would be towards B Halls to slow down any kind of attack. And Falcons is going to take this one very slow and very cautiously. Just going through the motions. Molotov's clear connector. Boros on the big stage, this raw talent player. Sending a top middle instead. It's snappy to open up the round with that kill on the Mac tank. Glaive is taken out of play. And they're hoping that Falcons walk into this B stack, but with that kill towards the A bomb side, it's likely the pathway opened up. But they're still focusing towards this B side of the map right now. And if they bring that bomb on over. Oh, they're backing off right now. It's already cleared. Snappy's calling it off, calling him over. Utilities just going to see if they can flush anyone out. But they already know where the end game is. 
From a Falcons perspective, we've talked so much about the experience on this roster. One player, Boros, less experienced. Really his first big Sage playoffs that he has here in Katowice. This is his first time in this environment as well. And for him, it's a tough task. He's trying, remember, to carve out a position in this team of experienced champions that he's got around him. He's trying to find his role and his position to stay within this squad and challenge for trophies down the stretch. And we'll see for the first time what he can deliver in front of a packed out crowd. Round four, first time Falcons have all the weapons that they'd like. Excuse me, Entz has all the weapons they'd like. Oh, yes. Entz is starting to the start too, Jason Hades cracks right open, Magis. And that's going to be Entz opening up with the first kill. And not only that, but they've done damage to Boros, who's down to eight points. So he'll back away. Mid is given on over to the CTs temporarily. And Snappy's the only player still sticking around to fight and force those players back into short. But oh, Hades is going to be so important for this team. Unfortunately, goes down to Madden, challenging at the people up site. Oh. Goofy can't win it either. And if Madden's going to make these plays all game long, your defense is going to be under a lot of pressure. And here comes Boros, laid into this round through short. He's looking to join up with Madden that's already created that space and brought the pressure, but Madden is stepping up. A 7-1 start here on the Spodex stage. And his teammates, well, they're with him. And they've got the advantage in front of them. Madden now has the AWP in hand. With low health, he's moves into the market. And this time, it's a missed shot. Madden misses for the first moment. And Deha and Glaive will retreat. It has to be the safe call here for Entz. Yeah, that AWP in that position, there's no chance. What a round from Madden, just bullying that B bombsite, stepping through the holes. Couple very nice kills with the Galil. And that'll be something Entz has to contend with. Oh, and that's unfortunate for Hades, who opened up the round so well. Just didn't get into the right position at the right time. A little bit too wide. You miss that shot and you've got nowhere to go. You're out in the open as we could see. So Madden takes full advantage and then builds upon it. Bit of a hole early on for Entz. They know that support behind them inside of the stadium will certainly play a factor, but they've got to start winning rounds for that to really kick in. Three players with no kills still on the inside of things. Goofy, Deha, and Glaive starting round five and haven't yet found success. But M4 is back in hand. This time, no op on Hades and right out of spawn. Falcons is gonna go back to an A execute. Kylar positions himself under Palace. In fact, he climbs that ladder to play up on top of the wood. And Glaive looks like he's searching for some utility, but here comes this play from Falcons. And they pop in, and they popped open Kylar instantly. Ants are not able to hold at all. No kills going their way at the moment. Openings are becoming an issue. Yeah, they are, and here comes Hades to try and plug that gap, but all the flashes are keeping it awkward, and Hades has to step up, and he won't. He's cut down at the bottom of the stairway with absolutely no shot in the world. Three players left for Ants, realizing no money in the bank, and they're trying to get away, but Boris is about to butcher them. Goofy in front of him at that murder hole, and they will get around the corner. They will at least save inside of that B bomb site, but Falcons have got so much money already built up. It's going to be a 5-0 lead for the T side. This half starts to get so hard now. As you mentioned, with the money, you got to do it the hard way if you're Entz. You're going to have to win three, four rounds in a row before you ever get a light buy. And that's, we're getting to the point where that's basically what's left in the half. So it might be a time for a timeout from Cuban to call, have a conversation, make sure the guys can take a breath. But that's a stellar opening from Magisk. And it feels rough right now for Entz. Not feeling like they can shoot back, not hit back just yet. Still time to warm up into this. And it's been very simple Counter-Strike for Falcons. A couple of A executes in there, a little bit of mid-control. Madden challenging over at the B bomb site, but nothing fancy, but nothing slow-paced in map control. It's just been punched in the face round after round of your ends. Back in 2016, we did see that Virtus Pro team make it into the spot. They went out in the quarterfinals. Ents looking to go a step further this time. Indeed they are. We'll see what they've got. Cuban having that conversation. We'll see what they come out and change. They're losing in so many aspects of the game. Opening kills, defending against executes. Economically, they're behind. And these are two early adopters of the coaching role. So much experience as a coach. Zonic and Kuban on either side. Decades of coaching experience at this point, and they've got that battle. And so far, Zonic 
Well, he's had the better start and better hope that the words of Kubin work magic as Ants look to recover this CT side. They march out again to do battle. And Madden, who's been an absolute nuisance, is running outside of this A ramp already inside of the side cliff. He's calling for help, but he's stuck behind Triple alone. He's overrun, he's overwhelmed, and Ents are locked out of this bomb side. But that kill back from Kylar just reopens a dream, a chance for this retake. With so much fire coming in towards jungle. All three Molotovs streaming on his escape, and it looks like Ents kind of want to go for this a little bit. They want to stick around. They want to actually feel like they're fighting for something and want to get a gift, a peek from Falcons. But because that execute is so convincing, because they run through the Molotov, there's so much follow-up utility to keep them away from the retake. And once again, Ents can't even battle for this they're gonna back off and concede and Falcons is up to six yeah, they look rattled at the moment ends and it's understandable as to why you would feel that way so much pressure on these inexperienced players shoulders I think I think that's the key word too because when you look at that coming out of a timeout the Falcons know Ents is gonna be adjusting something changing a game plan adding a trick into the CT defense and Falcons just kind of throw it all off kilter just a rush up slope not even extinguishing the Molotov to give away that sound cue, just getting through the Molotov and fighting, and there was no chance for Ents to expect it, no chance for anyone to get back in time. And this kind of start is only going to hurt Ents as well, like sitting back here, getting in your own head. You see they want to go for the retake, but there's absolutely no chance for it. The good news for Ents right now is Hades is back on the AWP, and that was the one bright spot. And calling it a bright spot, it might be even be a little bit much. It gave them an opening kill. That's about it. We'll see if it can deliver again. This time, Ents is going to get aggressive and push middle. Sun Pius kind of loves it. He kind of wants it. Definitely wants an opportunity here, and he's got it. Goofy crosses behind that smoke, and Sun Pius locks it in. So opening kill. Falcons have it. And Magix looks to follow it up, pushing out of Palace. Molotov under the wood to clear it. They look composed at the moment, Falcons. They look so composed. And Ents have to try and disrupt that. Glaive with a signature play, with mid aggression, going for the swing, getting back into connector. Glaive trying to battle, and d -Hot comes to defend him. Now the first push out through the ramp is coming in, this time from Snappy, who's got himself in towards the sandwich. Magix playing in Palace with him. As Ents have gathered around the corner, this is their best chance to win a round yet. And they've even got utility to push back that palace play. Do they know about Snappy? That's have no next, idea. That's the next one. Shadow Show. Snappy looks up. Oh, what a transfer down. Snappy can't do anything more, but he's opened up an opportunity for some pious. Yeah, 2v2 established off the back of that kill from some pious. I'm sure Glaive would have absolutely thought he had that kill locked in, but Snappy steps up. And now some pious dives out of palace, sees that the site is clear. Well, fake plant to try and draw a push from those Ents players and Hades, he's going for it. Nades open, that smoke missed shot goes down to Magisk. He's got to land those, he's got to hit those in this situation. And now it's Diha up against his ex-teammates. He's got that first kill through the smoke, Sabias is down, but Magisk takes him out through the smoke. Hard fought round, but what a kill from Snappy over in Cubby. Just holding his nerve, one kill down, and they have to peek for information. They don't know what's coming, they don't know how committed Falcons are, and that's perfect opportunity for some pious but a little bit of fight back this time for and still not coming out on the winning end and the orb's still here for Hades but you've got to get the rest of the players involved you've got to get goofy in here too and Hades misses that opening chance up through the window. He'll retreat, he'll change his position, and Kylar's pushed through Palace. So Diha locks that off, makes sure that he can stay in that position. But once again, Falcons have looked to mid. They have complete control, Ents haven't fought for it in this round. Up catwalk we go, the alt providing cover over the smoke. And down onto the back of Snappy, that's half health gone. He'll cover off Connector as the rest of his teammates make the play for B because once again, Madden is the player over there getting control of the apartments. There's so much pressure in mid though that Glaive doesn't feel comfortable rotating quite yet. Hades is going to back up into it. Lost focus, taken down, a little bit of disorganization in the defense and this B bomb site is in a lot of trouble. Yeah, Goofy point from the van gets absolutely brutalized by the utility. Glaive swings out, but that risky play does not pay off. At this moment, Falcons in full control. And just shake it at this point. Goofy's got to step up. That's his first kill of this map so far. d comes to help him. And a 2v3 established off the back of it. Goofy's got to know. The boar's jumped out that window. And Goofy's having a big moment.
moment. Boris is coming back over to look to the apartments, and that's where the last two Ants players currently occupy. Boris sees the back, couldn't seize the chance. And now just holds for his moment yet again, but the timing as he looks away, this fight is awkward. This fight is prolonged, and is indicating fact that he doesn't know both players are there. He checked back to the market, and now he's focusing on this. Ants have got their first round, and it's Goofy that gets them it. He steps up massively in the B-bomb site from zero to four kills in one round. That's a, almost an impossible situation. Goofy is equal parts, plays that well, and just gets extremely lucky. For the majority of that, he can just hide and smoke and pray, biding his time. But when he gets those moments, he delivers. Goofy gets them off the goose egg. Now they've got to build on this. He's given them the chance. He's given them the opening with a miraculous behold. A position that is so often overlooked. One of the most difficult, thankless roles. And now Hades starts off the next with an opener that he connects. They have to build on this. It's it's must it's must win round for Ents. You have to string two together here. Hades eyes on Palace, changes his position up. Look at Madden. Madden's already at the top of a ramp. He's already challenging in towards Kyler with the peak, and he's eventually got the kill. That's the noisy dismount coming in from Madden off Tetris. Couldn't stack them up quick enough, and Kylar swings out from Underwood, so ends up two players. They seem to have shaken off a few of those nerves, but Sampaius comes back to claim the life of Diha. Yeah, that's an easy one to get back. Another, a little bit of aggression from Diha and Goofy. And here's the disaster. Not only is it two kills, but it's opened up the entire B-bomb site. That is all the defenders. And now Enz is going to have to spread across the map. They're going to have to close that gap, but they don't quite know where the commitment's coming. Still nervous about middle, but all their resources are in the wrong place. It's going to take some time still for Falcons to get to that bomb site, so maybe Glaive can find himself in an impact full position timing on this is spectacular for glaive it absolutely is this maneuver could eradicate this round for falcons as glaive gets in behind them good night magisk and some pious sprints he now knows he's alone in this one but he's got time with the all he's got time to get this bomb plan and be in position to pick off those rotations and he's unfazed by the big moment he's unfazed by the stage glaive's going for a reposition or he's coming back Puts that bomb down, locks it in inside of the site, now detected, searches for Hades, who he replaced so long ago. He's got the scope ready, waiting for that swing, but Hades, he eventually goes around and Sampaius connects it. Now looking for a follow-up, but he's being pushed from two sides and they overrun him. The Spanish Alper is no more and Ants do find their second in a row. Second in a row, a tough foot round as well. Timeout is called by Falcons. That's Zonic saying he doesn't want any of them to come back into this game. He doesn't want them to have any kind of momentum whatsoever. So puts to stop to it as fast as possible. I will attempt to coming out of the timeout. Back-to-back -back rounds run at the B bomb site. And how many can Ents claw back to give them a chance in the second half? That is the question. How much can Ents bring back? And Diha up through middle. It's Boros down first. So that's the start that Ents would like. But now Hades, he's tested towards CT because Falcons have pounced out of the ramp already. Two players at Tetris. Glaive cannot afford to swing into the orb. So he changes his position. He comes out. He's on the bottom level of those stairs. And some Pius goes for the peak, but it's a missed shot and it's chaos. His players are peeking with nades in hand. But no kill yet for Glaive. He knows they're getting closer. He knows he's got a fight in front of him, but the Danish in-game leader cannot hold. Madden breaks through him. What a tight angle for Madden. That extended to the flank. Oh, Goofy's here already. Double dink. Didn't realize it. Sun Pius turns, but it don't matter. Goofy's arrived to the big stage. He really has some of the most impactful moments. So far, down. And Dia dances with death. Goofy took a while to get into this. He took a moment to get comfortable with that big round in the B-bomb site, and he has the confidence to flank. He has the confidence to wrap around the back. And Diha with the lovely lineup. 
Yeah, we take that one. Well, all that money that had been built up for Falcons a couple rounds ago is disappearing. This is the last buy, and then they'll start to really struggle. Entz is almost there. They've almost broken through. And Glaive applies pressure towards the ramp. But it's smoked out now. The CTs will hold it without losing that first player. It's important that Entz do not suffer the opening disadvantage, and Boros is burning away. Has to use the smoke to stay alive here. That's going A. It's going A this whole time. They might even come through the smoke on slope. No one's present inside the no box. looking at it. When they rotate back, they're going to be in for a world of hurt. Oh, this could be absolutely devastating for Ants if they're not in the position to deal with this play up towards them. Hades has to strike. He does, but it's an instant peak. Not ready for Madden to be so close already. Falcons have significant control of this A-bomb site. It's going to be a retake. And Diaz so low, he's got to work up some courage to get aggressive. He can't stop the plant whatsoever. It's Sun Pius close up. He wants a challenge. There it is. Oh. There's the kill on Dia. It's a good shot. He'll drop back. Looking out towards the connector. No love loss for Sun Pius. He doesn't care. He gets a kill on CT, flicks back to the connector. And now it's Falcons up a player in this post plant. And Ants aren't getting closer. Eventually, they use their final pieces of utility. It's Kylar and Goofy. Two of the most inexperienced players that will be in the playoffs, and they realize they can't win this one. They've got to back away. They've got to get out of there. And Falcons will move through to eight rounds as we head into the last round of this half. Nice steal away at the end for Goofy. And he'll get that up for Hades. That's actually massive. They don't have a whole lot of money. That up has been an instrumental tool. That round, Falcons neutralize it, not with utility, but just a solid trade game. If he's going to stand in the open and get our player in Palace, we're going to be jumping over the top and chasing it down because he's got nowhere to go. Good opening trade from Falcons as they break into the bomb site, and then some Pius takes over. Oh, such a nice shot to actually select one target. Sometimes you can be overwhelmed as the offer there, and the shot will go between the wickets. But this time connecting. This A bomb site has been a weakness this entire half, and they're coming through the volley again. This time, Clay oh. is blind. And once again, free bomb site set up for the retake, boys. And Martin gets to the back of oh, triple. In fact, he continues his push. He gets in towards CT, and he could be the devastating factor here. Pushing forward to Falcon's ninth round, but it's a big shot from Clay. Ents looking to stay in this half and get four out of it. And it's still so difficult. That shot will help. Big kill from Kylar. But there's a trade each and every time. Each and every time the kill comes out for Ents. This time Hades has got it, and he's got it clean. Kylar adds in. And just magic left towards the ramp. He'll hold his position inside of the peak. It's a big one on Kylar. That deep juice being stuck, and Hades will bring him down. Ents make a half of it. They come back in, and this matchup is still up for debate.
It took him a while to get settled on the big stage under the bright lights, but Entz arrived near the end of the half. They carved themselves out four rounds. They carved themselves out a little bit of hope, a prayer that they could come back in this second half. They're going to switch over to the attacking side of Mirage, and they're going to put those hopes in their four-time major winning in-game leader, Glaive, is going to direct the troops and do a comeback against Falcons defending against it. Now Glaive will steer this ship. And head towards the A-bomb site. Similar positions taken as Falcons running their T-side pistol. Dihar's about to have a fight in Palace up against his former Auburn. He's got eyes on him, but the timing is he steps on back. Some Pius looking to swing around that pillar. And it's such an awkward fight. All the meantime, it's Ents making their way through the ramp. They're getting into this bomb site, and Dihar's just keeping them distracted, but the fight is going down in jungle. A couple of kills for Madden. And Ents this time, if whole, well, they've fallen apart on the T side. It's a big hole from Falcons. It's completely different than what we've seen in that first half, and that's nine to four, cleaned up. You said you said uh, Diaz keeping Sun Pius distracted. I think it's the other way around. Sun Pius holding Diaz out from being involved in that hit whatsoever. While well, all of his teammates are getting obliterated, they could have used that second player or that other player fighting from Palace, and Sun Pius just has him frozen there the whole round. A hit goes nowhere, and that hole gets a little bit deeper for Entz, down five. Oh, they're down to just Glocks and a P250 because there was no bomb plant found. And this has got to be a mega comeback, but it is still only the first map of this series. It's a best of three. Falcons have picked him to Mirage. This is their decision to take the battle to here. And so far, it has been very good for them. It gets even better for some pies. He mows them down at Palace, finally brought down by that Glock. Took a little bit more pepper than he would have liked, but eventually Hades takes it. And a big headshot on the P250. It'll not be bad to a couple of kills then. That's a fantastic triple kill for Sun Pius, not least of which it means he gets the AWP in this next round if he wants it. This first gun round, 6200. That's a huge weapon to have out on the field of play and can be a massive danger to Ents as they try and begin this comeback. They need to take that first step forward. Doing it with AK-47s, plenty of nades, plenty of utility. But again, that AWP on the other side of the map can dictate a lot. Yeah, referees come in. Tech issue again here for Rents. They'll feel the energy if they win this gun round. They've got to do it the hard way. The T side come back, 10-4 down. It's going to be a big test, and as well. I mean, Diha's going to be over in Palace. He'll be on the extremity. Kyler's going to be on the extremity at the B-Halls. The interesting thing is those two players provide a lot of opening kills for the end squad. The other three players are going to be working map control in middle. Now, Falcons in the first half found a weak point in the defense early, that A bomb site. They overran it at will. They found it early. They kept coming back to it, kept leaning on it, kept causing it to break round after round. Ents need to find a similar weakness. They need to find a similar hole that they can exploit to close the gap in this scoreboard. Smoke out to window instantly. Boris looks to fight early on. He'll spam a full magazine down to top mid because he knows he's got his teammate Madden there with him. He's trying to provide support, and Madden is making a mess of them top mid. Good trade back from Hades, needed that one to go their way. Yeah, but nobody could swing out on the initial contact from Goofy, so that's a brilliant double kill from Madden. He got them started in the first half in the first few rounds. Oh, he's done it again here. Timing for Boros just at that window smoke. He sensed a chance. He nearly walks away with another kill for the Falcons, but that missed opportunity keeps sense in this round. Probably until this point, though, because that kill for Magisk has really made this T-side round now very difficult. They've, they've denied everything Evans have wanted to do with the initial salvo of utility, and now there's really nothing left, just flashbangs. It's going to be clear lines of sight. There's no smokes to block anything off, so massive challenge. And all of Falcons is going to be here immediately. Three players going to come through market. Right, Kylar uh, just at the window. He knows the snap. He's down below him, and he'll take that headshot, but in holding himself in that fight has brought him down to low HP, and he's cleaned up by some pious. 11 to 4 now for Falcons. You can just see how honed in they are when they walk out onto the big game stage. 
He came through, the pistol was clean, every decisive round just looks so composed. I mean, so much of this has been built up, the experience of individual players on Falcons versus the inexperience of ENDS players. Uh, and if you look at Falcons, who's performing well? It's, it's Magisk, who's got four majors, who's been having a pro career forever at the top. Number 17 best player of 2023. And I know Snappy thinks that's underrated. Sun Pius, Madden, these guys have stage experience built up in the ENDS jersey before they swapped over to Falcons. And these are the guys delivering round after round for Falcons. Ready to execute. Ants realize they've got a battle with everything they've got, and it might not be much here. But this team have shown that they can be tenacious and fight against those odds. And here comes that utility. Smoke out towards Magisk. He's held behind it. And sprinting towards the bomb site, trying to allow that plant to come in. Utility disrupts the smokes. Boros looking for a kill through them. Still, Ants have got no closer to putting that bomb down until this point. Wave punching those digits through, but it's denied. Boros lands those shots right through the smoke, and Madden's got the death sentence. He's got the knockout blow here. He's inside the ramp, making that flank, and it's a double lineup. Pulls out the pistol, and Hades brings him out of the round. It's got to be a miraculous clutch here for Hades. He's got a second headshot, but that swing from CT was too quick to handle. And all smiles from Zonic as his team is in perfect position to close out this first map. They're going to have eight opportunities to do it with a 12 to 4 lead. Ants hasn't really been able to get started here on Mirage. This Falcons team has grown throughout this tournament. And at least here on this first map, they're looking too hot to handle for Ents. Searching for a way to survive map point here on Mirage. Team Falcons, everything you could want. The AWP, the M4s. And for Ants, the full purchase as they get their last stand here on map one of this quarterfinal. It's a good start. Goofy and Hades come in with a couple. And Hades will sprint on into that B bomb side. He realizes he's got a chance with a missed shot. He's not able to connect it onto Madden. And that could be a problem here because if you let this man stay alive in this kind of form, 17 and 9, well, he could break you apart. That smoke play is perfect, though. And Hades gets rid of him. They needed that. They needed Hades to step up and hold down the fort because the bomb was dropped way back towards T spawn. So he had to be a force to be reckoned with and not allow Falcons to get a foothold in before the bomb was brought over. Magisk and Sun Pius, happy to save. Keep those weapons at hand. So Entz will get on the board for the first time in this second half. They'll bring it up to five. Some pie slings back into Palace just to save that all, but here's Hades taking matters into his own hands. It's a good shot up on that jumping player, Snappy, and then this play, it works out perfectly. He just barely spotted him yeah, as well. Yeah, that's actually incredible one from his POV. Yeah, Madden, a whole lot. Madden was almost into safety, and that could have been an absolute nightmare. goes off. Ents is on the board. They need seven more. We've seen some incredible comebacks on this stage over the years. This would be something special. It's Sonic to take a timeout. Yeah, they've got the timeouts available. Still left over to let the greatest coach have his say. Kubin on the mic as well. He's got to have one hell of a rallying speech at this point. Just try and get them in round by round. The nice thing about Cuban as a coach over on Ents, him and Glaive very much enjoy working together early on in this Ents lineup. He's had a lot of help for Glaive as they try and put a playbook together to start things out, a good approach that they're on the same page to get this team underway. It's a work in progress. And right now we're seeing the bumpy road of the Ents team. Utility set up in mid. Madden going for that common peak over the top window smoke. And just getting advantage. Blowing a little gap in the smoke with the ammunition, with the bullets, and finding absolutely nothing. So be able to call out to his team that no one is streaming out top mid. DL wants that duel, but it comes from a different location. Boro shuts him down emphatically. Yeah, and Falcons are now one step closer to closing out this first map. Moments away. 
from silencing Ents in their opening map of the quarterfinals. They're gonna lead on Hades, Hades again. A shot. He's down. Madden locks that kill through. Glaive is trying to come through Palace, and they tried to lean on a couple of these players, but none of them strong enough at this moment in time. So Pius peers back into the apartments. It's Kylo to create a bit of space, but the problem here is the bomb is all the way at top middle. So Goofy must stand tall, and he only manages one. 55 seconds left. Falcons will soon find that bomb as Boros moves deeper and deeper around the corner, putting Kylar into a 1v3 that just seems impossible at the 45 second mark of this round. Yeah, Snappy just spotted it. He'd have to hurry up. He's checking every single corner. This one needs to be clean. Wrong way he's looking. And Boros is going to end it. That's Mirage. First map goes to Falcons. Ends a disappointing start to these quarterfinals for them in front of the home crowd. But they have to have a conversation and settle down with the energy in the room and bring it back on map two. What you read, not all words are the same Not everything you say, you can't trust anyway All the thieves dressed as sheep tell you they know the way So bite the hand that feeds you to the wolves as prey on the page now they're pleading on the fifth and last mistake but i know that dirty secrets that can keep us out the keys to the gate only open for the pawns who sell their souls just to play i don't keep up with the fake Falcons on a mission to turn this arena into a library. And so far, that plan going perfectly on their pick of Mirage. A deafening silence falling upon this crowd as Falcons dissect Ents 13 to 5, Matthew, on home soil. Yeah, listen, uh, we talked about the importance of having a good start for Ents to embrace this energy, to get momentum going. This was the polar opposite of whatever you could hope for if you're rooting for the home crowd hero. That's just as harsh a truth as it is. Falcon started the game the best of way, individually put Falcon uh, put ends in the bin for the first six rounds, barely a game, barely intense situations. Uh, commiserations to ends trying to fight back, but I, I have to give it to Snappy. He knew exactly how to start this game. Yeah, when we looked at that er earlier on that Ents just has not a good CT side win rate and bad conversion as well. It's like they need to have the first four, five, six rounds in the bag for them to be able to have a chance. And we've seen this all throughout the entire time through play-ins, through the group stages. It's like they either win by a large margin because they have that four, five, six round lead going into each half, or they just get stomped. 
13 to 4, 13 to 5, 13 to 6. You want to look at just one of a litany of examples that uh, Falcons posted on their T-side, Matthew? Yeah, well, listen, uh, we might as well just use this beautiful piece of technology that we have here at the Tedis Trader. Uh, I would like to show you guys uh, round 7. So you can see the scoreline as well. You see there's going to be a little bit of an aggression coming in from the side of end stop mid. And this is where this is almost cruel. If you're an ends fan and if you're Falcons, you're fully in control. You have some pies that's top mid waiting for that map control. You have uh, an entirety of the map that's been taken by Falcons and you can see here. The smoke, the timing hits perfectly. Goofy finds death. Glaive stays towards top middle, tries his very best, but the trade game from Falcon is pretty, pretty strong here. Uh, Snappy finds Glaive. You could, you, this should be an end round, basically, and it gets a little complicated. They overpeak slightly. Sun Pius has a double kill here. It's very important. There's that miss from Hades here. That is extremely rough. Three and six at the very time he did come up uh, to life, but this was a really heartbreaking round in my book because the intensity and the IDs are good. You're down 0-6, so what you do, you try and retake control. You be a little bit out there, you push, you aggress, you try to be disruptive. And then not only do you find that first death through the smoke, but then I feel like there was a way for Hens to close the round. And because you're 06, you, you're not exactly clear on when should I fight, when should I not, should we play with each other's teammate. The team plays a little bit, uh, it comes undone in these moments, and that was really hard to see. But that's like a perfect like example of how Ens loses these rounds. You know, Goofy, all he has to do is wait one second before he starts to cross after the smoke pops. You know if someone's posted up on you, boom, they're going to take a shot as soon as that smoke blooms. You just wait a second, you have 20 seconds to work with mm. and then it's just you lose a death there and then going on you you get the trade kills at underpass but then what happens after that it's just like you're bleeding out one at a time one person peeking at a time and then you never really get to stabilize you never do a team fight together you're not like double peeking or triple peeking it's always just like one guy goes up oh oops i didn't get the kill okay whose turn's next and then it's like next person goes up and it's just like lemmings they just go one at a time and just and unfortunately, that, that's a little bit what we mean by, you know, momentum-based and, and being in flow state, not making these kinds of mistakes, whereas on the other side, you get a little confused on what you're supposed to do or not, because let's just imagine, let's play the game of ends would be 6-0 in the lead, as I show you this round, these mistakes wouldn't happen. You wouldn't see someone pick before the smoke, you wouldn't see a 3v2 thrown away, you wouldn't see Hades miss that AWP shot from City Spawn, but that's part of the game. When you're in that nervousness moment, when you don't, when you feel like the game is too fast for you, you make these mistakes. Falcon's very good at punishing them. Well, that's part of the way that Falcons plays though, they, it's not like they do anything crazy. Everything they do is really simple and it's just like, okay, we're going to do the simple map control into simple exec. We're straight up, let's do simple exec. And they're going really hard, really fast, but all they're doing really is they're thriving in the chaos that they create. And what they were able to do was they were able to tell ends, hey, we're going to play this style, this game, and it, you either have to match styles with us or we're just going to run over you. And that's what Falcons does really well is that they have all the individually skilled players that once they get into the three versus threes, the two versus twos, they're going to convert the rounds really well. So it's all about that opening mm. engagement. And Ents needs to be able to shut these guys down on the opening and engagement. And if they don't, and if they lose like the bomb site, if they lose the first pick or two, then that's when everything's going to spiral out of control. I was almost fooled into thinking, you know, the later stages of that, that, that first half, you know, Ents stringing a few rounds back to back. I was like, okay, maybe they found their footing. Maybe they're feeling more comfortable. And then we come on to Falcon CT side. And then round 15 happens, Matthew. What's the story there? Yeah, it's a disruptive counter strike that, that Josh is talking about that we can show you guys at home a little bit. Simple CS, in your face CS, and being able to handle these trays and handle that mid round a little bit better. I showed you ends being aggressive towards top mid and here you're gonna have an example of Falcons doing it but slightly different with Madden here waiting. Here that could have been an opportunity for Goofy but he gets found and it's just a trade game. Double kit for Madden and as Glaive is trying to sort of take space to punish you'll see timing's being taken by ends and it's, it's, a, it's a 4v3 that Falcons know how to handle. Yeah and again it's bringing me back to my point originally that this is they're bleeding out they're missing their duels and then there's nobody there to trade them and it's just like one by one by one, they just fall apart and they don't really get to stabilize at all because they're not together and they're just not hitting their shots. And it sounds really like boiled down, but that's what Counter-Strike gets down to in the nitty gritty. At the end of the day, you need to be able to hit your shots in yeah. some situations. And another story that maybe goes a little bit underrated here is that Mirage's DNA has never really been in, synch in synchrony with Glaive, right? Yeah. It's just, it's a fact. It's not exactly a map that I feel like he's probably the most comfortable on individually, but also in terms of like mid-round calls, finding out solutions and whatnot. Snappy was on top of things uh, this last round as well. The rotation from Falcons, it is such a checkmate to have, you're in a 4v2 situation, you have one CD that's on the B side and you have three people coming in market. Uh, it's basically telling your, your opponents, I know what you're doing. I have figured you out. I'm one step ahead of you. And this was the story that we saw here. I got a question for you. Was it, was it um, Ents that banned out Ancient? 
from Falcons because if that's the case, it was. Yes, yeah, it, it was, was. because they both floated Inferno. They both floated Inferno, so it's just like okay, it's their normal perma ban. Why not ban out Mirage there? Because they showed Ancient the entire way through, right? Mm. And was th that's where they got a lot of their big wins. That's how they qualified for the group stage. So why leave Mirage in there? over Ancient, a map that they're comfortable on. Yes, they know that Falcons are going to pick it, but we have Glaive, on the other hand, who's really good at the game plans and the prep and the anti strating it's, it's a question. I mean, we might have to ask them whenever we get the chance in the yeah, interview yeah. as well, if this was a case of the entire team probably telling the Glaive, like, listen, we, we feel all right on Mirage. We can do it. Like, it's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. uh, the playbook from Falcons is limited because, as you were saying, if you're, if you're watching Falcons, you're preparing for Mirage. You know that they are strong people and individuals, but it's not like the playbook is going to completely catch you off guard and it's like revolutionize the way you play Mirage. You might be tricked into thinking, nah, man, we got this. Like, they do map control. They're trying to pick us. It's going to be fine. Obviously, uh, in hindsight, huge mistake, but this might have been the thought process here. So, yeah, who was one of the hottest individuals when we're talking about that Mirage map? That was, of course, Madden. Uh, talk about a nice little bit of sweet revenge versus your old core, or your old organization, rather, of that Ent squad. He started off so hot. What was it, like, round three? He was up, like, seven to one. It was ridiculous how well this man started the map. Yeah, it did him absolutely dirty. Although you say revenge, like, he left. Like, yeah. What was he got revenge yeah, to do? Yeah, true. Yeah, maybe that was. It's around. like insult to injury. It's like, hey, guys, by the way, we're, <laughs> we're just going to go to the different team. And when I have the chance, I'm going to stomp on you. Yeah, that was a great start for Madden. He pushed his advantage all the way through. It was a really good start for Falcons and Madden specifically. But um, we're going to be going into overpass. Yeah. yeah. I'm wondering, OK, so when you're Ents and you have a Mirage pick and you're you know, I think the, the win against G2 maybe set them up for failure here in a sense because it's possible. When I watched that game back, they did not, not look like they were strong on Mirage. Mm. It looked like they kind of like uh, squeaked out a win. They didn't really deserve it. They they get really slowed down in their T sides when they're moving around the map and they're trying to regroup. It's like, okay, you need to be hitting in the next like five to 10 seconds here, but then it'll take 15 to 20 seconds. And they'll always have a person at a position. Like for example, Goofy's gonna be like making his way up catwalk going a B and then the rest of his team's like grouping up a B and you know, a team like Falcons could just swing out mid and just punish that. So I'm wondering when they go into this next map, they better have like a better game plan. And obviously uh, Overpass is one of those maps where you have a lot of game plans and you have a lot of set plays, but it's also a time for, you know, you're starting on the T side. It's your map pick. The enemy gets to pick CT side. And yeah. then yeah. they get to have Sun Pius who's activated. And we are talking in the earlier, like in the pregame, Hades versus Sun Pius, who's going to show up. Hades wasn't showing up, but Sun Pius was. So now you have Sun Pius, then you get Majisk getting to walk around and do whatever he wants to do. You, you get these players to move around in the mid-rounds and do timing walk pushes. So what's going to happen in these situations? I mean, you, you talk about timing pushes. I, my fear is that Falcons force ends to play map control and slow. Mm. And this is where I think things are going to get real complicated because Overpass can be an extremely uh, tenuous map, tedious to play. Like, oh, okay, this is how many utilities we need to take this map control, and this is the timing we have to do it. And this is very challenging. If you are ends, you're looking for easy round, fast rounds early in the game. So that opens up the doors, tactically speaking. Hey, you hit them with a, maybe a pop, a monster pop at some point, or a quick B rush, just, just to make sure that you have these easy rounds that relax you a little bit. And when you have financial dominance, when you are in a good position, you can afford to take map control a little bit easier, a little bit faster, spread your legs a little bit. Because if, if they have to play slow, I think Falcons got them. Well, let's get some thoughts courtesy of the Ents camp coming into their map pick of a pass. So just a chat with uh, Kuban there. I asked, did it take you a while to get into the swing of things? It would be understandable right here in the Spodek. And he said, yeah. And he said, I don't know about the headset or the audio situation, but they seem to have advantages or are able to play with it better. And that, of course, comes down probably to experience in terms of playing on the stage. So a lot to do with the sound there and the sound cues specifically. Asked about Overpass. And uh, he said, I don't think they expected Overpass. So I'm pretty confident on that map that we will bring it to a third. Okay, but question is, Matthew, how confident are you for Ents being able to bounce back on their unexpected, albeit Matt Pick? Oh man, I wish I was more confident than what I currently am. This, this was such a dire, straight, one-sided map. I, I have my doubts, but I feel like if I was to turn my back on Ents now, it would be just too cruel. So I, got, I gotta believe that we're looking at map three. Well, the crowd certainly will be behind them every single step of the way, but this might be last chance saloon for Ents. Their Matt Pick of Overpass awaits on the other side of this break.
for the playoffs. They qualify for the Spodek. The first Polish squad inside the Spodek in eight years since 2016. Enz is going to carry on the legacy. Hard few minutes after the match because I was in shock a bit, but we did it. I'm getting emotional in these big moments. I don't think before the games I really understood how much it actually meant to them. Getting some tears in their eyes, it kind of melts my heart a bit. Beating all these good teams, being like a fresh team as well, it has been insane. You know? It's like a dream come true to play in Spada. It has been pretty crazy uh, with this run we have made here in Katowice. Really surprised, but also really happy. I didn't expect us to qualify to Spodek, but I was expecting us at least to go through the playing stage. We didn't really have that much time to prepare. Being with Kuben, like as a coach, not only like a great dude, but he has like a big brain for CS, and he has like a really great approach to players. I expected Glaive to have like a lot of ego. This guy won everything, you know, and he's still like pretty humble, like just tries to make everyone feel comfortable, like in their roles, in the position. They're really good guys and I like to play with them and I think it's only getting better from here. I think he understood how important it is for us, like as Polish people, but then I think it was also really important to him. He has a lot to prove as well. The highlight for me personally was probably beating Astralis. No! It's actually also really exciting to go and play in front of a crowd again, especially with having all the Polish guys next to me and uh, knowing that the crowd will be cheering for not only them, but also for me. I think it's almost going to be like playing in Copenhagen uh, when I was in Astralis. My first IEM when I came to watch, it was the one that Virtus Pro won, it was exactly like 10 years ago. Everything started with this. For me, Katowice is better than the major or any other place. Thank you for all the kibice and I hope that we will be able to do it and that we will take this spot. Polska Góra! Traded Goofy in a one on one. Oh, what a shot! Oh. Goofy! It's time for the DHL drop. Whether you are in the arena or watching from home, you can participate in the DHL Drop. Follow the steps for a chance to win amazing prizes. Hold up the DHL Drop sign or type exclamation point DHL Drop on the chat to enter. said that it is the surprise pick the one falcons couldn't have expected well we better hope that this is going to be one hell of a show and one hell of a turnaround for men's if they are to get back into this series those surprises can backfire though the word of caution i mean they haven't played it yet so yeah falcons doesn't know what you're going to bring out on the map they've never seen you play it but equally you've never tested how you want to play it in an environment quite like this Enz trying to come back into this series and force a third map or be eliminated early from IEM Katowice in the quarterfinals. They're going to be starting on the offensive side of Overpass, attacking into Team Falcons defense starting on the CT side. And Pistol Round is underway. Two sets of utility on Glaive and Goofy. Smoke and flash. Everyone headed to the B bomb site, and that's a quick smoke. This is going to be fast paced. And not a single player buying anything other than Kevlar here for Falcons. They are confident in this pistol, and it's a good headshot. It's Kyle Arkell, and that's the first opening here for Falcons. They have been dominant on pistol rounds all day long, and it doesn't look like that story is going to change. Every headshot, not a chance for Enz. Man, that looks entirely like Falcons knew what they were going to do the whole time. A double push in towards short, a boost up as well. That pistol round gets obliterated. 
You really wanted to see a pistol round win for Ents if they are to get that energy flowing through them coming into a mental reset, but to come back in and just get clotheslined yet again. It's got to be so tough to swallow, and there's no bomb plant. They didn't even get close, so has to be the full eco or a weak force buy into the next round. Three out of three pistol rounds won by Falcons as well. And as we saw in Mirage, I think Ants got dug into a zero to six hole early. They cannot let that happen again. That's, this T side of overpass can feel so restrictive and so difficult if you go down early. That first gun round better be strong, but Ents is going to buy up here, much like we saw in Mirage as well. Tech 9s are out, Mac 10s are out, so Ents not willing to give up this second round without a fight. And the commitment now started by B bomb site, utility flying on in. It's going to be a quick call for Ents, and it's worked out early. Boss is removed. Snappy turned to step up with the SMG. And he's so often so good with that weapon, and he gets two out of it. Again, though, it's Madden looking to unravel it again. He is their absolute nightmare. Today, Madden is not missing. And he's climbing over the top of Goofy. One quick kill as that Mac 10 rattles into the belly. And he'll move closer. He knows he's got time as well. Plenty of time, in fact, here for Goofy. And Magix brings him down. Goofy's trying to get close up for the Tech-9 to be effective against that SMG, and Magis just isn't going to give him the space to work with. Constant peaks, constant trades, and once again, it's Madden. He was so good on map one, Madden. Hit so much impact and got Falcon started on the right foot in the first four or five rounds of the game, and he continues it here. Good defensive stand as it's crumbling around him, and Enz can't make the force by work. They're going for it again as well. They've just bought up three rounds to start this out. Forced all the way into it. Mac 10, couple of Galils. They're just trying to get into the series at all. Trying to get some kills going. You're laying your economy on the line with a buy like this. Let's hope it pans out for Ents. This is a game plan they come in with. Yeah, it's a real tough decision to make, but the pace off for Ents. It could open up this half for them early doors. Hades going around that corner, missed shot. Not going to connect on to Magisk, who drops back position at A. Scout's been spotted on the map, though, so Magisk is going to call that out. This is a buy round. And now they're going to set up defense. They're going to bring a third player over. Smoke is going to delay things as well. No pressure at the B bomb site. Full control of short, and that's a nice double swing. Entry for Glaive, but they need more. Yeah, they need a lot more where that came from. And oh, it's awkward for Glaive, but at least they've done some damage to Madden on the defense. Supply is placed behind the truck, but here's Snappy yet again in behind him, and Goofy topples. On the flank, 50 seconds left. There's still time to stay composed, but the problem is Falcons' CT side has sandwiched these edge players into this position, and Sobias gets hungry for information. He moves around that corner, and now Boros is the second player up through Khan. And Deha is looking for a big deed from Deha. And that gives Ents the player up in this round. And a few steps away from confirming it in the final 30 seconds. Hades goes around this corner. Oh, we needed that one instant, but it doesn't happen. Madden's dropped to one health. Will that come back to bite them? It won't. Ends his first bite, pays off, and they look to try and get into this first half. Now you get a bit of the reward side of things. Ends getting started way earlier than Mirage, and it's Team Falcons whose economy is in a rough situation. They'll force bite as well, jockeying these two teams for economic control. And now they've given them something to support, but it's only one. It's only the start. There's got to be plenty more of this on the T side. And it's very hard fought. This is a difficult round to win. It could have gone the other direction three or four different ways. And that's the question for a team like Ents. Do they have the protocols? Do they have the experience together to be able to get out of the tough situations when Falcons executes these flanks up connector? Well, has broken Falcons down to a force buy of their own. Ents have to withstand this to tie up this game. And once you do that, you force Falcons down to an eco. And you feel like you've got that start that you want. Steps on the stairs being heard. Yeah, this is going to be called over. This is all good for Ents. I mean, they're, they're getting a lot of space for free just because there's not the weaponry, not the utility to fight for it. If you're Falcons, you have to play deep into the bomb site. So Ents is going to be happy. They're not happy about the missed smoke, but they're going to be happy to progress and take control of bathrooms. And start investigating and probing this A-bomb site. Yeah, the investigation is essential, but I don't know if they're going to be happy if they commit, because four players over here for Falcons on that defense, and Madden's getting a little angsty. He wants to move forward. It's because they have so many bodies there. He doesn't shy away from being aggressive and get the information. Now it's going to have to pull some back. They did shift and rotate to the B-bomb site, so Falcons starting to get pulled in multiple directions. But at the moment, standing pat, defending the B-site with four players. Uh -huh. 
Nash is getting boosted up, though. This could be devastating for Dihan. Oh, the missed shot. Dihan turns back, but neither of the players able to land on shot. It's going to be 28 seconds left. It's Enz making their way back in for this final play towards the top bomb site. Time's an issue. And Snappy once again tries to get that flank going. Here's Magis. Deagle up from the stairway. His teammates with him, but not enough done. And Magis cannot connect. So it's all about the flank from Snappy. And now Hades knows he's got that one pinned. Boris and some pious left in a 2v4. And it is on point awaited. Some pious has to run away. And this force bite does not work out for Falcons. And have tied up the game. Time started to be an ally of Falcons. They just couldn't get the kills to slow that hit down properly. A little bit of a team kill right at the end of the day. Glaive saying, you better do what I ask next time. Yeah, it's a little slap on the wrist. Two to two. And this scout. It's not oh, worth an AK. And I don't even know if it's going to stay here, though. Hades hunting it down. Low HP could kill. Takes everything from Falcons. And Ents finally in the series have a chance to build momentum. And the money, like we said, is gone from Falcons. So where do Ents start to go with this one? This could be an incredible comeback if they can get a strong T side. I mean, Josh Steele was saying on the desk before the game started, you know, he highlighted the issues of the CT side. That came to pass on Mirage. They get a T side start this time. This is where Glaive can control it. This is where he can call some of these more inexperienced players into solo positions and get them comfy. More importantly, with one map of play under your belt, this is where those young players just get to understand exactly what kind of an environment they're playing with. We'll see throughout this map of overpass if they look more comfortable than they did on Mirage. Kuban was saying too, Shock's just there during the break between maps that Falcons seem to be playing with the sound a lot better than Ants do at the moment. And they know all the tricks. Yeah, it's been put down to experience. Jiha creeping out through Monster. They soon realize there is not much presence inside of this B bomb side. Hades is going to have a couple of pesky pistols running him down with the AK holds. And Boros is there around the corner. Hades has no problem in dealing with those default guns. Diaz push forward, looking to take down his former in-game leader. Not a fair fight. Diaz will absolutely not care about that. Three to two. Ents are in the lead. And like you said, a chance for Glaive to start having some impact with his calling. There's some runway here for Ents. They've got money built up. A couple of rounds that Glaive can play with before they'd have to save. And the crowd loving it. A narrow lead, three to two. Double Mac 10 for Dihot and Kylar. See if that creates a fast play for Dihot. He attempts it through Monster. He's taking damage. He's been bombarded and he's been removed. So that initial risk to try and get through Monster does not work out for Enz. I think Snappy had to have known that was coming. He knows there's a couple of MAC-10s on the map that weren't taken away in the previous round, and he's watching for plays like that, spamming for plays like that, and puts it down before it can begin. And he's a master of plays like that, too. He's exactly in his wheelhouse. And Enz are looking to transition their focus instead towards the bathrooms. Utility drops in behind some pious. That smoke will be so large that he feels uncomfortable maintaining the same position. And Magisk is forced into a fight alone, and he will lose it against Goofy. But some pious has been so good around these smokes, but not this time. Not against Goofy. That smoke goes almost inviting that play from some pious, and Ents was ready for it. And now the long peak, well constructed, well put together, and Ents controls the map. And here's a play forward into Glaive, and he waited. He waited around that corner, and Snappy offers up a free kill. It's a fantastic run from Ents. It's the best counter strike we've seen from them yet. And if they can start to win rounds, if they can start to build momentum in this T half, they'll start to feel the advantage of the crowd. Falcons did a fantastic job at neutralizing that threat in the first map. Can't keep it down forever. Hades 8 and 2 to start this map. Kyler 6 and 3 leading the way for Ents. They got to set up for another anti force buy. They know they're up against pistols. Molotov towards Magis. Key drops back away. Yeah, they'll have heard that burn. And Boros moves through short. Some, some control, some risks being taken here for Falcons. But look at this peak from Kyler. That's a confident maneuver. Doesn't matter who's in an Ents jersey, those Mac 10s going to be impactful. Diha investigating. 
Goofy ready to join with him and pressure short. There is a push here. But Ents know there's no reason to take that and step into that danger just yet. Pius bides his time at divider, but his time looked like it was about to be cut short, but Kylo didn't extend around the corner, and Sampaius is allowed to retreat. He'll get down no stairway. There's a player in bathrooms. Yeah, we switch over to Madden. He's still chilling there, so if anyone tries to join up with Kylo, they could be in for a world of hurt. They might expect this is clear based off his progress, and he's starting to investigate the eight bomb site, so this could be... If he's not going to try and force his way through CT spawn to the B bomb site to backstab, there's some danger in this round for Ents. Yeah, there's a trap light. Let's we'll see if they will come Spotted. in some light. Goofy knows that Snappy's in that corner, and he's waiting for it, but Snappy doesn't care. He peeks up, rips the head off Goofy, and now the in-game leader's coming back in with his dig. In from short, you look to boost his teammate up for a better position to look down inside of the site, and you said there's danger in this round, and Madden is making the most of it. Frustrating here for Ents. Goofy thought he had to kill the Quib. He needs to line them up, and it's a double before death. And Madden's changed his position up. Heaven wrap from Sampaius is detected. And we know how good Madden was on map one. But this round, it's not working to a ball. He does not have the kit, the utility, or the health. And Madden will retreat away. He will disengage as Ents push forward to five. It's a nice round from Falcons, though. Making that difficult, three kills, chipping away just a little bit at the economy. That trap almost pans out. It looked like Ents, there's a world in which they wander into it. It's not a round that fills you full of confidence, that's for sure. Could have been a different story if the kill on Snappy comes in on the first attempt. There's that Mac-10 flying around that corner. But this is where the game now gets difficult again for Ents. They're going up against that Falcons economy. It's finally back. They've got enough money to get the off balance some pious. They've got the weapons out in play alongside the utility. And Ants are gonna have to play again with them. Well, they don't have to, but they're deciding to play with a MAC-10 again. You will see what Kyler does with that. Can be very aggressive and very fast. Timeout taken from Team Falcons. Zonic wants a word, which allows Cuban to get involved in the conversation. And as it comes to a close, we'll see what Ents can bring out with. Their first gun round was masterful. It was beautiful. It absolutely demolished the defense. How many more of those does Glaive have prepared? And Ents, they break them again here. They win this round. They can start to enjoy this moment. Smoke goes deep into middle. Hades sets his spot up in connector. We're not seeing yet where that MAC-10 wants to go. It's into the con, but not starting any fights just yet. Oh, cheeky damage done to Dia. Kyler with that MAC-10 is brought very low, so they wanted to use it aggressively to take control of Khan. And with only 12 HP, he's kind of put out of the fight. Yeah, they were hoping that he would win a fight. He would get something out of this MAC-10 and, and drop the player count to at least a 4v4, but... Well, now instead of the aggressor, he kind of turns into the lurker with 12 HP, right? Like, I don't think he's going to be part of any any real map control attempt. But as Ents moves around the map, they'll keep him in positions to make sure nobody can backstab them. He can hide in a corner, wait for somebody to walk by, hope it's not cleared. There is utility coming out to both bomb types simultaneously. So Ents, with the lurk smoke outside of B, but they see that no one's moving through with that, and... Falcons throw one of their own down into the monster tunnel. So this round is stalled out. Nance have used two pieces of utility that really get them nowhere. And 45 seconds left. That lurk smoke, though, the last time they threw it towards the A bomb site, they ended up there. So it's brought a third defender over, which has weakened this bomb site as well. It's a great setup. And now they've just got to hit their shots. And Kylo rounds the corner. Lots of damage done. Boris had to step up. He had to get something for his team. And he makes this round doable for Falcons. 3v3. And the retake, it's a question of whether or not they want to go for it. They don't have the most amount of utility in the world. They don't have a kit on any of these surviving players. But if they're quick about this, if they use their haste, they might be able to get back in time. And Ents looking to try and force a post plant. And with that headshot and the follow-up kill from Hades, it's absolutely going to push Ents forward to six rounds on the T side. I'll take back everything I said about Go, oh boy, a goose to the corner. Again, taken from Falcons. Man, that 12 HP does 
so much work, and it's the utility that sets it up. Gives the MAC-10 just two seconds. You're not going to get a kill. It's so desperate at that range with the MAC-10. But look at the distraction it's, called. it's caused. Both eyes turn towards short. Both eyes turn towards the MAC-10 and allows for some brilliant trading into the bomb site for Entz. This is payback. This is ruthless. And for the first time, Glaive can get loud. They can actually feel the energy within the team and loosen up. Get confident on this stage, and Deha destroys some pious. And Deha keeps moving in. Second kill. Ends have dismantled this round from Falcons. There's nothing to talk about for the CT side. This is more like it. This is the Polish power people were waiting for. They're starting to get a little bit of swagger in their game at the moment. And that confidence, you can see it, how assertively and aggressively they're taking fights here on overpass early on versus Mirage, where it was timid, where it was Hades. cautious. 10 and 2 for Hades coming into this. Questions about how he would perform on the stage. The first map was not pretty for anybody, but this first half of Overpass has been a completely different story. And Boris sees the feet of Deha, and because he took earlier damage, that's all the shots needed. And I think Glaive's gonna has a chance for a nice read here. Yeah, they've taken their time here, Ants, but it still could fall apart. Well, I, I believe in Glaive's mind, he's gonna be thinking, oh, oh no, my god, he's gonna completely fall apart. It was looking so good for Ants, but that kill had to happen. It had to come in. And now it's Boras with his chance to prove he's a stage player. It's his chance to show he can step up in the moments that matter most. And he's inside of water. He'll drop down inside of the site. And with the FAMAS, it's not the best gun for it, but Boras lines them up. Disaster! It could be a nightmare, and it looks like it might be, but Boris still thinks about Monster! And he's looking the wrong way! Shout out to Goofy! 2 HP! And the movement, the mobility, the reposition, Boros did so much damage, he expected Goofy to be scared. But it's Goofy who slides up punishes him from an angle he's not expecting and forces a second timeout out of Falcons. A five round lead for Entz. This overpass pick is looking brilliant from Glaive and Entz. And the frustration of Sampaius gives the crowd something to celebrate. You don't see Sampaias get frustrated like that. He's a calm individual. Something must be going real wrong. Well, he's two and seven, Jason, so that might that? be it. Round 10 kicks off and seven, two up. AWP for Sampaias is still present and matches keys present now towards the fountain. And he's headed his way through to the playground. This is, a, this is a new look, this aggression. Yes, it is, and it's not worked out. Magis is down, and what a start from Entz again. They've got a 5v4 established early doors. But this could be a boost that could gather some information, but it's quite noisy, and Deha detects that and doesn't leave himself in a position where he can be spotted, and he dodges the brunt of the damage from the utility. This round slows down on the 5v4. There's no more smokes left. There's no more real utility for Falcons whatsoever which makes it really difficult to manage when you're already a man down. Once these smokes clear, Falcons are gonna have to do something on the map. You're starting to see Ants play with some fluidity. They're moving across the map confidently, but here's Falcons making an information move at the 50-second mark of the round. And Monster Smoke will start to fade away. It's all about this fight now. And Supplies may have been frustrated last round, but he's gonna be even more to that kill, Goofy rounds the corner. d -Hut does not stop that play, but he gathers information, and that's everything for Ents at this point. And Bank, oh, it's a play forward for Madden, looking to deposit a couple of headshots. He flicks back, and Madden, he's done it again. It's absolutely so impressive that Madden's got to this level. Yeah, that one's crushing. I'm not sure how they didn't hear him burning in the Molotov as he steps through. Hectic situation, a lot of communication. Oh my God, he just gets in front of that smoke. He gets in front of it. And this is Ants coming so close and what a great start to the round, but it all comes down to just not watching that Molotov towards the bank and Madden unravels everything. Sun Pius as well with the op gets that initial kill. 
It's absolutely wonderful. And a great recovery from Falcons who had a lot of issues. Man down, no utility. And they come out on top. But here's the question. Is that enough to stop the momentum? Has Enz built up enough on this run, on this streak that they've had to let that one just slide off their shoulders? Like water off a bobber's back as we get into round 11. Still a purchase for both teams, and yeah, this is the real mental test, friends. Do they have it in them to let this one slide and come right back in? Kylar pushes up to the fountain. He's got eyes on bathrooms, but no one from Falcons is aggressive on A because look at their initial setup. They've got so many players starting towards B, anticipating a quicker maneuver from Ents, but that's not what Glaive is called. Gonna take short control, Glaive leading the way. Calling from the front. There's no resistance here. And three more Ents players joining up with him. Goofy, who's been fantastic, is left to his own devices on the other side of the map. He's got Magus to contend with out towards Longs, and Pius is up in bathrooms. Glaive walking in, but Boris from the sandbikes. It's a good first kill. He repositions and swings, though, and that's often a criticism you can have of him. He's got to hope his teammates can make up for that mess, and it's not going to happen for Snappy. A 2v2 now set up off the back of those. And is it a 2v2 that Falcons want to compete for? Remember, the Alps are in play, and especially on Sun Pius. If Magus goes down, Sun Pius ain't going to want to risk the AWP. Miss Nate. Oh, the experience that comes in, and now Hades is watching for it. Magus coming around the corner. It's a sick shot from Hades. And obviously, absolutely no chance now for Sun Pius. So he gets into the smoke after losing his teammate. He will disengage. He'll fall back. And that's our given eight. So the question was, will they be able to bounce back after a frustrating round loss? And we've got our answer, and it's yes. That's some beautiful trading for Enz coming into that. That was a heavy resistance at this bombsite. Boros even getting the first kill. But hunting down the kill on Snappy towards Monster was absolutely brilliant and necessary to bring it into him to a two-on-two -two as quick as possible. And if you're Enz, you're loving what Hades is providing you with the AWP right now. Good in clutches, he's had some openings, been good in the mid-round as well. Your best performing player in the group stage has showed up here in the playoffs. And now they're having a little bit of fun too. Now they get to enjoy it. Yeah, that first map was not enjoyable for the end side of things. Doesn't get much easier though. Sampaius looking for the opening fight in mid. He gets blinded and forced away. The shot rings out, and that's information gathered for Ents. And here's the first fight of the round. It's in short water, and it's Deha. That's a quick transfer down after getting dinked. And with the mid push, with the long, with the short kill at B bomb site. Oh, look how they're hustling up long. Oh my god. And Madden, so Madden, this is a great call. Madden's been playing banana this entire time with the AWP. He's not going to expect them to be this close. And Sampaius doesn't have the weapon for a multi kill. Sure enough, he doesn't have a single kill. Goofy hits that headshot without a problem. And now with a five feet. Shot sends them to hell. There's absolutely no way, no way that Magis and Boris can even think about a round like this. Man, we didn't get to see it at all on Mirage, but now you can see the way this Ents team is geared when they're getting opening kills. How they like to punish the defenses. Oh. Awkward exchange, but all still good. In control of Ents. That bomb's gonna hustle up long. It's important that they got that information early too. It's it's sad that Hades dies in that situation for Ents, but at least they pick up the information that Boris was trying to flank, and he's. Still Still trying to flank. He He's might be able to catch him behind them. And Boris blisters his way forward. D has taken out. Now he considers the bathroom. And this is a huge play from Boris. Three kills already. But there's two more to still find. And we said it was in control events, but now that could go away. Good information gathered for Glaive, and the experience allows him to fall back and stay composed as Boris. The butcher has arrived to this round, but it's Glaive the Dane who brings him down and nine three for Ents. They believe in this comeback.
Kings fighting back in this quarterfinal series. They respond from a demoralizing loss on Mirage with a brilliant half on overpass up 9-3. to three. They've had Falcons number from the get-go. Now they just have to close it out. They switch over to the defensive sides, which have been an issue. But we'll see if overpass is a map where they resolve them. Certainly an issue on Mirage. Let's see if overpass is a different story. They've got rounds to work with. They've got some space to play with. And Ents are looking to force map three of this series. Hades searches for the opening fight in the pistol, decides to drop back, given the information that he gathered. Falcons moving through Khan right at the door. And it looks like that fight might come soon. But it looks actually, in fact, that Falcons want to creep a little closer up the connector and as long as they don't make any steps, they can do this silently. They can gain ground here on the divider player. But information now picked up. There's a player inside of Top Con. They're coming right back, though. You have to imagine you get control of Con. You want to get control of Short as well. Here comes the flashbang to set it up. It's going to be Goofy with the duelies. Only White, it has to rely on Kylar to step up for it. And Goofy is unblinded just in time. He comes back, slinging his guns. But some pious with a miraculous triple out of nowhere on that P250. And that has given Falcons every single foothold in this pistol round bites back his former teammate down on the ground great recognizes great and this pistol is on it would be the first pistol the ants are able to pick up in this quarter final falcons have dominated them every single time there's a smoke, but there's no kit. But that smoke can apply some pressure. Sun Pius, oh, see someone looking the wrong way. Just gets a little bit of damage. Yeah, he's a god on these pistols, but not this time. It doesn't secure the double to close it for the ace immediately, so it does rely instead on Madden, who is just having a fantastic performance in this quarterfinal. So it's on Hades in the clutch alone, trying to force double figures. They think he's on that defuse, but unfortunately for us, he's not. So not enough time to win this. He'll retreat, he'll run away. And Pence, oh my goodness. Nice shot, but Ants, unfortunately, have not won a pistol today. Continues to be a little bit of a smudge on their gameplay. You're right. All four pistols won by Falcons. How does some Pius get all three of these? There's the first. Oh, man, he's just destroying all the backup. Easiest triple of his life. I couldn't believe he gets a, th a 3K there because it did look like Ents had done enough on the defense that they were going to get away with that connector play forward. But when you have a player like some Pius, if he's given enough space, enough time, he can pull off some miraculous plays. It almost felt like they were too eager to get involved in the action. Yeah. Forced by here for Ents in this second round. Scout in the hands of Hades. It's what got that first half going. They're going to try it again here in the second half. Well, this kind of form that Hades is having at the moment, 15 and 5, you can't put it against him. And you've got, you've got two scouts on the board as well to soften up the opposition, and then you can really see those MP9s clean things up. The 5-7 on Diha, clean up some of these tags. But first, they got to get them. One scout positioned out towards Long. One scout here in the hands of Hades, peering down Banana, looking to tag up Snappy, sees the shadow. Yeah, Snappy down to 10 health off the back of that. So there's one of those players you mentioned being softened up. And Diha is just giving them the shoulder. The cold shoulder is matted. Swiftly responds through the smoke. It's a spam kill that brings multiple players, unfortunately, now down for rents. They've got to play in a 3v5, despite doing damage to multiple Falcons players here. Yeah, that's a huge hiccup from Diha. Swinging after that smoke goes down, you have to know that spam is going to come in, and man, that really slows things down. Oh, MP9 jumping around the corner, Glaive out of ammunition, switches to the pistol, and so Pius, Hades has arrived at the first perfect moment. 3v3, and now they're coming back up into the and with just pistols put together with MP9. It looks like it might just be a magic moment for Ents. 23 seconds left. If they come back into Hades. Oh, he can start to spam, but he goes for the pre-fire. And that might cost him if he just sat and hold the angle. Perhaps it would be done already. But that has given them a chance back into it. And when you give great players a moment like that, they snatch it, they run with it. And now it's a clutch for Kylar alone up against Madden. And even though they come so close, it isn't that miracle round. That's rough. What a swing for Ents. They almost got that under control.
You couldn't, but you could look at Kuhn and realize he couldn't believe what was happening. But the pre fire from Hades, if he just stands still. Glaive has mentioned he's sometimes, I mean, coming out of that group stage, he's just said, I'm confused at how we're beating all these good teams. And I think that's another one of those rounds that it's just confusing, but you're going to roll with it. And unfortunately, it just gets away. And I don't think those are the rounds that Ens can now unfortunately lose, right? They're in a position if you drop the ball there, that's your golden ticket. We're looking at 9-6 I mean, almost surely here. That's that's the swing of the round. They almost had no business being in it. Down 3v5 at one point on a force buy, but somehow willed themselves back and let it slip. But you're right. Ends in this position. Cannot let those advantages drop away from them. Falcons should have an easy route to six. So far, it's living up to that. And Snappy's already cleared the A bomb site. He can backstab, he can call the team back with the overpass, a huge map. No reason to wheel his team through all the different myriads of danger on a path back to the bomb site. So Snappy instead just gonna be able to backstab as him and Hades pass in the night. Oh yeah, Snappy's got this for sure. He wants a Mac 10 kill and none come easier than this. Two players looking the wrong way. Snappy composes himself, he gets out of dodge. So even that flight from Hades around the back is not going to cost him his life. Plant locked in, Falcons keep five players up, and that's going to help recover and grow this economy from previous damage sustained in the last round. And now that huge lead that Ents were able to rack up from their T side, it's crumbling. And you mentioned it just before we started this second half. The CT side is where there have been issues for Ents. Well, they overcame some early hurdles in the first half. A chance to do it here. The AWP is in the hands of Hades, 16 and 7. A phenomenal game from the Ents offer. Must continue overpass a map where the AWP can be so impactful. Almost overextended, but backs away. It's Kyler. Yeah, Kyler holding, but here comes the Mac 10s. And here comes the cavalry running right over his body. Hades trying to get back. Oh, he's just been spotted the knee. Oh, nice shot from Hades. He was under a lot of pressure. He had disadvantage on that roll, but he goes back out again. And Glaive now pushing forward into Madden, but he can wait now. He can hold angles on this update. And it's going to be a headshot. Glaive removed, and Falcons once again up a player. Smart move from Madden to be so aggressive, taking control of long. They know they have Hades kind of stuck. Snappy looking for it. Three HP. Hades cannot make a single mistake. And with this far forward at the AWP, he has a chance to start bringing this round back in control, but boy, is it going to be tough. They're coming back up into the bathrooms in Hades. He's committed with this AWP. There's no fallback plan. There's no turning back. And the bomb has decided to turn back through connector and down to that B bomb site. And because the angle of Hades is not deep, he's not gathering that information. Ents won't have the early warning system. Instead, it is Deha down on B, spotting out this attack, swinging into the open and going down without a single kill. Ents have no other option. It has to be the save call. Again, Madden just having so much impact. Just the one kill he gets in this round on Glaive puts so much pressure on the defense. Beautiful shot to keep the AWP in hand, but it's not going to matter at the end of the day. Four straight to start this second half for Falcons, and they're coming storming right back into the overpass. Yeah, Boros just keeps going for this. He knows that if you take away this AWP, if you take away this rifle, it's going to push Ents' economy into the doldrums, and they're going to have to back away here, Ents. They seem like they've got to some sort of safety, at least on Hades, but I'm worried a little bit about Goofy at the moment, but Boris does not continue that push. Look at Cuban. I'd be surprised if we don't get a timeout after this round. He's he's lounging a little bit. He's taking a moment to look and rifle through what minimal playbook that Ents has built up at this moment. Yeah, I Thinks he can talk to them and get them on the same page. When you're on the CT side and you're having to combat the minds of Snappy and Zonic together on this T side, it can be a really difficult challenge. Some would say even impossible, especially with the limited time that Ents have had to get themselves together. If Ents lose this round, this game is essentially tied up. This game is right there. It'll be a labored buy in the next one after that, depending on what's saved, but then Falcons are, are kind of right in it. They're within striking distance now. And then that pressure just grows and builds. It's a 4-1 start. Oh, and the boost up's been spotted. Glaive wants nothing to do with it. So they have to cancel out that idea. 
seconds, pick up information of the whereabouts of two players off of that. Obviously, that can reset at this point. And Boris is hoping through that smoke he can catch a player. He did earlier when Deha overextended. Falcons reposition. Yeah, they're going to take a little bit of long control now. They've, they haven't really been contested too many times in this part of the map. So Madden is leading the way, going to wheel his way in towards bathroom. So starting to get basic control towards that A bomb site to start challenging into it. The AWP is here in the hands of Haiti. Hades, it's further back. It's at the A bomb site. Him and Kyler have no nades. They have nothing to disrupt any attack into their positions except for their weapons. Hades scoped up. Oh, he hits the shot, but it's not death. And Hades is the master of that. He'll run back around to bank. But well, with the AWP, he's going to be blocked up by utility. He's got no more say in this round because he's got no backup, no teammates with him whatsoever. This, uh, I hate to say it, this might have to be a safe call again. If this flank nets them nothing, it's time to bail out. And that flank hasn't come into position just right yet. It hasn't come into play. And it is the safe call. It's a super tough pill to swallow, but they just didn't have the resources to go for that retake. And from 9-3 to 9-8, this is starting to become a nightmare for Ents. You hate doing it, but you can understand why. Next round would have been a really, really tough buy for Ents, but they get to preserve the weapons. This will help their economy in the long game, maximize the number of rounds they can fight back with full power. It's just the question becomes, how, how long can they keep losing before they just break? Still at this moment, nursing the lead you still believe but if, if falcons overtake them it's a completely different game well, we've had kubin go back and rifle through the notes did not work this time and he needed the kill and it's just a slim margin slab of concrete and once kyler's gone he's the one that's meant to keep space for the op he's the one to protect and make sure they cannot move closer to the awp once kyler goes down hades has no option but put it back behind the smokes and this looks like a much more technical talk from kubin rather than trying to fire them up sitting back and passing information forward This comes into crunch time. And we'll have the advantage of all these wonderful people standing behind them. But this has to be their chance now. They save for this moment. They save to get a goodbye again for the next. But if they tie it up, if it's nine to nine, this map completely changes. And the Hades has pushed forward at long. Clave has got himself in a connector. We saw Falcons do this as well in the first half. The switch up in the defense is stop letting them have this basic control out towards Fountain and Playground. Start challenging for it. Make them work for every inch that they want to take on the map. It's an MP9 to defend this B site. An MP9 is the first weapon that will be tasked with dealing out damage. Well, the nice thing is you have two players behind you, two M4s behind you. And now their setup is better. They've had time with that follow-up smoke to change it up slightly and make this hold look a bit more convincing for Ents. Goofy's going to get blind, so D has to play anti-flash, and he'll have to turn very, very quick. A follow-up smoke. smoke. That's not going to delay things. They've got to go through it. And here Falcons come, and they do not get through. They do not break through Goofy. And they've got a reset. Falcons have to come in from a different avenue. And they found short. They might find this as sanctuary for the moment, but they've got to now deal with that adjustment in the defense yet again for Ents. It lands at the feet of Madden. Your whole position behind the sandbags, waiting on his in-game leader of Snappy to come and join him. It will be the last ditch effort. It's the only option they've got to hit this B bomb site. Ents are defending it with everything they've got though, and Snappy is toppled. It's double figures for Ents. They needed it. Their first win of the second half puts them at double digits, and it's a great hold. And you look at the money for Falcons, though it doesn't get any easier for us. They're still going to have to deal with that constant buy. But Goofy is still blinded, realizes once that smoke comes down, once he hears those flashes, they've got to commit through it. So he holds down Mouse 1, and he gets away with 2. I don't even think they ever saw Diha. They didn't need to. Oh, deep utility again. 
Ents one more time, want to challenge a little bit. Not going to stick around, but Hades, Hades is pushing. He's out in the open as well. And Madden's trying to get up in towards Playground. He nearly had an opportunity to bring down a player from Ents. But it's not to be the case. Yeah, you can just see Hades quickly backing away. That flashbang he expects to be a peak following it up. Doesn't want to be left, hung out to dry in his own at long. It was a different story when his teammates pulling distraction in middle, but once that issue falls away for Falcons, you got to get him out of there. And Falcons once again shifting into a B play. But this time with the more aggressive defense at A though, they can actually track the pacing of when Falcons is taking control, when they have a timing to attack into the A bomb site. It lets them get their defense in a better position. This attack one more time, going to try and break the B bomb site. Diha at Monster, two players at the site. That's Goofy and Glaive. Flashes up. Diha steps up. And he'll start spamming down, but this will not work this time. Goofy, he's found one, but they slip by the bridge. And oh, he turns back. A big headshot, but it's kept Ents in it for now. It's still not a favorable position. And Falcons are into the B bomb side. It's got to be a retake. Events want to go for this, but what a shot from Hades. That's some pious down. Talk about a big game moment. This could be one of them. Looking to push it to 11 rounds as Hades is pulling distraction. You see it? He wants to allow Kylar to come on in. And perhaps he did catch a glimpse of Snappy. The eye of the Falcon turns short. It's Kylar gone. And Hades with a bone to pick. He'll make his way into the clutch. A missed shot. And now up in the open. Oh, he's hit a quick one. And he's going back below. But he can't compose himself for that flick down into the water. Once he hops up, Jason, it just looks so unlikely. Yeah, and this time you could see similar defense, but not stopped in the blind spam into the smoke. This time Falcons is able to overwhelm, and Boros is able to slide behind the defense from short. Oh, Diaz having a tough time. Really having a tough time outside Monster at the He's moment. Had a lot of bodies sent at him. I mean, Falcons in, in that last Cuban timeout, they've really switched things up. They've really, uh, previously it was map control towards uh, towards party. It was map control towards bathrooms and Croach on the A bomb site. Now we're seeing B executes. So attacking different points of the map at ends is struggling to get their defense settled at the right point. Boss, oh my goodness, that was a chance and he let it slip. Goofy composes himself strong enough, but the reply is swift from some pious. The Spaniard rings one out. Goofy has no business being alive. That was a huge mistake that he gets away with, a huge overstep. But once again, Long is exploited. And once again, Hades has so much pressure as the sole defender. He brings Glaive back for the moment. Oh, some pious, unrelenting, goes for a second shot. But it's always B. Some pious is just a distraction. And this time, there's an open line of sight. No smoke and monster. This time, Diha has a better position to play run. Back in the barrels, double from Diha, and the nade will send him out of the round. His work has been felt. Can his team now close on his promise? Magus has to pick that bomb up, and he does exactly that. He predicts the movement. He knows what Goofy's likely up to. The barrels play still works out, and Sampias is left alone. 35 seconds, no bomb in his hand. If he had some extra time to play with, you give him more of a shot, but he's sticking around. Sampias is a confident player, knows what skill he possesses, but with that missed shot, that's it. That's it over. He'll retreat, ends her up to 11, and it started with that goofy mistake that worked out for him in the end. Great round from Diha. As you mentioned, struggling with some of these monster hits time and time again. This time delivers a double, and Ents is barely hanging on and just crawling closer to the finish line. It's 11 to nine. A two round lead, and now they've been able to show that they can stop those B hits. And they're not doing it in the most beautiful of fashions, but it is effective, bludgeoning their way through. And Falcon's gonna have a decision to make. They've attacked different points on the map at different times. They've had success at both, and they've struggled with both. Where exactly do they want to go? And all the money built up during their run. During that five round streak to start this half, it's all depleted in this buy. This could be the map. This could be us forced onto the third map of Nuke. And Ants can feel that rallying cry. The support of the spot egg for the first time in eight years. And Kubin will remember it, but he knows he has to get the job done. 
and Falcons will come still with the AK-47s, the Galils, and the AWP. Deep utility. Ents again want to show that they'll challenge and have presence at Fountain. But Falcon's starting at a 1-2-2, two, two, so Madden is going to stay passive for the moment. Cautiously stepping through his own smoke. Oh, Hades boosted to the top his teammate's head. And another one where he's so close to getting the kill, but just not enough damage to topple Magisk. We'll see if that plays a factor for the remainder of this round. Kylo heading into the bathrooms. But they've, they've, they've really struggled not to lose players at the A bomb site. They've really struggled not to get picked here, and that weakens the defense across the map. Kyler's going to be left alone at long bathrooms, and thankfully for him, no one from Falcons is heading here. Once again, another monster bust. But this time, the defense is so passive. No one's challenging the exit. They're actually going back up to A because they don't feel comfortable, but they've got to get back down here quickly. They've got to get back to this B bomb site in time. Oh. Boros, that's a beefy nade, lands right at his feet. And the pack of Falcons swooping into this B bomb site. Glaive from heaven, it's nothing. And Goofy is still in the water. He has galvanized his team to this point, but it's just a single kill. Hades from heaven rings true through the smoke, and it's still a 3v3, but with that kill from Deha, that setup ends in pole position for this retake. Some Pius has received a lot of damage, and Hades once again wins that head-to-head -head duel. It's now just snappy, and that in-game leader sits poised in the corner. He knows there's going to be a peak eventually, and here they come around the corner. First for snappy, but he's under pressure, and Ents have battled their way through to map point on overpass. 12 to die in an exceptional retake, but Hades again the impact. Way too many targets for him with the AWP to just pick off before it begins. Falcons were starting to see some cracks. That composure of a new team slipping. And a third timeout taken by Falcons. Heading into what could be the final round. The final gasp, the final chance to fight back on overpass. They'll piece together what they can. But the damage that ends have inflicted upon them is certainly felt. And this has got to be the golden ticket for map three. And remember, the money is just is just demolished. Everything, the bank, the funding that Falcons had built up is gone. Sun Pius is stuck to a deagle. A couple of Galils in the field of play, but not a lot of utility. One single smoke. Falcons scraping the bottom of the barrel. Perhaps a different finish for the Falcons. I don't mind this, though. They've seen throughout this half, they haven't really had a whole lot of, uh, of people trying to stop them from taking long. They're up quick with nades, with, you th with, with weapons. Oh, Hades gets back quick. Yeah, he does. He's running back into position. And he knows there's a player tucked in that corner. Second shot for Hades. Boris is brought down. And it's two steps closer to map three. The heart of Hades, the heart of Ents. And he's got another. Hedy sits atop the throne of Bones. And map three is surely here now. Some pious on the other side. How poetic would it be for Hades to knock him on his back to tie up this series? He's got the angle. Some pious encroaches closer, ever closer. But Hades has done it. We are through. Have life in this series.
They bite back, and it turns out a hot start on that offensive half was exactly what the doctor ordered. Sure, things get a little bit messy coming into the second, but talk about the amount of runway the Ents had to work with here, Matthew. Yeah, listen, this time around, they wake up prior to round seven. I think that's the story for Ents, finding a little bit of success early on, forcing Falcons to play slightly more passive, slightly more defensive, and then suddenly, when Ents are being gifted a bit more map control, you can start to see some individuals finding opening kills, and then this is where the experience of Glaive comes kicking in, knowing how to place these 5v4, know to have out-rotate the defense, which we're gonna just put it out there. Falcons wasn't exactly comfortable in the defense. Good for Ents, what an attack, what an offense for them. And I think one thing to point out is that Ents didn't even win the pistol round. They didn't even win the first force buy. It wasn't until they did a second force buy in a row, and it reminded me of a, a round against uh, Cloud9 versus Monty. Something similar happened where there was a force buy, didn't work, force buy again because there's only one alive. Okay, this is the start to a great half. And we're actually going to see that here. Um, Ents was able to do that. And Should we dive right into it? We, we can dive right, right into it, it. yeah. yeah. yeah this uh, piece of technology that you're talking about. Yes, let's, we're talking about... Let's use this piece of technology. This beautiful piece of technology. So that's the context of this round as you were talking about trying to get my hands here. That's 2-0. Ents prior to this had forced. It didn't work out for them, but what did they do? They forced again in the round following. They're applying this pressure that we were talking about. And here you'll see a little bit of map control being taken, mostly on account of a defense being relatively passive. You know, it's a minute and 10 left on the clock and the, the whole map is pretty much already for Ents. And there's going to be a few mistakes here. Just peeks. I don't think he needs to, but Glaive is right there with the Galil as well. He finds that kill. A timing comes from behind, and I thought Ents would completely crumble here. This timing hits. They're a little bit in shambles, but they fight back into the round. Open kill from Kylar. A good weight in from Diha as well, and they turn things around, which I believe was instrumental for them to come back into this map and just start, get the engine going. Yeah, and we are also going to see on the other side of this that Falcons was able to crawl almost all the way back into this round here, had like one different duel gone differently, and that's just because Falcons is really good in in this chaotic situations. And even though Enz was able to pick up this map, it's not like Falcons just fell over, no. you know? They all, they made it close, they made it competitive, and they brought it back almost all the way. And that's what Falcons does well, is that they don't just collapse. They don't just fall apart. So Enz, even though that they need their big, big leads and the big starts, and that's what they were able to get after they converted this round, Falcons had like two really bad force rounds and two really bad ecos. And Ents were able to pick up all of those rounds. What I was very impressed as well, we see here in round six, is Ents' ability to come back from a deficit, right? This 4v5 here, Majisk, once again, he's he's the target of our criticism. He gives away that lead, Sunpaya speaks, and that's the second kill from Goofy, and we can see from the defense, taken a little bit off guard, it leaves just one defender. The rotation is running in, but the timing from Hades, which, by the way, what a map from Hades, we'll talk about it. But this was very uncharacteristic, and this round just completely collapses on itself for Falcons, who was in a 5v4, so let's be clear. Here. This wasn't a pristine defense. You're not supposed to fall one by one by one domino style in 5v4. But good for Ents to, even in a deficit situation, still try to take that map control, put themselves in a position where if there's a mistake, I'm ready to punish it. That's what they did. It looked very much uh, more well choreographed than that first map of Mirage, right? We were talking about how disjointed they looked, how they were taking those individual duels one by one. The fact that they strung seven rounds in a row on the T side of things, Josh, that's impressive on a map like Overpass, right? Well, yeah, and you kind of expect that from a team that's going to pick this map knowing that they're probably going to have to start T-side. They are going to have a pretty good game plan going into it. And they were able to abuse the, how aggressive Falcons were in some cases, like Majis getting way too aggressive down at like uh, through long or like deep into middle. We also saw them punishing Falcons for being a little bit too passive. But one of the things that I noticed the most was that 
Ents was also making... It's not like they were playing perfect CS. No, no, no. could have almost been exploited for playing some styles. Like, even the last round we just brought up, we saw, like, Glaive could have lost his dual outside monster. Hades got a really lucky timing on his peak. Um, coming up to the CT steps, I think Boros just looked away from the truck at just that moment. Though these rounds are really fragile, and anything can fall apart at any moment in time. So Enz got a little bit lucky on some of these rounds as well to convert them. And that was particularly true when we come into the second half, right, Machu? Yeah, because Falcons start to make this really, really competitive. Competitive. So should we go to the round that uh, managed to, you know, put the first CT round on Entz's belt? Because yeah, we, uh, we that was just, so chaotic. Uh, we can just bypass sort of all the hardships that Entz went going through. And this is where I think they started breathing again. You could see Falcons up to eight now. This was nine to three half. And then that B hit comes in and a little bit of luck. You talk about it, Goofy with a good cross replacement, even though he's blind, gets that double kill. I think Goofy was also a hero that we have to talk about. His yep. defense on the B side, specifically with Diha, he was almost always in the right position at the right time. This is where things turn around as far as I am concerned. Ends were really out of solutions. Their A aggressive plays weren't exactly finding kills. And then you have Falcons a orienting towards that B side and get punished. What we didn't know at the time was that we were witnessing one of the limitations of this Falcons project currently, which is an inability to hit the A side, being funneled back to B and back to B. And the timing that they were hitting were generally a good 10 to 15 seconds too late, which is why the Ends defense was always here. Glaive was always here as a third, even sometimes a fourth. So this was foreshadowing what was going to happen for Falcons here. Should we talk a little bit about Hades versus Sampaios? Because uh, Hades entirely eclipsed the Spanish all pro on this map, right? Which was surprising to see. Eclipse, son. I like this. Yes, I like, I like, I like what we're doing here. I like that. Oh my god. <laughs> hey, yeah. Well, I mean, we, we touched on it before the first map on Mirage, but we didn't get to see Hades getting his op out that much. We mm -hmm. saw he had an op out and he got like a first kill on like round four or something like that. And then the next round was like round seven. So he didn't really have a chance on Mirage to really whip it out. But here he, I mean, T-side had a really strong start. Mm -hmm. But then it was like, he just continued that momentum into the CT side. So he had a really strong game, was hitting shots. And even when he wasn't getting the like, kills, he was getting some really nice flicks where he would, you know, do 50, 60 damage through a wall, getting the info. He was keeping those deep lines though. And that's what's gonna really throw a thorn into Falcon's side because they do a lot of like this walk around stuff. They keep things simple. And as you talked about with Overpass, like you need to be able to have good plans, but they aren't at that stage yet to make those good plans. So what they do is they end up walking around a little bit and if they walk into an op, that's when Hades is going to shine. So if Hades is able to get more impact like that, then, you know, he's looking really good right now. Man Hades like Hades, Hades, but man like Goofy as well. Uh, you were loving what you were seeing from the Gooster on uh, this map. The Gooster, absolutely. Yes, Goofy on the B side, uh, very instrumental as far as I'm concerned, just because, again, Falcons seemed a little bit limited in where they could act and where they could attack. And this is why we'll see Diha and Goofy most of the time being tested. Uh, of course, some of these entries on the T side, we talked about it. This is a very pivotal round, round four, where he leads the charge with that M4 that he grabs, uh, punishes the little bit of curiosity from Majisk as well, that double kill here. But I'm mostly interested on the CT side and how I think he basically blocked the only way forward that Snappy really had. And, and this is where we tie it back to our everlasting conversation about Overpass. It's a hard map to sort of spontaneously call on the T side. You need to have very knit tight execute from when you go there. It felt like Falcons didn't have it. They didn't, and when they try to poke a little bit on the A side, they had Hades waiting with lines. The last one is a good example. It's a 4K from Hades, and he, he hits good flicks, but he's just basically holding lines. He knows where to be. He knows where to aim. He punishes Falcons. Well, we do find ourselves knocking on the door of what will be the third and final deciding map, which comes down to Nuke. So let's check in with the Falcons camp to see how they're feeling after that unfortunate map loss. <laughs> So just catching up with Danny from the Falcons. Obviously, he knows going down that far when you come on the second map is not ideal. And so we have to try to fight back from. He said there was some misunderstandings, communication side of things, of what people wanted to do, how they wanted to play it. But now going into Nuke, he said we've got more match experience. Both teams have beaten Vitality on it, though, which can obviously play a factor into it. And, well, he's confident for the next map. Well, I talked to Kuban. You remember last time he said, well, it's we don't know what to do with the audio cues as well. He said to me just now, <laughs> that was an excuse what I told you earlier. Oh, yes, like he did. And he said they knew exactly what our weaknesses were on Mirage. We were caught off guard, but we knew exactly what their weaknesses were uh, on Overpass. And the confidence just came flowing back. And I think, uh, yeah, they can definitely bring that into Nuke.
Well, let's hope they're both confident enough to give us a great game on Nuke. I'm sure that's coming I love up. how Banks has to bring up those victories over Vitality just because he knows you're on the death match. But I digress. We come into this third and final decider to see who goes through to that semi-final versus Spirit. So where are we lying coming into Nuke? Who are you favoring, Matthew? Oh, that, that is a rough one. Listen, uh, I think Snappy has had so many very high caliber results on Nuke. And whenever you see Falcons, I know it's not the same team. I know it's a new project and they've been very vocal about it in interviews, but you will smell, you will taste the touch of Snappy on that map. Like these lobby crunches that's going to come in on the CT side at different timings, that aggression that he'd love to use. The fact that Boris as well is basically used as a turret. I don't think Boris knows how the B side looks like. On like I don't think he's ever gone back further than the ramp. That's basically the furthest he's allowed to go back, weirdly enough. So I think it's going to be very dual oriented. Uh, and I don't really know if that playstyle works with low weaponry. That's going to be a question. We have also to see who starts where on the map. I, I believe a knife round is going to be deciding that, but I do not have that information currently. Yeah. Yeah, knife round's going to decide it, and honestly, like, if I'm looking at it, I don't know how it's going to play out for either side. I feel like, on the one hand, Ents kind of wants to start on the T side and get the aggressive, um, j just the game plan out of the way, get the pistol rounds. They always like to do these really set plays. And, you know, if they lose the knife round and have to play a T side at the start, it might actually play off in their favor, because I fear for them on their CT side. I don't think that they're right in the position yet to win a lot of their duels or get the multi frags. We saw two people being able to pick up a lot of kills. One was Hades with his AWP, and you're not going to get those types of opportunities and because you're going to get smoked out, so you're going to have to have good teamworks with breaking the smokes to be able to, you know, get your opportunities there. But then the only other person is Goofy, and Goofy, as much as he was playing well, he also does some Goofy plays, which leads to him dying off early, or, you know, that starts the bleeding of the Ents camp. So it's going to be interesting to see if Ents is able to keep things together and not bleed out on their CT side here. And then on the flip side, as you were talking about with Falcons, they are really strong with the lobby crunches. They are really strong with doing these like chaotic fights. And Nuke is a great map for those chaotic fights, especially if you're able to break out into the open, into like the, on the T side, if you're um, able to take secret control or uh, positional control and then turn into a 3v3 and play the mid rounds out, that's gonna massively favor Falcons. So it's, it's one of those things where it's like, we're seeing the momentum carry on from Ents. But then we also know that Falcons was really good in the first map, got caught off, blindsided on the second map. Now they're going to be like, you're not happening, That that's not happening again. So many questions and it is time to get some answers. One map apiece in this quarterfinal series as the hometown heroes bite back. That spot of the semifinals will be decided on Nuke after this break. Welcome, my friends, to the Cathedral of Counter-Strike! Same place there, simple, just jumping casually into the site. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. Simple, it's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. I think that's from 2007, I remember, in Paris, um, ESWC. If we had a tournament, you know, every three months, it was packing your bag, getting that huge monitor into whatever, under the arm, going into the bus, taking a train, and then you would have to, to have somewhat of a sleeping gear as well. Um, you would play for an entire weekend. There was no, you know, hotels or whatever, sleeping pretty much underneath that that giant PC. Um, and at the end of the, the week, if you were lucky, you were winning between $1,000 and $2,000. It was a different time. Um, to some extent, I actually missed those times because it was a lot more simpler and you could actually enjoy, you know, hanging out with some of the other teams, talking with them. There was another Danish player called KK and he was from, from our rival team and he always did this face. And I think it was kind of a meme on our team to try and make it a little bit fun because he he used to be part of the best Danish team and we were the underdogs and 
And uh, then we, we fought our way up and we, we finally got it. And I think we were just trying to, to uh, because he always did this in pictures, so it was kind of like a big internal joke for, for, for us. But without bragging too much, that was one of my best finals, if I remember correctly. I think I did three aces in, uh, in that grand final. One was in the pistol round and then the Antigua, and then I think it was the, the famous one, the one on five on those two. I think that was also part of it, but that was a grand final against Existen and those guys. Um, not part of my best iteration of the team, but we had some, some really strong players. And if it wasn't for Navi, uh, we would have been the best team in the world. So I, I definitely know how Liquid felt in, in 18, because uh, I, I experienced the same in, in 10. Oh, this is our former prime minister in, of Denmark. It was a special time. It was obviously fun to, to play with the, with the prime minister, him using the mouse and me, the keyboard, and then we were playing against some of the players. So it didn't work that well when you go up against the Weiss and Glaive on the other side. So the story is we famously couldn't never get to that grand final in, in Blast in Royal Arena with, with the Stralis. So we had to play these, um, this show match between the group stage and grand final. And I remember the device at one point said, I'm sick. So I was just joining the server, not knowing who I was going up against. And then I saw this, this young talent in, in Simple joining the server. Uh, we couldn't get the name changed for, for me. So I think he actually thought a lot of the rounds that he was going up against the device. Um, but I managed to get a good start. But, uh, uh, and I think I got five, five kills, you know, five points against him. And he won with seven, five. A lot of people actually think to this day that I won that one-on-one, -on -one. Uh, but I guess you can you can consider it a win, getting five five rounds against the uh, symbol. But it was a lot of fun, and uh, we ended up winning. <laughs> so um, it's Danish Game Awards. I got the award, and, and I think that was the first one to be obtained in the Danish Hall of Fame of yeah, video games. Um, and I still have it at home. It means a lot to me, and, and it, it's the best trophy. Lift a trophy, a major title for Glaive, and now he's heading back out of that stage with Enz this time behind him. And for the first time since 2015, there might be a Polish team in the semi finals. It's all decided here on Nuke. This is the map of dreams. Will this romantic run from Enz be stopped by Falcons? We're about to find out. And Falcons going to be starting on the offensive side, attacking into Enz's defense. And I'll tell you what, this Enz team has grown quite a bit since map one in this series. Goofy no longer shy on the stage. d -Hut's having his impact. Hades was spectacular on overpass and they are going to need all three here on Nuke. Dooley's on Kyler and fast paced outside for Falcons. And they have just been so good on pistol rounds today. Unstoppable, unrelenting, but this time it is Hades who has become the hard events. Who opens up with the first kill of the pistol and the second is even better. This is more like it from Enz. The first round of Nuke is looking fantastic. And Poland loved that one. It's just Magisk left this time. And it's got to feel rough if you're Falcons. They've been on the receiving end this time. Finally, a pistol round for Enz. Finally, they get a start in the lead. And that is just dominance. Hades picking up right where he left off. Brilliant triple kill outside. Enz have dominated every single one of these. But Hades, they talked about him not being a big game player. That's part of the reason he wasn't put into the Ants team for long. He was removed, he was replaced. Yeah, well, he's had some time off. He's picked it up since then. He's delivering today on the stage, looking for those semifinals. It's one to nothing, and we're not going to get the force buy from Falcons. They're content to descend into just Deagles. No armor, nade damage is massive. Oh, it's beautiful. And we talked about how Deha is struggling over on his CT roll and overpass. Well, on Nuke, he's kind of carved out one of his own play styles, which is being disruptive towards outside, getting aggressive, playing towards red. Yeah, but they got to be careful. You can get really discombobulated on Nuke. You can get really disorganized quickly with some of the fast paced rounds that will surely come out. For the moment, Hades happy to have an eye outside with no support. Man, he's got a teammate in mini in case they try and turn in. He's got to be feeling so full of confidence right now ahead. He's after a map like that. 
to kick off the pistol with a 3k is the dream beginning. They've got to be careful they don't drop the ball to the pistols here of Falcons because they've actually got on by a couple of these crosshairs. But once again, it's Hades stepping up and Dihas with him, but now just slips on through the net. And he's got a weapon to play with now in a 1v2. Let's not count him out of this situation because he definitely has a chance now with the premium rifle. It's the health that worries me. And he's got to be instant on this kill on his former champion in game leader. And it hasn't connected on the first time of asking. And in fact, it will never connect. Pretty costly though for Ents. I think Falcons is going to be more than happy with their production with just Eagles. Magisk was brought down to that HP from the nade early on in the round and still nets himself two kills. So a lot of rebuys for Ents. Meanwhile, Falcons get to pick up the AK-47s. And for the first time, sincere chance of Polsko Gurom ring out around the spot egg because they might just come out on top today. Here comes their first challenge on Nuke. They smoke out heaven. Suggests perhaps a quicker maneuver towards outside. Hades is going to dive down into main. And Sampice is the man at the front of the pack, and he's got the bomb on his back. Yeah, I don't know. He might have been spotted. Oh. In fight for Hades to win, but he's caught in the open. A double peek. d get nothing done. Even when you add Goofy into the equation, it changes nothing. And Kylar and Glaive now a 2v3. It's going to be the sprint down the lower bomb site for Falcons. Glaive is trying to get there before them. He might even get there before them. Glaive is now holding this angle, and Sopias gets no step closer. Glaive is looking to give Ents the perfect start to take out this gun round. And Magisk is below him. Oh, he's below him. Will Glaive detect him? He's starting to read it. And oh, Magisk flicks on up. Despite Glaive having the up on him, Magisk still stays in that position. And Kylo descends down the ladder, now detected and double peaked. Magisk comes in and it will be Falcons to collect their first gun round. I'll tell you what, Glaive's trying to use the roar of the crowd to give him a little bit of information. He thought Magisk was going to be behind that smoke. His aim got pulled away. Glaive gets a little bit fooled in that situation, but good trading outside. The follow-up peaks from Ents can get absolutely nothing done. And it's good to see some Pius having a couple of impactful kills here in that round because he had a real tough time on overpass. We saw frustration, we saw anger, and we saw him lose out to Hades, his counterpart on Ents. Zero to six in head-to-head -head duels for the Alpers on overpass. And some Pius surely wants to change that here in map three. And an on-fire some Pius is a sight to behold. It's a timeout for Ents. They're going to force buy into this, getting the strongest buy onto the field as humanly possible. Throughout this tournament, it has been a cool, collected sort of facial expression on Kubin. Now inside of the arena, a much more intense look upon his face. He realizes now there's an opportunity, especially a map three of this series, to make this run happen. And not in this round, though. It doesn't look too pretty, but we'll have to wait and see what Ants can do with a force buy. We've seen them earlier on, on overpass, be able to pull something off like this, but it's quick through ramp, and Goofy's the player that has to make sure it happens. With that 5-7, Glaive is overrun, and he was the player with the rifle, the player you wanted to step up, and Madden is murdering them once again. And there's just too many angles to worry about. Deha and Kylar. It's not a position to find yourself in if you want to win it. That second player coming in a ramp with a back 10 is just so fast. The M4 can't double up. That's picked up by Mattern after his double kill. And this should pretty much be the round. I think Ansel will be happy to back off and maybe go for some exits. Maybe see if they can have obviously recovered scout is quite nice. If Dia can hold on to that, it'd be a thing of... Oh my God, somehow he is holding on to it. The timing is absolutely perfect for Dia. He's actually going to slip on by. It's so awkward, but he's making noise now. And truly, truly gets checked. Truly gets found out. He will eventually. It took some time. He was protected by something greater. Kyler descends down to the floor and he's going to be saving his 5-7. So it was a force by Ants went with, but didn't come too close to picking it up, Jason. No, they needed more out of that M4. Always going to be a tough thing. They have the stack in the right place, just couldn't convert. This is going to get interesting. You know, Glaive mentioned the group stage for Ents when they qualify for the Spodek. He said <laughs> that that was that felt for some of the players like it was lifting the trophy, like that was the championship, just getting into the Spodek. Well, now you have this new challenge. And once you're in this situation where you actually can make it to the semifinals even deeper than you could have ever dreamed of coming into this event with a new lineup, 
that gets a that's a lot more pressure. That's a lot more energy that just gets burned as this game goes on. And Deha was saying that as well in the interview we gave just before this matchup, that they kind of took so much energy to get into the arena that that last game versus Malice, he, he knew they felt flat. They didn't have it in them. They didn't have enough energy to keep going. And he was happy that that match happened in the group stage in a match that decided whether or not to go into the quarterfinals or the semis rather than happening here in the spot deck. And they need every single piece of energy they can muster. Shots across the board. It rings out for Falcons. It's a convincing victory that will take them into the lead. And Hades will have a long time to try and save this AK-47. We'll see if Falcons is feeling motivated at all to go for the hunt. Doesn't look like it. Falcons going to be up 3-2 to two early on on this T side of Nuke. We focus a lot for good reason on the, the storyline of events and what it would mean to get through to the semifinals. But for, for Falcons as well, this is a team that, in a similar vein to Ents, didn't expect to be this good this early. And I mean, you've definitely seen cracks throughout the group stages. They didn't look fantastic. There was questions of whether or not they would even make it through. And when questioned on whether or not they were going to be a playoff team, Snappy actually said, not if we play like this. So. They've had to pull up their socks. They've had to get into fighting form. The nice thing is for teams like this, the deeper you go in the event, the more experience you're gaining. And especially for a team like Falcons, who has the greatest coach of all time, has a fantastic core that they brought over from Ents earlier. They have Magisk as well, a four-time major champion. Your improvement can be quick. It can be swift. Yeah. They're worth their weight in gold as official matches early on. And this Falcons team was put together for one reason, built for victories. Whether or not they're a championship level team at the moment is yet to be seen. And Ants want to stop their run in the quarterfinals. They've got to buy back here, Ants. They've got rifles across the board. Hades on the AK-47. He was saved over from the previous. And this could be a classic snappy call. The pressure into this A bomb site with flashes. Yeah, they're going to try and bust in. Kyler and Goofy are in there for the defense. Hades is close by up in heaven. No op in the field of play. No counter Molotovs to be thrown out from anyone. And they know those smokes outside are going to buy them time for just a few more seconds. Eventually, the timing has to be hit. And Snappy's going to hear that re-smoke coming out. Ends delaying with their final pieces of utility. And this, I mean, all the upper defenders are going to be unnoticed because there's nobody outside. And look at the setup designed to deal with this. Goofy has to drop off. Here's Kyla for man, a double kill swiftly, removing the lives of Boros. And Magisk and Goofy sneaking out behind him. He stops that Ventai, but the ball makes it down. And Madden collects it, but there's no hope in hell for this one. It's a 1v5, and they've already made the rotation. And so already have this round. Madden's going to put that bomb, at least fake plant it. It's a good headshot on Clay, but he hears the stomp of the players arriving down the vents. And surely do not let this one slip. He's coming back into position. And finally, from one of the angles that Ants have taken up, they will secure the round that ties up the game again. And Glaive's pressure, even though he goes down, prevents Madden from getting that bomb plant, prevents extra money from flowing into the pockets of Falcons. They're going to be fine in this one, but that's going to start chipping away at the money. Five AKs on board. Falcons just execute a little bit early before that smoke plumes, and Kyler's able to take advantage. And then the pressure will start piling on Snappy to continue finding calls that keep Falcons competitive. The buy still stands, but that can quickly fall away. Boros heads outside. Smokes are up. It's not the prettiest smoke execute. It has actually left a huge gap towards main that Boros was hoping he could use in his favor. But look at this from Boros. So elusive, but he walks right into d -Hot, and you can't get past the Destroyer. d -Hot stands behind the smokes. His teammates... We'll start to have a look with him. And Dijon's just changing position multiple times, worried about being pushed, but it's a flank from some pies that should have been detected, but Dijon steps back and steps to his death. Yeah, they lost track of it. Lost track of it entirely as Dijon came out of Big Garage. And look at Madden. He's cleared the upper bomb site. So much attention was brought outside that Madden is able to slip the net. And what can he create? Nobody's shifting back. They've got to be so confused of where this defense is. Goofy over and Squeak Door can stop them from progressing into the bomb site itself. There's no smoke to block it off, so Falcons have a tough read. It's a difficult round here for the T side. It comes down to some crucial fights that will be fought inside of the lobby. And Goofy is that player. Goofy has to step up. 
And the time is starting to dwindle. If Hades tries to get into the upper bomb set, he just climbed the ladder, he's in trouble. Yeah, Madden's looking at it, and Hades doesn't overextend just yet, but that's the fight that means the most. That's the bomb, and it isn't the double. Madden does catch Hades unaware. So confused as to how Madden is that deep inside of the A bomb site, but it's a golden ticket now for Snappy as he puts that bomb down and looks to close in this 3v2. And Sampais has a move from his earlier fight versus Deha. He's still in position. He's still on the flank. And they peek out to check him. They detect him looking the wrong way. And that was the retreating maneuver from Glaive. But with that kill, perhaps they have eyes on the prize yet again. They have a kit, they have a smoke. They need to get past Madden and Snappy. It comes down to timing. Madden looks up. He's blinded. He looks back into it, but it doesn't even matter. He's blinded, but he still will break them. Madden is having a masterclass inside of the spot deck. That, I mean, I, that's a, it's so crazy. Like, I don't even think you should be that confused when the upper bomb site is devoid of defense for that long. Because Goofy has the angle, that's the only explanation. He, ne he didn't get there at a timing to see Madden slip in, but that's just, that's just a time bomb, isn't it? Madden sitting inside the site like this. Oh, look at this, he even gets caught for the flash when he turns back into it, but... And this is the disorganization you can get into on Nuke. When your defense starts having to move as a new team, it's going to be one of the more difficult maps to get everyone on the same page of how rotations work, where you rotate to, or is that going to create the gaps? And Entz is the first team to fall prey to it. Madden lines them up, shuts them down, and now opens up that A-bomb side. He's going to sprint through. He's got space to play with. And he was made for this stage. Thoris looks up towards heaven. Hans Glade that overextends and Ants who will now fall at the hands of a at least swift cleave from Falcons. Hades comes up through secret. Boros is holding for that exact maneuver. And it's five alive for Falcons. Well, let's see what Entz is going to decide to change in that outer defense. Hades does have an AWP now. It's an op with no armor, so I'll have to be very cautious. But outside seems to be where Falcons want to start their rounds. They've been very aggressive and assertive, taking control of that part of the melt and building on it from there. The troubles have been on the CT side for Ents. They win their pistol for the first time. It's given them the start they wanted, but now they've got to stay in it. They've got to stay in this half. Glaive changes it up slightly. It's a deeper angle being taken. And, and it, gives him, it, gives, it, gives, it gives Glaive a chance to get aggressive from Ramp Room if he wants to. On a timing, he can push. Running in towards Kylar. It's a long and labored spray, but he eventually brings down his opponent with a sidearm. But Boris once again cuts through Deha towards outside. And Boris being in this position just starts to ask so many questions for Ents. Where could you have lost map control? Where could they be? And Glaive just doesn't know the answers. There's something that Falcon saw where they want to attack this. They're being so aggressive and so disrespectful getting into that big garage. And that's going to force Ence's hands. And that gives Snappy a lot of things to play with. Now that you're having success outside, you can kind of predict that Ence is going to have to change things up, bring an extra body there. And that's where ramp hits are more effective. That's where upper buffs are more effective. Ence are reeling in this third map. It's got to be a timeout. It just has to be. It's not like they're going to have the resources to get the purchase they desire. It's going to be another round on weaker weapons. And it's so much money built up for Falcons in this early going. It's been so dominant. They're sitting very nice for the rest of this half. They might not have to save a single time. And ends this kind of shifts into a half where the focus is on recovery. Some of the problems for Team Falcons was the fact that when this roster came together, there's too many quote-unquote support players. Someone else had to step up and start taking some initiative, start taking some space, and so far that has been Madden. Madden's been great in this series. He's very rarely going to be the guy who just kind of blows up on the scoreboard and drops 25 kills, but his aggressive plays, his map control, his impact is being felt in every single map. Well, D has invested the most. Everybody else with upgraded pistols with some residual cash left over. Madden again. Is that reckoning with a double on the drop? And eyes towards CT. It's Glaive inside of hell. 
Glaive will fall upon his peak. Hades gathers one on the CZ. And Deha has to step up from secret, but he is silenced immediately by Boros. Hades now in the lobby, and it's Falcons up to seven. The pain continues, but it was about saving as much money as possible for this next round for Ents. Yeah, this has to be it for Ents. This has to be the round you bounce back and scrape together these last two, and they have to get the outside yard under control. Boros and Madden are having their way with it. There's way too much success, way too much freedom out there that, that's being created. And I think this is finally the round Ents kind of have to respect it a little bit more. Definitely got to adjust. Utility does stop Snappy from getting into hot early doors. Some bias though is the player to strike with that opening. And once again, we talked about how Dihar could be having a better time on the CT side, but he's not, he's gone early. And that spam down from Goofy was damn close to getting the trade to even out these numbers. Yeah, but another pick, another first kill for Falcons comes outside and this time they're going away from it. But if you're Ents, I, I don't know what you do to recover it. Glaive's dropped into secret, which leaves ramp wide open. Hades is gonna call that out now. He cannot step into the flames and fight. There's nothing to stop Falcons. They've got a clear path to the lower bomb site. And Glaive has to rotate down early on. His teammates are so far away from being able to join him, though. So if there is going to be a moment, it's got to be greatness from Glaive. He stands waiting for the fight he knows is coming his way. Outmatched. And he is down, and there's no way he can get away with that. Snappy clears him instantly. Glaive without a kill. And this puts Ents into a 3v5 and the bomb down against them. It's another situation. It's another tough pill. It's, it's just, another save. It just brings you right back to Mirage where Falcons have found this weak point and they're just leaning on it. And I mean, even this round where they don't actually go outside off the back of it, the fact they get the opening pick in that part of the map, it's so much control, so much information taken away from Ents. And it's so early in the round that you can't really execute any protocols that you normally would. You can't do any kind of a lobby crunch. Half has spiraled out of control for Ents entirely. Yeah. That's despite winning the pistol round, despite having the start to the half they would have wanted. The defense has been a disaster so far. But there's still time. This was the opening fight. t -Hot takes a risk. Thinks he might have a fight up on top of Silo against a rifle, but... Unfortunately for him, he was staring right into the eyes of some pious. Final round of the first half, and some pious is feeling good. He's dropped down to the P90. You have to imagine that's going to mean an upper rush. And it is, in fact, that upper rush. The P90 swings out in the spot deck, and it's down, it's out. And this looks like a fourth round of Ferenc. Just snappy left. And it's a classic call from Snap. He loves to throw them in. And the first time you see the full upper bust to close the half, it gets stopped by the Ents wall. And it's a good call too with how much conditioning they've done to this Ents defense to expect something outside. Unfortunately, Ents gonna have a big hole to climb out of in the second half. Snappy goes down last. It's eight to four in the favor of Falcons. Elimination on the lines, the semifinals await and we find out who goes through in the second half.
the final time tonight, Spodek. It is time for Enz to try and continue this romantic run. Heading into the second half, they have a lot of work to do, but they have shown they can come back. They have shown they can stay in this, and they go up against the sharpened talents of Falcons. This is going to test everything that they've learned about themselves throughout the play-ins, throughout the group stage, throughout this IEM Katowice. What can they bring to bear? T-side Nuke attacking into Falcons. The T-side is where they have done their best work. And this commitment through the ramp, it is quick. And it could be a knockout punch to Boros. And he sees all he needs. He's going to run down into that bomb side of B. And he's not going to be alone. He has some teammates down there with him. So I'm going to slow it down here, and They're not going to fall into that trap. No, this is a great slowdown. This is a great call from Glaive to just pause here for a moment, catch your breath. You force the defense to shift. You force them downstairs already. Now you can take your time. And at this point as well, you know there's likely to be a second player. You're expecting the resistance. You're primed for it, but are you able to deal with it? It's the question. Some pious taken down low, but he still stands tall with one at least. And Boros, oh, he's in the darkness, shrouded by it with one headshot still connected. There's no room to plant just yet, and Madden has made no secret about his position coming through the decontamination door. Jeez. That kill has opened things up. It's allowed a new access point, but they fly up the ladder, and Falcons are back in position just in time. Yeah, but Magisk has moved outside, so he's not going to see them drop in. They're still not sure where the finishing play is going to be. Madden went back downstairs just to be honest at both bomb sites. And Magisk is trying to win this by positioning. How long is Kylar going to look at this? How long is Kylar going to consider the flank of Magisk? Coming around the corner, it's going to be the headshot for Kylar. And just Madden. And we know how insane he's been already in this quarterfinal. But this is a step too far. This is not going to be happening for him. Oh, 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 oh. My God, Madden! That is just broken and support. That is just one of those moments you cannot get back. Oh, you can't recover from that. That, that has quieted down the whole arena. That is an unlosable round. That is just, oh my Sucking God. the life out of the team. How has he done that? An absolute miracle in the quarterfinals. Madden in this series has been so spectacular, and that's one for the highlight reel. 16 and six for Madden, and he's got Falcons back. Running away with it, piling on ends. But still, the crowd stand with him. Another pistol round loss, this time done in the most maniacal fashion. Snappy coming up through secret stairs. He's about to have an early fight versus Deha, and he's got it. That's Deha down. And Ants will have to suffer the rest of this round. Four players versus five. They're attempting to trade. They're attempting to split. They overwhelm Madden this time around. Snappy is taken out of play by Hades. This could be a great answer back for Ants after having an absolute nightmare in the previous to come back swinging into this. But it has to be Goofy, and he's done! What a rebuttal. Goofy steps up again just like he did on overpass with an important clutch there. 1v2, and he nails the shots. Breathes some much needed life back into Ents, and it's Falcons onto pistols. Yeah, just pistols here for them, and we know how sharp they can be on those. We've just seen it a few rounds prior from Madden. But has have to run with this now. Deha pushes behind those outside smokes, and he's not making any... Well, he should have probably shifted for a little longer because these pistols come out swinging again! Ants are broken, surely, this time. Hades and Kylar left in a 2v5. No, 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 Ants. Not like this. They dug so deep to find a way back into it again, and it is snatched so cruelly from their hands. Hades considers the push to the T-roof. Kylar's going to clear it. That's Madden gone at least, but they need much more. Four more, in fact, and a minute to do it. It's still possible. Bomb has dropped at red box. Everyone knows it. Boros is outside with some pious and snappy. Magisk will be there very quickly from Vents. 
But Hades, if he can pick one off before committing, he's buying time for Kylo to rotate through the upper bomb site. Oh, it's timing here on the peak. He does just get behind red. Before that peak from Snappy comes on through. And look at that. Mazis can side of the vent. It's very sneaky. And he's caught a glimpse of his opponent moving towards main. And an important fight. Oh, Hades has been collected. Magix finally breaks open that vent, breaks open Kylar, and they're about to break ends here on the spot deck. Hades has to clutch this, and Boros brings him down. Pistols are their bane at the in this moment, Jason, and it just isn't looking good for them. Look, let's be real. There, there's nothing special to any of this from Falcons. This is just end squandering every opportunity to come back into this third map. The 3v1 in the pistol round where they cannot complete the kill, where they try and aggress upon Madden and all of them fall. They get saved by Goofy and once again just walking into the 5-7. Heartbreak after heartbreak for Ents and they are not experienced enough together to withstand this. For Falcons in the lead, they're more than happy to exchange blows one for one as they get closer to a quarterfinal victory. Yeah, they, they don't have the playbook to go back into. They don't have a deep one to find the answers. And it looks so easy for them at the start of this round. Diha looked like he had safe passage to secret. But he makes steps at the wrong time. It cost him his life, and then from that point onwards, it's absolute carnage. Kylo has a peek down towards ramp. It's the start they need. It's one of many, and so we'll hope. As Hedy sends that deagle through, Snappy's pushed towards red. Deha needs to find his old in-game leader. He does. He's not gonna be aggressive though, he's the only one outside for the moment, so he's just watching for some kind of a push. He's gonna bide his time and wait for Ents to take attention elsewhere on the map. Question is, where do they wanna go? Little bit of utility, Glaive is gonna throw an outside smoke to help his teammate. Meanwhile, they creep closer to ramp. Boros is gonna have a chance for impact. Snappy pushes outside, Diyaha has to sink this one. Eventually he does it, Boros holds, okay, can't get around the corner without hitting a Deke. And Sobias has come to clean them up. It looked like they had found their way through and perhaps they still have, because Glaive has suddenly found himself in a clutch up against the greatest that Spain has ever had. Yeah, well you got four major trophies on the other side of that. And in this situation, I think Glaive is someone you'd want in this 1v1 to keep Ents alive. I can't believe they keep fighting back into these rounds with almost nothing. Now, the big question here is the time on the clock. 30 seconds. Glaive doesn't have all day. Yeah, he has to get that bomb back. And some Pius is starting to consider multiple different positions because he has no idea where Glaive is coming from. Absolutely no idea, but he's about to find out. He's about to have a look at some Pius here. The noise of the crowd, and now he knows exactly where his next target is. His only target. And he peeks on out, composed as ever. It's some pious stepping up and cleaning up. He might have just done it for Ents. He might have broken them at the most brittle point of this game. And for how much of a struggle some pious had on overpass, he's stepping up here on nuke. Dangerous situation. Yes, it's against pistols, but they're being overwhelmed and some pious puts a stop to it all. Triple kill over in ramp room, a good rotation, a good read of what's coming. Well, they fought hard in every single round despite the weapons that they have. So Ents coming back into it again. Tech Nines, their last stand. and sprint out through the doors. Goofy running with it. Tech Nine rounds that corner. But there's no follow up yet until this point. Kylo assassinates Madden towards the back of the bomb site. And suddenly now there is a chance. But Boros got the flank. He's got this play in. He's created that space and he pulls out the sidearm. And despite Ents getting into the bomb site, they do not find the plant. And Diha is put in a clutch again. This time a 1v3. This time he's got the bomb at the very least. Doesn't have to worry about picking that up, but unfortunately, there's so much pressure on this round. Falcons would be on series point, quarterfinals point if they win this. This would have to top even Madden's clutch in the pistol. He's got room, no one downstairs. He's got space, he doesn't realize it yet. But at some point, you just have to plant the bomb and hope nobody peeks and go from there. Ents battled hard to be the first Polish team in eight years to make it here to the spot. They don't want to go out like this. So Diha has moved into position to assassinate Boros and collect an MP9. But they know now where he's gone. And this now flips the chances increasingly in the favor of Falcons because it wasn't the weapon Diha wanted. 
It's only the little sidearm. And that defuse is being stuck all the way, all the way! And Deha gets him off it! The Tech 9 gets another! And this time Snappy's going for it, Deha. Oh, he's got it! He's forced Snappy away! He's absolutely got it! And Deha, the hunter, the hometown hunter, slays a falcon! 11 to 6, Deha keeps him alive for the moment. How close are these rounds? The heroics from both sides. I can't believe Diha is able to pick it up on the Tech 9. It's, it's brilliantly played. It's brilliantly played the way he lures them out. Falcon's not sure which side of ramp room he's going to peek. And yeah, they've got a lead. Yeah, they're two rounds away from the semifinal, but every round is stressful for Falcons. We talked about them staying in it. We talked about them finding the fight. It's beautiful to see this team that's newly formed being able to dig this deep and have no quit. But they need to turn the corner if they want to make this a true comeback. String two together, put Falcons back onto pistols. Take the money away and ride the momentum a little bit further. We haven't even really played a real gun round here on Nuke just yet. No, we have not. A scrappy finish for a battle for a semi-final. It looked like the door was closing for Ents, but Deha swings it wide open. And this hometown team have got more in them. 5-7 for Madden, takes a couple of shots. They're going into Boros. This unproven player blisters a headshot right through Goofy. Zampias comes over with a scout, and despite having weaker weapons, Falcons are up multiple players. This will bring them to series point. This will bring them to semi-finals point. And Ents once again have to battle in the deficit. Well, Deha playing an awkward game of chicken in the vents. Gonna force Madden away. Two players heavily tagged up as Boros comes to address ramp room. They're lurking into his position and he's primed and ready. Oh, he absolutely is. Deagle clocked and oh no, for Boros, it's a disaster, but for Rents, it's an opening. And they're gonna move down into that bottom B bomb site. Plant will be secured, Glaive demands to do it. Madden hears that and the door, because of the smoke, opens up the wrong way, so he can't swing out with it. He sends the flash in, chasing in with that 5-7. He now has to think about that damage being done to Glaive. He knows he's up towards the control room. Madden's chasing after them, but he's about to find two players at the top of the stairs. And his former teammate deals out that revenge headshot. And Madden just has to fall away because Ents are staying in this. Ents are coming back. Well, now we got a game in our hands. Ents strings them both together. Some real grit in this map so far. Another situation where Ents claws back from the jaws of defeat. It's 7 to 11, four rounds away, Ents. And Diha again just being so good at finding a way to get his team back into these rounds. It was 3v5 at one point. The scout tags were a point of danger the whole time. And D has cl delivered critical kill whenever they've needed it. Round 19. Look what it's done to the Falcons. Yeah, but as we've seen, every round is dangerous. Kyler's gonna deliver a knockout punch. This is a play they loved running in the group stage. And it's netted them some openings again. Kyler with a triple kill. And here comes Glaive, but he's zoosed away. He's blasted by the electricity that Snappy has at the tip of his fingers, but he's gonna need a lot more than that, and Kylo just isn't going to let it happen. Smiles creep on to the faces of Anson. Who would have believed it just a few rounds ago? And think of everything they've had to overcome. The Madden 1v3. 
the multiple 3v5s, like they, they have fought back from every deficit. This is very impressive for Entz. Still three rounds back. No AWP for Sun Pius on defense. Kylar obliterated, half of his health gone. Boros jumps off that top box and goes down to B again. He has shown a willingness to stand and fight sometimes, but the majority of the time he's fine descending down because he knows his teammates are quite quick to make the rotation with him. Yeah, but because he didn't stay up, because he just dropped immediately, this has pulled Madden downstairs for the moment. This is no information over in ramp room. Falcons are operating under the assumption that Ents have control of ramp and could challenge downstairs, could challenge under heaven, and they're dead wrong. It's pulled Snappy to have an off angle as well. There's only one player in the upper bomb site, and that's exactly where Ents is headed for the moment. Ready to bust out. Miss Molotov. It's information now for Falcons as well. Where the trajectory of that Molotov was intended for, but it doesn't remove the position of Majesku drops down into the back of the site. Falcons up two players. 30 seconds left to make this final adjustment for Ents. It's and toast. And it's not done yet, Jason. Hades hits the shot inside of the site. Madden's gone, but 20 seconds. Yeah, now we're starting to run out of time. That bomb, oh, at the back of the pack. It is absolutely floundered at this point for Ents. Even if they hit the headshots required, they wouldn't have made it down in time. Hades has just gone for a little little stroll through the upper bomb site. Matt just never saw him on top of the HUD, so we're going to save that AWP, but there's no strength in that hit. Ends did everything right. As weak a defense as you could have wanted at the upper bomb site, and they can't make their way in. Opening kill from Magisk and slides down to allow Snappy to take next contact. A beautiful little switch up. And Falcons now have four chances to eliminate Ents from IAM Katowice to make it into the semifinals where Spirit awaits. The dream run to be here. And Ents don't want to go out just like this. They fight for that opening kill. Hades looks outside, but no kill found from his initial attempt. First blood being drawn as the half health taken off Kylar shaved away. Snappy looking to disallow positioning outside for Ents. Smoke. Lands up in the wall. So plenty of space now to play with for Rents as they move in behind them. But if they want this A split to happen, if they want the position to fight for this round, they've definitely got to get across secret safely. And that's exactly what happens. They make two players down without being taken out. And Ents have a minute to play with now. It's just Boros in ramp room as well. Nobody's shifted downstairs quite yet. But still, you have the problem of the other prong of this attack having to meet up with you. A little bit of pressure applied out squeak door. Here comes the utility. The final movements, perhaps, for Ents. They don't want it to be, but it could be the reality of the situation. But Diha and Hades sniping two kills back into play. And Magis once again pulled into the fray. He's got a position up on top, but Hades considers it. You can't play that position twice. You don't get away with it. And Boris rotates down to the ramp. Spots him coming out. It's only one kill. And Snappy's left a 1v3 ahead of him. And he's so far away from this, so he's saving into a spawn. And Ants do not die. Not yet. They've still got some life left in them. Hades is such an important part of this team, and we're seeing him on the T side with the op find openings and five impact kills. While normally it's the AK-47s creating space, it's Hades towards Squeak Door a number of rounds who's provided some critical kills, some important frags to make these tactics work. Nine. Ends just three rounds back, cutting into this lead as much as possible. Bomb goes off, and we continue round 22.
Falcon's gonna buy right back into it. They've got cash, they've got money. I mean, Hades does everything to keep them in this, doesn't he? Great shot out towards the door, considers Magic's being up on top again. And frustration for Boros as he just wants to finish it now. They want that semi-final. They want the opportunity to move through and face Spirit. Falcons taking this second time out. During which they've sold all the weapons they previously bought, so reconsidering with this three-round lead that they can be patient. They don't need to force up. They don't need to stop them right here, right now. They need to set themselves up for the long game. It's gonna be an M4 in the hands of Snappy. But every round in this half has been contested from both teams. And Deagle's making their way into the Falcons' arsenal. A hiccup here from Ents would be heartbreaking, would be crushing. And if you're Falcons now, surely you've got the message that Hades off towards Squeak Door is gonna be there time and time again. Don't mess with it. Don't even give it the chance. And Diha gets into position outside. Finally with some space to play with. They go into this top site. Madden's hoping he can catch something with a Zeus, but it's composed for Ents at the moment. They know they're up against a weaker purchase. And they know they've got time. So the outside smoke's deployed. They can activate Diha. Big shot again. Hades is the key to unlock these rounds time and time again for Ents. Matches though with the Deagle. We've seen him do ridiculous things with it in the past. Look how much they, they respect it. it. They respect it, and that's going to funnel them back into the A play. And Madden's waiting for them. Zeus in hand, Snappy in the vents. Tobias looks away, and Snappy just got out of position. Well, they're working their way in right now. Snappy's trying to bide his time, pick a moment. I think he's waiting for the Zeus from Madden to do something to it. Goofy. Oh, here he is. No quit in this team, and it's 12 to 10. Dare I say it, but the bonus rounds start to come into view. This tenacious little ends that could are not out of this game just yet. They're pushing everything. They're pushing Team Falcons to the verge of collapse here on Nuke. This AWP has been so good. And now Kylo punishes the follow-up push. Ents is in control. It's a five on three. Snappy gets inside of the smoke. Tiha slips in towards main. Snap is looking for him. Tiha not looking the right way. Can't deal with it. Is down. And 4v3 off the back of that. So maybe still a chance. And Magis can step up here for the Falcons. It's the AWP though. It's Hades ready and waiting. Sees the utility. Wants the follow up peak. He's going to try and timing shot. He's got defense. And Goofy's going to step forward. And so Boros, a double from heaven. And it's brought right back into a two on two. Just as you think, answer ahead. There's a moment again that pulls the Falcons back into it. But the timing, look at this. Glitch slips underneath. And he's got the battle of the in game leaders. That AWP is worth everything. They must have it. Six of the last seven rounds for Ents, they have come storming back. It's overtime or a Falcons victory, crushing the dreams, 12 to 11. One final round to decide it all. It looked like Ents were out of it. It looked like they were done, but
their absolute god has arrived. It felt like they were done. It felt like they were going to collapse. It felt like it was just way too much to handle for a new team, a young team. The team that we came into saying it was inexperienced, but they're looking like heavy veterans today. Every single time they've had a response and a rebuttal, whether it's Goofy, whether it's Deha, whether it's Hades throughout this entire map. We need all 24. And if you're Kubin standing behind your team at this point, you can barely watch. You can barely watch. Falcons down to MP9s on three players. The momentum safely on the side of the poles. Outside this time, four players. Crossing the smoke, no one from Falcons has vision. Sun Pius with that saved AWP. Oh, Hades, oh, oh, oh. don't give him a second look, but Sun Pius is downstairs with an AWP ready to go. Yeah, Sun Pius is ready to strike, and he'll strike true. You mentioned that AWP being everything if Falcons are to stay in this game. And so Pius has made it work for that first kill at least. He's made him pay the tax, and now that you're downstairs with numbers, with bodies, where do you go? You use so many smokes to cross to this point, you have none left. What options do Ents have? You attack into the lower bomb site, you know Sun Pius will be there again with the AWP. You know Boros is going to be quick on the rotation from Ramp Room. The only option they want to believe in at this point is overtime. The only reality they want to live in is the reality they are in which is a chance for OT, a chance to stay alive. But they've got to do it from a 4v5. And they're going to walk their way down past those double doors. 25 seconds. The final swing of those double doors is open. Some Pius ready to strike. He can drop behind cover, but it's a missed shot from some Pius, but he goes back again. And Falcons are bringing them to the end of this road. It was such a romantic story, but I think we're about to get a dose of reality. Kylar comes down the stairway, but no, no time, no, no time way. at the all. The time runs out, and that is it. It is Falcons who will progress to the semifinals over Ents. They give the Poles something to shout about. They come back after eight years. The first Polish team to make it into the playoffs in the spot deck. The first Polish team to give any sort of hope. And this is a new team. This is a team for the future. And what we've seen so far gives us hope and dreams of a Polish Counter-Strike in CS2. An impressive performance, but it's the experience of Falcons that got better, that got stronger as this series went on, that got stronger as this tournament has gone on. Falcons is going to be in the semifinals, but Entz showed some real grit today, some real heart in front of this crowd. Could have crumbled, could have fallen apart. And everyone fought back at dream of playing on the stage as they shake hands. And a tough loss. We'll see Falcons take on Spirit tomorrow. It was beautiful to watch them walk out there, but now the tournament will rage on without ends. And it will have the greatest coach of all time that knows how to win on the stage in the spot deck. Perhaps he and his squad will be the ones to finally humble Doc. In Falcons, they have some they have some real things to work on as Ents take center stage. A final tribute to the crowd that powered them all the way through three maps. And I mean, the first map did not look like it was going to be a competitive series. Ents dug deep. They found a way back, and they made this a series to remember. They made this a match. A historic appearance on the Spodex stage. It's been so long since Poland had some team to cheer for. They've got one now, a team they can be proud of. And one that I'm sure will return soon. Do you know, that was some match. It was stressful to watch. I'm sure it was stressful to play in. What was it like to coach? It's always stressful. And against Glaive, you know, uh, one of the smartest, brightest mind this game has ever had. I mean, it's, uh, it's always tough. They made you work for that. Yeah, I mean, they, uh, they had the crowd behind them and uh, props to all the Polish fans they did. Uh, I think they really, you know, pushed them. It looked 
kind of comfortably for us on the first map, but the uh, second and third was, uh, was definitely a tough one. It's always amazing to watch a coach's face because you share the highs and you very much feel the stresses as well and the frustrations towards the end. At what point did you realize that you might be in trouble here? Because when that, you know, it was the one on three, the Hades took it, it all was looking good for you, that Madden took, and then at one point, they came back. I mean, uh, I think me as a, as a coach has always been a bit pessimistic, so I don't care if it's 11-5 or whatever it is. I'm, I always believe that they can come back, and they, it's also the other way around. You know, you need to take every round to, uh, and play them seriously because uh, it can easily go the other way around. So I'm, uh, I'm never relaxed in those games. And what is it like when you're facing not a hostile crowd, but a vocal crowd that's very much on the side of your opponents? What is that like? I mean, uh, I think this is one of the most special arenas uh, for us to, and I've won here twice, very privileged, and yeah, I'm, I'm just happy to see a Polish team making it to the quarterfinals once again. I think the Polish fans deserve that. You've joined this team, you left a major winning side, you've joined this team. What is expected of you here? To win majors. Okay, thank you so much. Sonic, always a pleasure. Your winners through to a semi-final tomorrow, it's Falcons. Well, it was a war of attrition on that final map, but it is Falcons to be flying through to that semi-final after making it such a competitive series. Unfortunately, the clock quite literally runs out for ends, and it's Falcons Matthew to be progressing onwards and upwards. And listen, there is an element of heartbreak in the way this game ends. And of course, for the romance of it, you would have wished for ends to give a win to this crowd. But I think we also have to give props to Falcons for being able to keep composure in face of this comeback that was was happening that what that seemed inevitable and being able to turn around situations Hades incredible with the AWP and then you, you see the tension sort of on the faces of the Falcons player and yet this last round feels very in control it's a round with an AWP but three MP9s some players with a good vista for the game as well good positions two free kills he lets the attack comes to him this this last round smells like experience to me and I think it's it's kind of nice that like all the points that we talked about before the series like we saw so many of the storylines come to life we saw Hades with the up making yes. a big impact we saw Sun Pius was actually doing not too bad a little bit better on than this map better than this, the series on this yeah. map better than the series <laughs> but then we also saw you know the Falcons were really good with the scrappy chaotic stuff and then we saw ends with the really good game plan stuff and that entire T side comeback on that second half was all about just manipulating the rotations funneling people into Hades is up he gets the first pick he opens up the round they do these little double fake things and then they try to end the round. And listen, there's an element of, of emotions that we have to talk about. The amount of crazy, completely game-changing rounds that happened in that second half. I thought Ents would tap out way earlier. Certainly. I thought this was it. We were witnessing this game on the second half. There's this pistol round from Madden with the Julius. I even tweeted, like, it's yeah. over. Like, he, he literally just ruins Podek right here, right now. And then there's, there's other rounds on top of that. Sampaias as well. With the, there's this 5-7 rounds, the double pistol close outside. These are rounds that are supposed to put you in your grave. Like, you're not supposed to come back from that. And then... All the, the story of Diha having the 1v3 when he's struggling massively on the city side. He was toyed around like a fiddle. He steps up in that 1v3. I don't even know how they found that resilience to fight back. I thought Falcons would crush them on this map. And that's a total fair assessment, particularly coming off of that first half, right? Again, it was a slow start for Ents. Falcons taking full advantage of that. Um, but some of the players we have to talk about on Falcons. I mean, Marden, over the course of this series, what a mastermind, right? He's obviously one of those players who's going up against his form organization and he looked uh, he looked red hot at you oh absolutely i mean listen he's not supposed to be our superstar but he does so much work without exactly having an incredible amount of resource like the timings he was fighting on the t side he had on his own game changing rounds like some sort of furtive play through doors but he's not the only one. We got another hero, another champion joining Absolutely us. Absolutely not. Congratulations, Nappy. Uh, talk to me about that final round. You had three MP9s, you had an AWP on some pairs. What was the approach there? Did you think it was actually going to be going to OT? I mean, I think when I saw him secret, uh, we had a pretty good idea of where they were on the map because uh, you don't usually walk like that that late in the round. So I think that gave us a good uh, key takeaway. And then when uh, when Alvaro got the, the kill on Glaive, it was good because usually it's her there. So we knew that there had to be more, and that's why we were able to have two, two, down, two guys down there with other people having kind of a foot in the side. 
Um, listen, the third map was a roller coaster for us to watch and surely for you to play. Can you talk us through a little bit what you went through? Good start, then things get complicated. How did you live this last map? I mean, I think in general we played a really good T side, um, and then when we lost that three on one, it was uh, pretty brutal because it, uh, yeah, it got us into the ropes. And then they did a really good comeback, and the uh, haters kept killing us with the orb, and it was a little bit annoying. And so yeah, they they played really good, and uh, I'm, I'm happy that we played them here. It looked like the Hades had a really good just control over the lobby area. And I know that you guys like to do a lot of lobby crunch type plays and you guys got shut down doing that. Did that affect how you guys approached your CT side and you played a little bit more passive as a result of it? Or is it just like not in your game plan to do that as much this time? Nah, to be honest, we had a good game plan, I felt, but uh, it involved me or some pilots having a good spawn. I'm not going to get into detail with what it was, but we didn't get it the entire half. So it was a little bit annoying because our main counter was a special play, which we couldn't do. Talk to me a little bit about Madden in this series. I'm sure we can run that uh, disgusting 1v3 that he managed to pull off with the Julies. Um, but tell me a bit about him and how you've been utilizing him, right? Because he's been one of your right-hand men, obviously, on the side events. Have you seen him evolve in Falcons? I mean, I think in Falcons, uh, we've told him to, now it's the time to step up in terms of his uh, selfishness, uh, because he was very, very unselfish in ends. But here we need him to be more selfish, so he's a lot of the time, uh, like, asking, yeah, I won't do this in pistol and stuff like this, and he never used to do this, but it's because we want him to be that kind of guy. Mm. Also on Mirage, instead of playing A, now he plays Connector. So uh, he, he got an upgrade in uh, his positions and uh, in terms of his role overall, and I think he's showing because he's having a really good tournament here so far. I, I want to ask about you personally in this event, right? Let's zoom out just a little bit. The whole Falcons project, very tumultuous from the outside, a lot of noise, a lot of rumors. You put this team together, you show up here, not the greatest start, and here you are now. You are in, in semis, you've just booted out the fan favorites, not an easy game. How do you feel compared to what you've done so far with your crew, with this young roster? How does that feel right now? I mean, it feels good um, also because obviously there was a lot of doubters, but the thing is, um, we see every game kind of right now as a practice game. Every game we can review and uh, we played an overpass against complexity, but that went too easy. It was too good kind of because then you, fi you don't fix your mistakes kind of. Um, so this was nice to actually lose overpass and still win the game because now we have something we can review and improve. And that's what, we, what we're here for because at the end of the day, the, the goal is, at, is the armor. Snappy, a chance for you to put us in our place. We always talk about, you know, how hard it is going up against the home crowd. Uh, obviously, you were on the receiving hey. end of it. Do you actually feel it inside the server? Like, let's be real for a second. First of all, I have double noise cancelling. I have uh, in-ears that is noise cancelling. <laughs> so that is one thing. But the second thing is, in ends, we kind of got some practice because... Uh, in, except for one Elisa match, we had the crowd against us for two years straight. Because, uh, we were <laughs> mini orc, and then I leave, and uh, you see ends here in uh, Poland just having the crowd which they deserved, and uh, they they've been phenomenal this tournament, and I'm super happy for my for my old team because um, we still have very good relations, and I, I really like Pavel, uh, Oleg, and uh, Lucas in the team, and I'm just happy that they 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 got everything going really quick because uh, yeah, I'm happy about them. Final question from my side, obviously, tomorrow, uh, you got Spirit waiting on the other side of the server. How, how scary are prospects are they just thinking about them right now? I mean, we're not scared of anyone. Obviously, I'm not going to go out here and say we're the favorites, but because we're not. But uh, I never went into a game thinking it was scary, uh, because then I think you already lost. Um, and at the end of the day, it's going to be Dong's first stage match. Also, mm. who knows how he will react? Probably fine, but let's see. Um, but I just, I just don't think you should be scared of going into any game. The worst, the, the worst thing that can happen is that you lose, and then there's a new tournament a few weeks after. So There we go. We're just making drama out of nothing. As us drama queens. I had one last question. Of course, Boros and his trajectory is something that we keep an eye on, and we're all wondering how's he going to fare in these big stages. You play within, with him. You're from the within as well. How, how is he adapting to this? What is your take as a captain looking at him and making his first steps in these kind of situations? I think he's uh, doing a really good job. I think uh, he was a bit rough around the edges when we got him. And I think we, we really try to, to shape him. And I think actually he has developed more in one month than he did in three or four years. And I'm not even joking about that. God damn, his teammates listening to that. That's a good one. Well, congratulations, Snappy. Thoroughly looking forward to seeing you versus Spirit in tomorrow's semi final. But that does mean it is time to check in with our DHL MVP.
Oh yeah, play that funky music. It even got Maniac dancing up here on the desk because it is time for you guys to get involved with our DHL MVP at home. We've got five potential uh, categories for you to be choosing from, five potential players where you can spend your precious, precious Twitch channel points. Hades up first, obviously an incredible showing on Overpass. I think it's thoroughly well deserved to be nominated for that. Goofy as well. He was really showing up on one of his uh, biggest stages ever. Very strong Overpass from Goofy for sure. I'm, I'm really heartbroken for, for Hades, right? A player that we've talked about his his LAN or big stage performances, and I feel like he, he did the best he could here, and it still wasn't enough, unfortunately. He still leaves leaving us a very positive vibes. Madden as well. What a series it's been for him. And, and it's very interesting to hear from Snappy as well that it's about time he puts himself first in a priority list. He plays for himself a little bit more, delivering on that. Boros, a player that obviously we touched on as a rookie, sort of having his first steps at the very, very highest level. And Snappy's talking about a very quick adjustment, a very quick learning curve for him uh, we're gonna have to see if against another rookie of the don't that works out yes i was thoroughly impressed with boros and what he delivered obviously kyla as your fifth and final choice for this series um yeah I, I mean for boros obviously josh we were questioning exactly how he would deliver up on this very stage if we look at just that last map in isolation um turns out very very well he's not scared yeah i think everyone had eyes on him because you know the falcons project were like eyeing nico and it's really big shoes to fill if you're gonna be like oh we're gonna get nico oh wait we're not okay we have to get someone that's going to be, you know, trying to match up to that. And he's been doing a pretty good job of that this event, all, uh, all things considered. He's mm. been, you know, the best player almost or one of their better players for a pretty consistent amount of time. So he's been doing, doing a good job. Yeah, I'm glad that he could show up after, you know, we saw him at the Paris Major. Everybody was really on the hype train for him. And it's been quite a while since we get to see Boros in the server. But on the flip side for Entz, um, unfortunately, end of the road here. It was obviously just a magical, you know, fairy tale storyline. Them even making it to this very arena. It was great yeah. that we got to see the crowd behind them. And I'm excited for the future events because you know what? Coming into this event, I'm going to hold my hands up and say, I, I, I didn't expect them to make a hit. We caught a final. Vastly exceeded any kind of expectations for sure. Uh, I didn't want to disrespect the camera. Just looking at them, they're taking pictures with fans right now. That's why I'm kind of giving you guys my back. Hey, these are great images, of course, uh, to see the fans out there still trying to interact with the end players. We, we hope that this wasn't a, a one-off. We hope this wasn't a flash in the pan. This was the best place to do it. And, and I also, I still, I feel like this third map is so hard. It's so yeah. rough and cruel, right? This fight this all the way back just to lose on the last one. But I think they, uh, they did this crowd proud. They leave without any remorse or regret. Yeah, they certainly did. Of course, unfortunately, the end of the line here for Ents. So let's get a few closing thoughts courtesy of Hades. Hades, um, so heartbreaking not being able to get to that overtime. Um, I mean, yeah, the first thing I'm just going to ask you is why did it even have to be pushed maybe to overtime and why was it just not enough on the last map? Mm, to be honest, I don't even know, you know, like, I feel felt on the CT side, some rounds just slipped away too easily. And then the early T rounds also, we lost like three force buys in a pretty bad way, you know, so we had a very rough start. Um, I'm really proud that we managed to come back, but we just didn't manage to win the last round, you know. Yeah, uh, I guess it was such an unexpected run for Ents, but after that overpass, you must have really started believing. So does that hurt a, a little extra? Yeah, I mean, we felt that Mirage just kind of like overwhelmed us, like with the whole support and everything, like everyone was in shock. And on overpass, we started well, we just played our game and yeah, we played really well. So we, we believe that our new can win also, so. Yeah, absolutely. I've done a couple of these with you, exit interviews, but every time it's been because you got a stage further. So I think the growth in yourself, but also the team is evident. Um, yeah, tell me about what's coming up, the RMR, and how much you feel like you've grown and you can still grow with this team. I mean, we've only practiced for less than a month, you know, so us reaching the quarterfinals and beating all the sick teams, it's, it's amazing. And it's just like a good thing for the RMRs, you know. We've shown that we can be the good team so we just need some more practice some more like map pool stuff and it's gonna be even better um i can't promise it but i believe they're gonna play this back for the people that are still here so if there's anything you want to say to the ends fans uh, even if they're watching from home of course <laughs> Hades.
Oh yeah, the fans here receiving the signatures, they definitely heard those words and obviously props to, you know, and staying here and, you know, giving some time to the fans. We get to see those images, exactly what you alluded to, Matthew, mm. coming in and this is only the beginning. For the yeah, listen, for now, bask in the glory of what you've achieved, I think it's fair to say, uh, but Chuck's touch on it, there are very great games, stake games coming soon and you hope that this wasn't just a one event thing. Mm. I would really hope that they are going to build on it, um, but I have, I don't really know where I see them in the future. It feels like it was a perfect storm for them to, to pop off here, uh, but I'm hoping this is just a building block and a little bit more ends in these high tier events. Yeah, we kind of saw the similar storyline with, you know, Heroic coming in after, you know, being picked apart and then beating Astralis and going far in the tournament themselves. So it was nice to see that they were able to do that, but they were, you know, they had these individual goals. They had like the storylines, they had the momentum and they had the just the push behind them to make it deeper into this tournament. So, you know, when you go home after uh, exiting here at this stage of the event, how do you take that and internalize it when you're playing the next step? And also live with the, these new kind of expectations, right? I mean, yeah. you didn't really know what to expect from, from ends with Glavin, and now suddenly when they show up at the RMR, it's a, it's a different story. People are looking, looking at them differently as well, and we'll see how they deal with that kind of situation. Now. Yeah, a bittersweet ending, unfortunately, for ends here in the Spodek. But let's check in with the playoff bracket to see exactly where the results of the day have landed us as we move on into those semifinals. Of course, G2, uh, the defending champions, now Machu, eliminated at the hands of FaZe, which sets up uh, Frozen versus his old squad very, very nicely indeed. Yes, FaZe clan versus Mouse, of course. There's quite a lot to dive into. The Frozen angle is a very obvious one, very apparent one. Also, I think FaZe clan has been the uh, the ender of a whole lot of Mouse runs in general. So, you know, uh, when you uh, have to defeat your demons, if you want to go any further, that's the case. And then we're going to have a little bit of uh, Falcons versus Spirit. Snappy handled that question pretty well. He said, listen, yeah. I'm not scared of anybody, but we're not favorites. So it's kind of like tiptoeing. I think Double it would dipping. be fair to say that you'd be scared of Donk even on this stage, which, you know, all, in all fairness, we haven't seen him performing on a big stage. Be a first. Do you think that Donk is going to be affected by the crowd, or is he just going to be doing his Donk? When we saw Falcons come out, it wasn't that they were, like, necessarily getting booed, but when we saw the walk-ins earlier, the Spirit was getting actually booed. So it's going to be, like, one thing, it's playing against the crowd, trying to kind of cheering on for one team, but it's a different thing to be no stage experience, really, and then you're playing against a crowd that's going to be actively working against you every time you win a round or something, they're just going to give it to you. Are you believing in the Spirit Grand Final? What do you think? You know, this Falcons proving has uh, shown what it takes to make uh, to Listen, I, I doubted Spirit every step of the way, and I was wrong every step of the way. So maybe it's time I learn from my mistakes. So if you switch, then that means they're going to lose, actually. You can yes, anti jinx. That's usually how you confuse me now. Is that I'm how confused. it works? I, well, we're going to have to find out exactly what happens tomorrow as, of course, the quarterfinals are done for today at the Intel Extreme Masters Katowice 2024. Join us same place, same time tomorrow for those coveted semifinals. Up the truth, this ain't new to me. Since the age of 22, I've been using it. Like it's fuel to level up, like it's champagne in my cup, like there's nothing interrupting my pursuit of dreams. There's a vision in my mind, it's consuming me. Take my confidence, combine with opportunity, mix it up with unity. Soon to be the greatest of my generation, Operation Victory. Fight or fly, we will stay. Through the perils, we dare not to stray. Spark the match, light the flame. Out of luck, out of sight, dangerous. Dynamite. Dynamite! Set it fire to the clouds at the speed of light. Going up like how it sounds, screaming. We are, we are. Superman's kryptonite. We are, we are. Sky are blowing up, dynamite. Dynamite! Set it fire to the clouds at the speed of light. Going up like how it sounds, screaming. Check it. Ha. Troubled days, lonely nights, a lot of tears, 
lot of fights, big dreams met with bigger lies. It ain't what it seems from the outside. On my downfall, they pray. Will I surrender or will I betray? Given the trauma that lives in my brain, or use it to fuel up the fire in my veins. I never complain, I boss up and do it. If there's a battle, I find my way through it. If the wind blows, I thank God that he blew it. Cause what is a blessing depends on you view it. The fruits of my labor are in abundance. Indispensable, I'm not redundant. Incomprehensible the way I've done it. When the struggle pushes me out, I'll shove it. I'll rise above it. Fight or fly, we will stay Through the perils we dare not to stray Spark the match, light the flame I love the sight, dangerous Dynamite Dynamite! Standing fire to the clouds at the speed of light Going up, not coming down Screaming, we are, we are Superman's kryptonite We are, we are so Blowing up Jump across. Yeah. 